Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto inherited the sacred six of eyes of Gojo Satoru, Naruto X JJK. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. The second stage of the Chunin exams was supposed to be a large battle royal for the various teams to get Earth and Heaven Scrolls, one each then arrive at the central tower. Team 7, led by Sasuke Uchiha, to Naruto's chagrin, was making good progress. They managed to defeat two teams and secure extra Earth Scrolls, having three in total. However, everything went to shit when Naruto, after returning from a pee break, was blasted away by a powerful gust of wind. Followed by appearance of the nightmare of a sound ninja who took sadistic pleasure in attacking Sasuke and Sakura. Naruto, thanks to his ingenuity and shadow clones, managed to kill the massive snake that was attempting to eat him and rejoin his teammates against the weird sound ninja. The battle became even more intense thanks to the inclusion of Naruto, who was subtly getting enhanced by the Nine Tails chakra throughout the fight. He was darting all over the place punching and slashing at the snake-like ninja. Massive gusts exploded from the clashes between the two monsters, in the distance observing the fight, Sakura was finding it hard to breath under the weight of the sound girl's chakra and the evil feeling coming from Naruto. Sasuke was silently observing, finding it impossible to force his body into action. Orochimaru glared at the blonde after their latest clash, he was starting to feel the nine tails chakra burn his hands. His movements are becoming sharper. The boy has no real talent for ninjutsu if Kabuto's Rakan is correct, which explains the lack of jutsu so far. He's a loudmouth and seems to be similar to how that fool Jiraiya was at that age, the attack first ask questions later type. I could kill him in an instant. Though it's strange, the longer I fight him the better he responds to my movements. I suppose his lineage simply wouldn't allow him to be completely talentless. He mused. The hidden snake nin decided to cut the battle short and seal off the biju to deal with the blonde. It was time to mark Sasuke and leave, he spent more time here than he planned. He was sure that the old bastard or at the minimum the anbu were on the way thanks to the large quantities of chakra being thrown around. Naruto tried to dodge, he really did. He could clearly see the freak coming at him but no matter how hard he tried his body couldn't move in time. It was more frustrating than any fight he's had with Sasuke who was frozen watching the battle. The snake was simply so much faster than him it was impossible to move in time. A hand that shone with chakra, each finger holding an elemental symbol on it, was slammed into Naruto's stomach right over the nine tails seal. Naruto's eyes widened in immense pain as he fell over, almost passing out instantly. He would have fallen hundreds of feet if it weren't for Sakura's quick thinking, who threw a kunai to snag his jacket on the tree to catch him. The last thing Naruto heard before the darkness took him was Sakura calling out to Sasuke. Which was just typical, he was likely about to die, and she calls for Sasuke. The Nine Tails, or rather its chakra, having been cut off from Naruto's chakra due to the additional seal, allowed something to happen that had been impossible ever since Naruto was 20 minutes old. All the chakra that was in his body was wholly his own. Nothing good came from imbalance. The entire purpose of the second stage was to teach this. If you're too focused on your physical strength, or earth, you'll lack the mental strength, or heaven, to succeed as a chunin. Naruto, due to having the young half of the nine tails sealed within him, was overflowing with physical chakra, and had a major deficit of yin or spiritual chakra. This stunted his body in several ways. It was because of this that he was so hyper. It was because of this that he was unable to control his chakra like others were able to. Considering he had to subconsciously overcome the imbalance that was his overabundance of yang chakra, it was no wonder simple jutsu escaped him. He was, unknowingly, having to siphon out the massive quantities of extra yang chakra and bolster his lacking yin side and somehow arrive at the ratio to perform jutsu. But now that the nine tails chakra that had been slowly dripping into his network since he was born was cut off, it allowed Naruto's body to reach his natural equilibrium of mind and body, yin and yang. It allowed his soul, the core of his and of all shinobi's power, to fight back and bring forth all of its potential after being denied it since his birth. Naruto didn't know this, 
No one knew this, but he had been born with tremendous power. It was there just out of reach for his whole life due to the imbalance of his chakra. The leaves and trees swayed lightly, clouds in the sky started to move away. Animals throughout the forest perked up on instinct. All of nature knew that a metamorphosis was taking place. It was as if the entire world was welcoming Naruto's rebirth. Naruto's body was correcting itself after so long, like a free diver coming up after a long swim it was taking a deep breath that was impossible for nearly 12 years. Allowing his birthright to emerge and change the very balance of the world. It had been a rough couple of days for Team 7. Sakura Haruno was currently fighting three sound ninjas with all her might, or what was left of it. The ninja in question found it amusing to taunt her with their strength and torture her by not attacking all at once to just finish the fight. She ran a hand through her now much shorter hair sadly, it took so very long to get it to that length. Oh well, the ugly sound girl had to go for her hair, despite taunting her by saying caring about hair was for children. Seems she was just jealous because she was ugly and had terrible split ends and took it out on her. Honestly, how hard was it to use conditioner? Snapping her thoughts away from the dumb bitch, she looked to her two teammates as they laid next to each other completely unconscious. Last she checked, Sasuke was running a fever and Naruto's chakra wouldn't settle making it hard for her to stay hidden. Yet another annoyance. Even in this state he's causing problems. Cha I'm gonna smack the hell out of him after this. She roared in her head as she threw another volley of shuriken at the three sound ninja in front of her. Ha, is this the best you have? you stupid bitch, shouted the one with strange arms and spiky black hair, Sakura hadn't bothered remembering their names, there was ugly bitch, weird arms and mummy face, god Naruto was rubbing off on her, she didn't let the taunt get to her, but she was at the end of her rope, she was awake for well over two days watching both of her teammates and had been fighting for a while against these three, they weren't really coming at her due to all the traps in the area, but she's been hit by several air blasts that she didn't have a good way to block from weird arms. Desperation was starting to take hold as her already small reserves of chakra were nearing zero, please, I need one of you to get up. She thought while gripping her last kanai. The sound ninja with his face covered in bandages stepped forward, I will ask this once again, hand over Sasuke Uchiha and we will leave you and your other teammate alive. Dosu, why are we bargaining? We should just kill. The angry boy was interrupted by a wave of chakra exploding into the air. All the ninja in the area, Team 10 in the bushes, Team Guy in the trees, the sound team and Sakura all felt the chakra blast into existence over the immediate area. Each of them felt sweat fall down their foreheads as the weight of the chakra fell upon them. It was larger than any of them have ever felt by orders of magnitudes. Even the sound ninja that were subjected to the terrifying presence of Orochimaru could only shake in fear at the feeling of such power. They didn't know what to do, none of them spoke as it was becoming difficult to breath due to the pressure. Unknown to the ninja in the clearing it wasn't just them feeling it. Everyone felt it, it only lasted an instant to those outside the forest of death. Everyone who was able to sense chakra beyond a basic level felt their nerves scream at them, telling them a predator had just emerged. The third Hokage in his office felt his battle instinct flare to the max causing him to turn to the forest in worry of who at that level managed to infiltrate the village during the exams. He was already signaling his personal guard to move out. Jiraiya the Toad Sage, who was sitting in a tree overlooking the hot springs in the southern part of the leaf village snapped his pen and instinctively flared his chakra to prepare for battle. Unfortunately, the women in this particular spring were ninja and pounced on the pervert after noticing his chakra. Kakashi Hataki dropped his book. Might Guy fell from his handstand. Asuma Serutobi dropped his cigarette. Kurenai Yuhi nearly tripped over herself as she walked home. The Anbu were frantically moving into action. The barrier squad members nearly passed out. All over the village hidden in the leaves Shinobi were feeling the pulse of chakra that signaled the birth of the one who would change everything. They would likely pass out in shock if they knew it was coming from the knucklehead Naruto Uzumaki of all people. In the clearing it was Sakura to figure it out first. She was the closest in proximity to Naruto and managed to turn her head towards him to see a minuscule amount of chakra glowing around his body. It was blue in color, and it was partially translucent, but she could see it covering him and her mind made the only connection that made sense. Naruto, she managed to say as the chakra pulse was slowly dying out. 
Her voice caused everyone from the leaf to turn to the unconscious blonde in shock. The sound ninja looked to her blonde teammate nervously. In the next moment the chakra was gone from the area, everyone was able to breath normally and wipe the sweat from their faces. Some, particularly those who knew Naruto, chalked it up to a weird fluke and tried to forget about it. Till Naruto stood up, the air around the blonde seemed different, almost as if it was waiting for his command, as if the world itself was waiting for him to demand something so it could happily oblige. The hairs on the back of everyone next stood up, as if a massive tiger was standing right behind them staring at their necks with drooling fangs. Again, it only lasted a moment before the feeling went away. Sakura looked to her now awake teammate nervously, Naruto, are you okay? She asked quietly considering there were three enemies listening. Naruto took a deep breath and opened his eye to take in the scene around him. In a single second he was able to figure out what was going on, which was strange he mused. His mind had never been this clear. He could tell everything that was going on. There were two teams just watching the fight, one in the trees above them he recognized them as the Bushy Brow Squad. Then in the bushes were his former classmates all staring at him with sweat visible on their faces, Shikamaru in particular looked seriously spooked. Sakura, it seemed, was defending both himself and the bastard from the sound team all standing in defensive positions, likely trying to figure out their next course of action now that he was awake. Based on how Sakura looked, exhausted, bruised, and she was nearly out of chakra, she wasn't winning the battle. Your eyes, Sakura whispered in shock, while staring at him she noticed something else, your whiskers are gone. This time at full volume as she couldn't fathom what had happened to her teammate. The rest of the leaf ninja noticed what she was pointing out now that she mentioned it. Naruto's eyes were still blue, but they held a glow to them that was unnatural. They held an image of power that unsettled any who looked into them. While his face was free of his whisker marks somehow, Ino in the bushes thought it was a shame as they were cute. Unknown to everyone, the whiskers were a sign of the imbalance of Nine Tails Chakra within his body and now that he was at equilibrium they faded from his face. Like how both the previous holders held no marks signifying their status as Jinchuriki, neither did Naruto now. Naruto turned to her and felt his mind go into a shock for a millisecond. Now that he was really focusing, he could see everything, the chakra in the air, the chakra flowing through the trees, the residual chakra of jutsu that were used. If he focused hard enough, he could tell, what type of jutsu had been used earlier. It was too much information. He couldn't focus. Then in the next second he somehow acclimated and he ignored the thousands of stimuli to look at his teammate once again. What do they want? Naruto questioned calmly, ignoring her comments, as he pointed to the three sound ninja. Before Sakura could answer the loud one with the strange arms yelled at him, Hey! Ya stupid blonde bastard were! No one saw it, no one could follow it more than a faint blur, but before anyone knew it. Naruto crossed the distance between himself and the sound ninja to slam his fist into the boy's chest ruthlessly. There was a faint glowing trail of blue chakra from Naruto's fist as he flooded his body to enhance himself. The air was displaced around him from the force behind the impact. Leaves flew away, the ground where Naruto pushed off from was cratered. Rock Lee, Observing in the trees was blow away as he was unable to follow the attack properly. He's become very dangerous, were the collective thoughts of Neji and Shikamaru as their highly strategic minds reassessed the blonde's capabilities from that maneuver and they didn't like their odds. The sound ninja who took the hit coughed up blood before flying back to a tree slamming into the base completely out cold. If his chest wasn't moving slightly, everyone would have thought he was killed by the attack. Sakura couldn't believe it. Hell none of the leaf ninja could. The boy who clumsily and awkwardly fought alongside too many clones to coordinate properly did that. Naruto stood up and shook his fist off, who the hell was that guy? He asked Sakura with a confused tilt of his head. H he uh, well he was attacking us to get to Sasuke. All three of them were. She answered with a glare to the two remaining sound ninja and a vindictive flare in her eyes. Hell yeah Naruto. I don't know what's going on but kick those jerks asses. Cha. Naruto turned to them and then back to Sakura, for real, they seem pretty weak. He asked with a frown while pointing his thumb towards the ninja in question. He had looked at their chakra, the amount, density, nature, how and where it was channeled, 
all of that and he just couldn't consider them anything more than small fry. Then he turned to the other leaf ninja surrounding them, also why are all of you just watching this? Do you want to take our scrolls or something? He asked while rubbing the back of his head trying to figure out who he was going to have to fight. Six leaf genin felt their eyes widen in shock as the blonde revealed that he knew they were there. Team 10 stood from the bushes, Shikamaru still visibly sweating, that chakra wasn't normal. It felt terrifyingly powerful, and I know it came from him. Those eyes, the change in his body, whatever happened, I want no part of it. We were going to jump in if Sakura couldn't handle it. Shikamaru gulped, both Ino and Choji knew to let him take the lead here and stayed quiet. Naruto smiled, ah that's nice of you Shikamaru. Bushy brow are you guys doing the same? He asked to team guy standing in the trees now visible to everyone else. Neji stepped forward before Lee could answer, no, we were merely observing. We are leaving, with that he and his team left in a hurry, Lee doing so at the glares of his teammates as they knew he wanted to speak to the blonde. Which they adamantly refused to allow at the moment, since they didn't know what Naruto would do next if they stuck around too long. Huh, why are they running off? Naruto wondered aloud, well not like their team isn't weird, I mean anyone with a sensei that has eyebrows like that is surely crazy. Right Sakura, he laughed while looking to his teammate with a grin. She could only nod dumbly, completely shocked at the change in tone of the situation. Before it was a life or death battle that she was slowly losing hope of winning and now Naruto has made it almost like a social gathering with no real danger. Dosu, the leader of the three sound ninja felt his heart settle back down and knew when to cut his losses. We will retreat without fight if you allow us. As an offering here is our scroll. He said while setting down their heaven scroll. Naruto watched as they picked up their teammate before fleeing into the forest. Huh. Guess they didn't want to fight anymore. He laughed lightly then clapped, well then, I guess they were terrified of my sheer awesomeness huh. Sakura picked the sleeping princess up and let's get moving we have the scroll we needed now. He ordered with lazy smile on his face. Sakura twitched at being ordered by her idiotic teammate, you know what, she met Naruto's eyes causing her to flinch and went to pick up Sasuke without a fuss. He's so solid. She mentally squealed while rubbing Sasuke's muscles as she carried him. Naruto stared dumbly at her for a moment, before letting his eyes roam over Sasuke's form. What the hell? Who put such corrosive chakra into him? When did that happen? Why is it attacking his body and chakra network? What the hell? Does that enhance him and cause withdrawals like a drug? Who could create that? Who would create that? Who would do such a terrible thing to Sasuke? That strange sound girl. The hell did I miss? Naruto didn't realize it yet, but he thought all of that in blink of an eye as his mind was able to process information hundreds of times faster now thanks to his now activated bloodline. Hey Shikamaru, are you guys coming with us? We're headed to the tower. He called out to Team 10 who were still frozen in the bushes watching the events that just happened. While tempted Shikamaru shook his head, we don't have the necessary scrolls yet. We'll see you there. He answered before rushing off, dragging both Choji and Ino behind him, the latter of which looked like she wanted to comment before being pulled away. Sakura watched them leave numbly, she didn't believe for a moment that they would have helped had it gotten worse. Had it not been for Naruto's new terrifying presence asking them why they were here, she doubted she would have even seen them in the first place. She was sure they would have stepped in either right before she died or right after, hopefully the former. Maybe I wasn't ready for this test, she thought sadly, she was behind Sasuke and even Naruto before entering the exams and it was the trials of the forest that hammered that home. Naruto, completely unaware of Sakura's inner thoughts, walked over to Sasuke and jabbed a finger overflowing with chakra into Sasuke's upper spine with a frown. If he was right and what he was seeing was correct, then that should slow the spread of that evil chakra into his system. Sakura felt the impact and spun around to Naruto with a glare, the hell did you just do? She questioned him fiercely, protectiveness of Sasuke overpowering her unease around Naruto. Naruto raised his hands with a smile, hopefully slow the spread of that chakra from the mark on his neck. Let's get going we're not that far from the tower. He answered lightly. Sakura didn't know how to respond to that and just decided to follow him silently. Her head was starting to hurt at the changes Naruto just went through. 
It took them two hours of walking to get to the tower. Naruto dealt with three teens that tried to ambush them at lightning speed and they made it to the tower without much hassle. Sakura was done trying to figure out what was going on with Naruto and just accepted that he was somehow way better than before and followed behind him tiredly. At this point she just wanted a shower and a bed, she didn't care anymore. Sasuke was heavy on her shoulders, and it wasn't nearly as fun carrying him anymore. Inside the tower they saw a sign telling them a riddle concerning heaven and earth. Sakura didn't even bother reading it, she let Naruto give his new brain a go at it. Naruto read it over a few times before snapping his fingers, ah, oh, we need to open one of each type of scroll at the same time. He exclaimed happily. Sakura sighed, sure, let's give it a go. Wahoo! Naruto cheered as he opened both at the same time while wiggling in place, excited at what was to come. Sakura felt her exhaustion fully hit her and unceremoniously dropped her crush to the floor then sat on the ground. She was even more tired watching Naruto's excited attitude. An explosion of smoke came from the scrolls and from it emerged their teacher from the academy, Uruka. At first, he smiled at Sakura, then frowned in worry at the unconscious Sasuke. Turning to Naruto he felt his heart stop. The chakra coming from him was the same as the terrifying pulse from earlier. If it wasn't for the fact that it contained no traces of Nine Tails chakra he would have believed the seal was broken and the demon was free once again. What the happened to Naruto? He thought in shock unable to form words. He didn't even want to mention the glowing eyes that made his head spin. Naruto didn't know nor care about the internal thoughts of Uruka and just waved happily, Uruka sensei. Long time no see, we finally finished up in the forest, thank goodness cause there's bunch of weirdos in there I'm telling ya. He laughed. Uruka chuckled nervously, is that right? Well, I was supposed to tell you about the meaning behind heaven and earth, but I think we need to get Sasuke to the medics, and Naruto I think you may need to see them too. Naruto waved his hand back and forth, no I'm fine, not hurt at all. Sakura is out of chakra though and her coils are pretty strained. Also someone needs to look at Sasuke's neck mark, it's poisoning him with chakra. He informed Uruka while picking his ear. Uruka looked at Sasuke's neck and gasped in recognition then turned to Naruto in confusion at his knowledge to what was going on. Sakura just sighed from her place on the ground, she knew Uruka sensei would catch up. Naruto spent the remainder of the time before the second part of the exams finished in his room just staring out the window into the forest and thinking. He didn't really get it when he woke up the first time, but he was starting to figure out how his eyes worked now. He'd have to think up a name for his eyes, they were clearly an ability similar to Sasuke's Sharingan. The best way to describe it would be as if someone who saw the world in the earliest most basic version of a television, now saw it through the latest cutting-edge monitor that the hospitals used. He instinctively understood chakra, and could control it with the closest thing to perfection. Not to mention he was able to remember things he saw perfectly and process information at extremely fast speeds. Naruto could see everything in incredible detail, he could even focus and see things in even greater detail than his normal vision like from a tree to the individual threads that made up the leaves. He flooded his body and muscles like he knew the more experienced ninja did to enhance themselves to be stronger and faster and found that not only could he do it unlike before, but he was able to do it to a level he didn't think possible till now. Earlier against the sound ninja he was able to rush forward and punch him without anyone reacting and he wasn't even really pushing himself. Another thing he noticed was that his eyes didn't turn off like Sasuke's Sharingan. They were always active, the constant input of information was helpful during a fight and if he were trying to understand a situation as quickly as possible but just sitting around lounging, it was a bit annoying. He actually started closing his eyes when he didn't need them he found he was still very much aware of the world around him even with them closed. He'd have to think of a better solution because he was sure he looked a bit strange walking around with his eyes closed but still moving as if he could see perfectly. Since the pulse of chakra, people were taking the situation of the exams a bit differently. The Jonan and Anbu were stationed at various places around the tower to monitor for whatever or whoever was responsible. Jiraiya skipped all pretenses of waiting to run into Naruto organically and went to the tower to meet up with the third Hokage to investigate the situation. The Hokage, when he arrived at the tower along with Jiraiya and Kakashi, were pulled aside by Aruka. 
Baruka stared at what was likely the three most powerful leaf ninja with a serious expression. It's Naruto, he said seriously. All three of them, who all had different levels of attachment to the boy in question looked at Aruka with narrowed eyes hoping it wasn't something bad. Aruka gulped, that chakra, it was Naruto, he's different. When the prelims start, you'll see. He's in his team's room right now if you want to see him now. Although I think addressing Sasuke Uchiha's curse mark is more pressing. Which is what the three of them did. Thankfully Sasuke was still out cold when they arrived, so they were able to bind the curse mark with a sealing jutsu called the evil sealing method quite easily. Sasuke woke up shortly after, groggy and confused. While more irritable than before, he wasn't too different after getting briefed on where he was in the situation with the seal. Although safe from the effects of the seal at the moment, Sasuke mentioned his chakra was a bit more wild than normal. The three moved on and decided to wait till the next day when the prelims would take place to see the changes in Naruto. Which is where they found themselves, all gaping at the blonde's glowing blue eyes and terrifying chakra that was barely held beneath the surface. The other Jonin, from the leaf or otherwise were all doing the same. While the blonde in question was chuckling at Sasuke who in turn glared at him hatefully which caused him to laugh harder. Here is in turn to Jiraiya, have you? No, the sage answered seriously, that is not something I've ever seen. If I couldn't feel his chakra, and see that his whiskers are somehow gone. I would assume that he was just pushing a lot of chakra into his eyes for whatever reason and nothing was all that different. But they are different, and the glow is unnatural. Neither Minato nor Kashina had anything remotely similar to that. Kakashi uncovered his Sharingan for a moment to look at the blonde. I would ask a Hayuga to confirm but his chakra is calmer than I've ever seen it and his eyes have a tremendous amount of chakra flowing through them similar to an activated ocular jutsu, like mine or Sasuke's Sharingan. Hiruzen hummed for a moment as his mind worked at light speed, we will see what changes have come in the coming moment during his battle. I suspect things are going to be a lot more interesting soon. Kakashi and Jiraiya both agreed. In the far corner, a concealed Orochimaru was staring at Naruto with a gaping mouth in complete shock. What the? The snake thought uncharacteristically, a sentiment shared by everyone else in the room that has met the blonde before. Down with all the genin, Naruto was still enjoying himself by laughing at Sasuke, who was in his normal grumpy attitude. Ya know that evil chakra is sealed off right, so why are you acting all moody? Sad soccer is not babying you anymore. He asked with mocking frown. Sasuke continued to glare at the blonde, while Sakura just stared ahead completely over it. Naruto had been poking fun at her and Sasuke ever since they got to the tower and no matter what either of them did, they couldn't touch Naruto to shut him up. Yelling at him just made him laugh at them. It was a horrible day when the class clown prankster suddenly became all-powerful. The third Hokage appeared before the crowd of Chunin hopefuls with a smoking pipe in his mouth and his hands folded behind his back. Congratulations for making it this far, he said gravely. Naruto smiled at the old man then proceeded to tune out the rest of his speech. He got the gist of it, this was a substitute for war, and they needed to fight for the village. He got it, they were show ponies for the future of their respective villages to potential clients. When they asked if anyone wanted to drop from the exams, the guy with the info cards quit for some reason, even though he wasn't hurt or lacking in chakra. Naruto rolled his eyes assuming that he was a coward or something. While stronger than practically all of the genin here the guy still ran off, so Naruto didn't spare him much thought. After that, another monologue started, and Naruto decided to be himself. Ah, old man we get it. Can we move on I'm about to pass out here. Naruto whined with his hands in the air in exasperation. The leaf Jonin forgot about Naruto's new presence for a moment and were reminded that he was in fact an immature idiot. Many took to glaring at both him and Kakashi, who was rubbing his head nervously, as Naruto's disrespect reflected poorly on him. Truly, do you understand? Hiruzen asked in amusement. Duh ya damn geezer. Naruto answered getting hisses from many of the leaf nin and a small snort from Jiraiya up in the Hokage observation platform. We're show ponies for the old fogies and there are too many of us for the main event, so you got to weed out some of the weaklings. I swear you take 100 words to say 20. The disrespect was ignored in favor for the surprise that Naruto of all people understood the situation when he was clearly not paying too much attention. Well, 
Very good. A surprised Hiruzen muttered with a nod. I leave it to you. He turned to a sickly looking John and then moved to his platform with Jiraiya. The man introduced himself as Hayate, if you would all look to the monitor. He said with a small cough. Names began flashing and after a while it was Sasuke's, and someone named Yoroi. Naruto looked at his teammate's opponent and saw that his chakra seemed to have special properties around his hands. Sasuke watch out for his hands. He said quietly. Sasuke barely heard it and before he could ask why someone else did. Kakashi who was suddenly leaning down with his head next to Naruto's added, why's that? He whispered. Naruto fell back in shock. He didn't even know when Kakashi got there. Whoa, how do you do that Kakashi-sensei? He asked in bewilderment before answering, his charka, it's got something interesting going on with his hands. He whispered to the two who gazing at the boy in question. Kakashi hummed in interest, so his eyes did have some type of ocular jutsu that allowed him to see chakra. Well you heard him, Sasuke. Let's get up to the second level, Sakura, Naruto. Kakashi said with an eye smile before walking towards the stairs. Moments later it was just the Uchiha and the strange genin left, and their fight began. Sasuke made quick work of the guy with Naruto's warning and sharing an enhanced hand to hand. Naruto cheered loudly and obnoxiously, Wu, you did it, you beat that guy, he shouted getting glares from some of the others in the room. Kakashi clapped with an eye smile next to the blonde while Sakura was on the other end of the stands next to Kurenai pretending, she was in team 8. Fights continued for a while, Naruto made a genuine nuisance of himself by calling out everyone's weaknesses as a joke while they fought, then made both helpful and unhelpful suggestions. Shino your bugs are really gross I mean they're inside that guy's arms. Yeah, they should eat that chakra it's like an air cannon. Wo Choji's extra fat, that sound guy will have an easier target now. Hey Hanada, he's hitting those chakra point things inside you, you should block that. You Hayuga guy, I'll kick your ass, is he a puppet? Think Bun Bun will notice it's a wind jutsu. These sound ninja are all on brand, huh? I mean genjutsu from a bell. Think they go out of their way to stick to their niche. Oh cool, Shikamaru won. The only ones that were enjoying Naruto's commentary were Kakashi, Hiruzen and Jiraiya. All three who would have been bored out of their minds watching Genin fight. Also, Naruto's observations gave them insight into his eyes' new abilities. Naruto Uzumaki vs. Kiba Inazuka. Oh, hey I get Kiba. Naruto said with a cheer. Ha, Akamaru. We get an easy one. Kiba cheered while petting his faithful companion who was laying on the ground refusing to move. Huh, what's wrong? Naruto jumped down to the arena before turning to Kiba, he's scared. He called out happily. Kiba glared at the blonde, as if. He probably doesn't want to waste his time with a dead last. No worries I got this myself. Kiba said arrogantly, not noticing Akamaru was shaking while looking away from Naruto. It was unfortunate that his enhanced senses were primarily in his nose as he didn't quite notice how much Naruto has changed beyond his eyes. To which he thought Naruto was just trying to get more attention. Hayate looked between the two nervously, well the blonde made him nervous not Kiba, then started the fight on the Hokage's signal. Everyone, from the genin to the Hokage leaned forward in anticipation. Naruto watched Kiba approach him as if he was in slow motion. He could see every muscle twitch and minuscule detail of the boy's approach and felt like he had hours to respond. A punch from the Inazuka flew at Naruto at speeds that he would have likely been unable to dodge before his evolution. To everyone's shock and Kiba's horror, Naruto disappeared then was suddenly behind Kiba looking in the direction of his punch. Who was that aimed at? He taunted lightly, I would advise you start moving a bit quicker or you'll never hit me. He added with a chuckle. Kiba shouted in anger before releasing a barrage of attacks, each time Naruto would disappear then blur behind Kiba with a laugh not even once going on the offensive. In the stands, everyone was shocked at the blonde's new abilities. It was unbelievable how he went from one of the weaker idiots in their generation to this. What the hell? Kurenai muttered in shock, Kiba was a very talented genin. She was confident he was going to have a chance to beat nearly anyone here. Now he was being led around like a child by someone that should have been useless. Kakashi was observing with his Sharingan active, he's supplementing his body with chakra, 
I don't think a single drop is being wasted. He said lightly hiding his surprise. Guy was looking down seriously, Li He is going to be a tough one to beat. He said lowly to his apprentice who nodded seriously. Neji had his Byakugan active and was watching in shock, when did that blonde moron get a bloodline? His eyes have chakra running through them similar to how mine or the Uchiha's do when our eyes are active. Everyone heard his comment and found their suspicions confirmed. Jiraiya continued to watch closely, the young Hayuga confirmed what Kakashi was saying. We'll have to talk to Naruto after the prelims sensei. Something changed Naruto and I'll bet my fortune it has to do with Orochimaru attacking Sasuke in the forest. It was the only thing that made sense after all. Hiruzen nodded, I agree. I'll have Kakashi bring him to us afterwards. Although I'm sure he would have anyway. Sasuke glared as he watched with his Sharingan, I don't get it, that idiot didn't have a bloodline before. He said in shock. Sakura walked over, in the forest while you were both unconscious Naruto's chakra and body changed. She said with a frown. He was different, or rather his presence was. He's still an idiot, just able to take out an enemy in the blink of an eye with no effort. Kakashi turned to her, yeah, he asked lightly, although his performance right now led him to believe it. Kakashi was still curious at Naruto's improvements. The sound genin Zaku, the one Shino fought. She answered, I'm honestly surprised he managed to make it here after that. Naruto hit him harder than anyone I've ever seen. Shino, who was near them watching with his team spoke up, then that would explain where the broken ribs that my bugs felt, came from. I found it odd he was that injured and still fighting. He commented. Down below Naruto was having a great time, but found he was getting bored. Hey I'm gonna attack now, okay. He said to the huffing Inazuka. Similar to before Naruto blurred forward and punched Kiba, this time he made sure not to hit him nearly as hard as he did the sound guy from the forest. Though, Kita was still blasted off his feet and sent rolling back till he hit the wall completely out cold. Naruto frowned as he looked at his fist, am I that much stronger or is he that weak? He turned to Kakashi, did I hit him too hard? I expected him to be okay at that level. I didn't even put that much chakra into it. Kakashi answered from the stands with an eye smile, Naruto, there was enough power in that punch to knock out any chunin I've met. He said with a thumbs up. He didn't mention that some Jonin would likely have been taken out due to the impressive speeds Naruto just showed. Naruto listened to his sensei before turning to Kiba, who was starting to come to, Hey dog breath, you suck. Oi bronchitis, call it ease finished. He called to the proctor in amusement. Hayate sweat dropped, is he referring to me? He looked at Kiba for a moment who was failing to get to his feet before nodding to himself. Winner Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto whooped then jumped back up to the stand smiling at his team. That was pretty easy. He laughed with a comical expression on his face. Team 8's sensei Kurenai gave him a side eye at his disrespect, but didn't call him out. Shikamaru, who had been unable to think of anything else since Naruto's awakening in the forest, stepped forward towards Naruto, his personality is the same so he may answer me here. What's up with your eyes? He asked nonchalantly. Everyone subconsciously leaned forward hoping for answers. Naruto perked up. Oh yeah, I have super awesome eyes now. He said with a grin. Everyone in earshot fell over at his answer. Shikamaru shot up. I get that you idiot what's new about them. He shouted much to his team's shock. Naruto leaned away from the Nara. Whoa why are you all upset? I mean I can see way better. Not to mention my chakra control is really good now. Honestly, it's not too big of a deal. I'm as awesome as I've always been. He said with a devilish grin. Shikamaru rubbed his forehead tiredly, I don't know if he's messing with me or just the same old dumbass. Kakashi smiled at the interaction, interesting. I guess we'll have to talk to him later. At least his ego isn't too much bigger. He thought with a chuckle. Sakura didn't care about her troublesome teammate's weirdness anymore. Meanwhile, Sasuke was staring at Naruto with his Sharingan active trying to understand him. Stop gazing into my eyes ya bastard. Shut up, loser. Naruto watched sadly as Sakura and Ino fell to the ground in a spectacular double knockout. The fight was boring, they were moving slower than anyone else so far. The only interesting part came when Ino managed to slam her mind into Sakura. Who would have thought that Sakura has a second personality? 
Naruto thought cheerfully, shame that she lost, it would have been nice for all three of us to make it to the finals. But, with a showing like that maybe it's for the best. Kakashi set Sakura down against the wall with Asuma doing the same next to him with Ino. Team 10 and Team 7 gathered around their unconscious members. Well, not like that wasn't a lame showing, Naruto said simply, he turned to the two Jonin with mock disappointment and pointed to the two girls, that's your fault. I mean they were so weak they both lost. Kakashi thumped Naruto on the head while Asuma glared at him but didn't say anything. Sasuke looked at Sakura sadly, I expected more from her. She did well to protect us in the forest. He grumbled. Yeah, but that was against the sound ninja, and we've seen they're pretty weak. I mean Shikamaru beat one without throwing a punch. Naruto said then chuckled. The only remaining sound ninja in the room, Dosu, could only glare at Naruto as he was too terrified to say anything in response. Kakashi thumped Naruto again, don't insult other countries. He chastised, barely. Naruto, in a lightning blitz of speed that Kakashi wasn't ready for, shot his arm out and thumped Kakashi on the shoulder, since he couldn't reach his head. Stop that, Naruto whined with an overdramatic frown. Kakashi only chuckled while he waved his student off. He really is the same as before, he just has this crazy ability enhancing his skills. He thought lightly. The next fight was Rock Lee versus a guy from the sand, Gara. Naruto and the others watched as the beginnings of the fight were strictly hand to hand, most of which was Lee defending from omnidirectional sand that was protecting Gara. The sand is filled with chakra, Naruto said with an uncharacteristic seriousness. Kakashi, guy and the rest turned to him with a frown. Down below Lee back flipped away then blitzed forward to re-engage. Obviously, otherwise he couldn't control the sand, said Sasuke with narrowed eyes, unknowingly saying what was on the Jonin's minds. Naruto shook his head, yeah, sure, I wouldn't have mentioned it if it was just his chakra. But that sand has two, no three, different chakras in it, strange, he said with a hum at the end. The Jonin who managed to hear him narrowed their eyes at the information, particularly Kakashi who uncovered his Sharingan. Guy who was next to him leaned over as his rival worked to confirm his student's information. Kakashi covered his eye with a sigh, whatever he is able to see, it's beyond what I can. To me the sand has chakra in it, that's all. Lee landed on the statue after a series of dodges and Guy, having more insight into Gara now, decided to allow him to remove his weights. Rock Lee took those words with genuine excitement as he happily revealed weights beneath his leg warmers then quickly held them up after removing them. Gara merely watched silently, still showing no emotion on his face. Which was ironic considering the tattoo on his forehead of the kanji for love. Naruto smiled at the interaction not fully understanding the ceremony of the situation, huh, you wouldn't think taking a few weights off would make someone that happy. He wondered, who knows with those two. Kakashi sighed tiredly, long past trying to figure out Guy's eccentricities that were unfortunately passed on to his student. Everyone watched as the weight fell to the ground, wondering what the big deal was. The sand ninja watching didn't believe it would matter all that much. Till the earth shook from the weights hitting the ground. The reaction from everyone in the room, from Jenin to the supervising Jonin, Orochimaru in disguise, Jiraiya, and the third observing up top. They're insane. Naruto shook his head in amusement, I'd love to have a fight with Lee, he's got some incredible strength if he's that fast with those weights and no chakra helping him out. He said lightly. Lee shot off towards Gara several times quicker than before. Guy cheering him on with all the genin muttering in shock at the speed. Naruto was able to easily follow the fight despite the incredible speed that they were moving at now. Well Lee was moving at, Gara seemed just as surprised and unable to follow the green beast as the rest of the genin. After removing his weights Lee's movements were not only faster but far more precise. Naruto decided to watch him far more closely. The way Lee's muscles would contract for his movements, the placements of his feet, the way his shoulders angled, everything Lee did Naruto soaked up with glee. Now that his brain was processing information hundreds of times faster, he was able to pick apart what was happening in incredible detail. Lee's fighting style revolved around striking very hard and very fast. Naruto knew that his own technique left much to be desired so he would work to incorporate these movements. At the same time, 
Gara was able to maneuver his sand in more widespread ways now that he was directing it with his hands. Naruto was able to see the various types of chakra commingling within the grains as he attacked. What's he doing? His bandages are moving. Naruto wondered aloud getting Kakashi's head to snap towards him before he watched the fight more closely. True to Naruto's observations, Lee managed to kick Gara in the chin launching him into the air then proceeded to follow up with an impressive series of kicks, each impact reverberated through the room getting small flinches from the genin at the powerful display. The bandages wrapped around Gara allowing Lee to grab and spin the sand ninja into the hard ground. Naruto tilted his head in wonder while watching the turn of events. He looked over at Kakashi and Gai who were talking back and forth lowly then to the genin around the stands watching in anticipation with impressed looks on their faces at Lee's capabilities. Then he decided to ruin it for fun. That was a pretty good substitution by Sand Boy. Naruto said with a devilish smile. Hope Lee isn't hurt too bad by the backlash, since he didn't really accomplish much. The ninja around him looked at him in shock, Team Guy in horror before turning back to the fight to watch as Lee's attack landed and was revealed to be wasted. How the hell? muttered Tenton while watching Lee barely dodge the sand due to the pain from the lotus. When? muttered Neji. Guy was frantic while watching the fight progress, I didn't even see it. He shouted in shock. It was during the kicks. Answered Kakashi with his Sharingan exposed, when you closed your eyes to pray, he switch out in a flash. I would pull him from the fight guy he's in no condition to continue. Guy glared at his rival but before he could talk Naruto spoke up lazily, nah he's gonna be fine. He's pushing chakra to those inner blockers, give him a minute or so and he'll have quite the boost. Blockers? Asked Sasuke not seeing what Naruto was talking about with his Sharingan. They're called gates, the eight inner gates to be exact. Answered Kakashi while turning his Sharingan enhanced glare to Guy, and you taught how to open them to a genin. You're going to cripple that boy. Guy gave his rival a side eye before focusing back on his struggling student while leaning forward over the railing. His fingers were pushing into the metal railing due to his nervous squeezing. You wouldn't get it, having everything come to you so easily. He said in a low baritone, for the rest of us, we have to claw and crawl for every bit of strength. It's even worse for Lee. Even the most basic ninjutsu and genjutsu is beyond him. His expression turned fond as Lee was slowly getting faster as he was overcoming the backlash of the primary lotus. Lee just wants to prove he's a splendid ninja with his hard work. I only did everything in my power to help him with his dream. He proclaimed proudly. Naruto smiled down at Lee, he was truly impressed with the boy's drive to achieve his dream. Not to mention the evidence of thousands of hours of hard work getting him to where he is now with his lack of ninjutsu or genjutsu. I think he's gotten there already bushy brow sensei. Naruto interjected lightly, something I've learned is that ninja don't always improve on a slow curve, it can be a sharp and immediate increase as well. Lee's movements became even sharper than before as his body was acclimating to the eight gates activation. His eyes flaring with incredible power, and his entire body shining brightly with green chakra. Every movement was perfectly executed and delivered with tremendous force destroying the fighting arena. Gara was pushing even more chakra into the sand, trying to keep up with green genin's speed but was being sent flying by a rapid aerial combo. I mean he's already adapting and improving with every second. I can tell that he's become way better than he was before this fight. If he keeps going as he is, then he'll no doubt become one of the best taijutsu users the Leaf Village has ever seen. Naruto finished with a small smile as his glowing eyes took in every detail. Guy looked down happily. A bit of water popping up in his eyes, thank you for those words young Naruto, I'll trust those eyes to see Lee's incredible potential. Naruto laughed in response, leave it to me, he said with a thumbs up. The rest of the fight was both incredible and terrifying for those watching. Ino and Sakura had woken up just before Lee awakened the gates fully and were enraptured by the boys' skills. Both of them fully realizing that they were way out of their league if those two were potential opponents for them. Lee's explosive use of five of the eight inner gates showed Naruto that there was so much out there that he didn't know. While observing the world with his new eyes that allowed him to begin understanding it better, he was only now realizing that he had a fundamental lack of knowledge to connect the dots. Otherwise, he would be able to put things into words beyond, limit thing, chakra wall thing, different chakras moving all strange. 
It was just hard to put into words what he instinctively knew. As the fight was reaching a climax Li was completely unable to fight and fell to the ground, his body giving out under the stress of the fifth gate. Gara didn't hesitate and shot his sand at the boy with a bloodthirsty smile on his face. The Jonan, Guy in particular, were about to rush to save Li but a blur shot forward first stopping the sand from even touching Li. The resulting impact blasted all the sand away making most turn away from the shockwave. Naruto had shot forward and smacked the sand away with a hand packed with dense chakra. He turned to Lee with a frown, based on the injuries, it would likely take weeks if not months of rehabilitation to get back into fighting shape. Though it would have been nigh impossible if Gara was able to crush Lee in his sand like he wanted. Hey sand boy, you won, no need to go that far, Naruto said with a frown while standing guard in front of Lee as he subconsciously released his chakra. Gara began breathing heavily at Naruto's appearance, his chakra began moving erratically as his instincts flared beyond what he's ever felt. Naruto's presence driving Gara to near hysteria as the beast within was screaming to flee to save their lives. In the next moment Baki, the sand Jonin who looked visibly nervous, appeared in front of Gara with his arms spread. Gai and Kakashi also landed in front of Naruto looking serious and bored respectfully. Ah you guys didn't have to help me out I would have taken these losers out. Naruto laughed while picking up Lee, his grin became fiendish, I mean that Sandy Jonin over there seems pretty nervous just looking at me. Kakashi sighed tiredly, please try and not cause an incident with the hidden sand village Naruto. Baki interjected, I think we can end this and move on. Gara go back to the stands to Tamari and Konkuro. He ordered, somehow snapping the frantic boy out of it and getting him to leave in a swirl of sand. Huh, that seems to be a very uncomfortable way of travel. Muttered Naruto lightly, getting sand everywhere would be miserable he thought. Guy moved to take Lee from Naruto, thank you for jumping in Naruto. I was hesitant to interfere, but that was the right call. He said shamefully while holding his nearly crippled student. He knew that had the sand wrapped around Lee it would have been the end of his journey. Kakashi patted his rival on the back before grabbing Naruto to body flicker back to the stands. Try not to interfere again, they may disqualify you. Kakashi chastised lightly. Naruto frowned in frustration at the thought of being disqualified for saving a comrade, which caused his chakra to flare and eyes to glow brighter subconsciously, he didn't even notice it was escaping him. Everyone in the room who wasn't in the clearing during the second test felt the weight of Naruto's chakra in person for the first time it was very different than an instinctual fear from the flare. Now that they had a front row seat to it, the genin were visibly terrified and unable to move while the Jonin and Hokage became extremely weary. Somehow it was Sakura of all people who smacked Naruto on the back of the head, stop it you're scaring everyone, dumbass. She told him tiredly, her hand was shaking but she managed to hold firm knowing in her heart that he was still the same Naruto for the most part. Naruto's presence instantly went back to normal, and he looked around surprised, huh? Everyone from Sasuke to the other John and Sensei were looking at him warily. It was a different look than what he was used to getting as a kid, one of loathing and apprehension, this was just planned fear. He didn't really understand why, he wasn't trying to scare anyone. He turned to the high stands where the Hokage and some other old dude were standing and shot over. He needed to figure out what was going on with everyone's reaction to his chakra and the old man knew more than most about stuff like this. He was really strong himself. Hiruzen and Jiraiya were able to follow Naruto's approach, but they were blown away by the boy's speed. He was easily on par with skilled Jonin, although his movements weren't exactly skillful, it was due to his masterful chakra control allowing him this speed not physical skill. Landing on the railing Naruto looked at the Hokage with a frown then felt a bit vindictive which caused his eyes to crinkle in amusement, hey, old man, is everyone here so lame that I scare them that much, I don't get it. He asked with a whisper shout making sure everyone could hear him to twist the knife. He found it pretty funny that everyone was so scared of him now. That prankster personality and his normal ego take on a much different tone now that he's this capable. Mused Hiruzen. Had it been anyone else he would squash such things here and now, but Naruto's childhood flashed into his brain, and he felt the blonde probably deserved some respect as recompense. Jiraiya was the one to answer, you may not get it, 
but your chakra presence is far stronger than most would have ever encountered, much less greenhorns like we have here. He said seriously. He didn't want to mention that the number of people he's felt that scared him more with just their chakra were in fact just two. The third Hokage and Hanzo of the Salamanders. Naruto nodded the information then turned to Jiraiya, who the hell are you, ya old man? He questioned comically. Instead of being put off Jiraiya grinned happily at the question, who am I you asked? He shouted while getting into a pose and he readied his summoning jutsu. Hiruzen interjected, he's a former student of mine, Jiraiya. He answered making Jiraiya fall over and sulk due to his intro being interrupted. Naruto stared at Jiraiya for several moments causing both Hiruzen and Jiraiya to look at him curiously. Jiraiya felt like he was being broken down to the smallest details by those eyes and found that he didn't like it one bit. Right as he was about to say something Naruto turned around. So, he's an old guy like you. Cool, I guess. Your chakra is very interesting, geezer. He said lightly before speeding back over to his team. Jiraiya turned to his sensei with his face serious, I don't know what happened to him but he's unlike anyone I've ever come across. I didn't sense a speck of the Nine Tails chakra either, it was like it was completely gone from his body. He said while watching Naruto get lightly reprimanded by Kakashi for bothering them. I would like to learn more about his eyes and what he's able to see, but for now let's assume it's unique to him and be thankful he's been given such a gift with those men out there looking for him. Hiruzen said with a puff of his pipe, not to mention Orochimaru lurking around itching to cause trouble. We may have need of Naruto's newfound strength soon. He'll need some growing up to match his power up before he's all that reliable. Jiraiya said with a snort getting a laugh out of the Hokage. Ha, huh, he's always been a brat, now he's a brat with terrible power. You saw how fast and strong he was in that match. Hiruzen said lightly, if he were to hammer in the basics of Taijutsu, he may become faster and stronger than any of us with just chakra enhancement. We also don't know what he's like when pushing it to the max. I would honestly put him on a level above most in the village shinobi, we need to see his abilities with ninjutsu and genjutsu to really understand but as of now only the very best would be able to face him and win. It was a crazy thing to say but Jiraiya believed it after getting a small up close look at him. Naruto didn't know it, but he was giving off a vibe of supreme confidence, that when mixed with his strength made him all the more fearsome. He supposed that this was why even experienced Jonin like Asuma and Guy were weary around him at the moment. Indeed, Hiruzen agreed, I would have normally allowed you to go about meeting and training him in your own way but as of now we will be dropping all pretenses. He has awakened a new bloodline that has granted him unknown abilities. After we speak with him, he is to be with you at all times, I do not want Danzo to have time to approach him. That is the last thing anyone needs, and I do not want to hear about it from the other elders that he needs to be trained, properly. Jiraiya could only nod silently while he mourned his precious research time in the coming weeks. But even he could understand the gravity of the situation. It wouldn't take long for Naruto's awakened abilities to spread through the village then the continent. Mix in his now uncanny resemblance to Minato now that his whiskers were gone, thing are gonna change. In his expert spy opinion, Naruto would have the month before everyone in a position of power to have at least heard a rumor about him. In their discussions, Hiruzen and Jiraiya didn't notice that the last of the prelim fights were finished and the winning genin were gathered on the floor again to determine their opponents for the finals. Hayate gestured to a small podium with a box atop it. We're not going to make it complicated, pick a number. Number one will fight number two and so on. Sasuke Uchiha, please step forward. Sasuke walked up silently and drew his number, funnily enough it was number one. From there it continued, Naruto watched on as it was decided that Puppet Dude would fight Shino. Shikamaru would fight Wind Girl. Dosu the sound guy got the highest number meaning a free round and finally he drew his number with a comical expression he showed it to everyone else, he had been hoping for two to fight Sasuke but he got three meaning the Hyuga. But that means... Naruto thought warily while looking to Gara who by process of elimination was to be Sasuke's opponent in the first round. He locked eyes with Kakashi who gave him a reassuring eye smile that only made him worry more. Sasuke could only clench his fists as he stared forward ignoring everyone. So these are the matchups for the first round of the finals. We need time to allow the dignitaries in Kei's cage to arrive, so you have one month to train. 
I would keep everyone in the finals in mind as you prepare, you don't know who you could end up facing should you win. Instructed Hayate to the Chunin hopefuls. With that the second exam was officially over and everyone began leaving. The supervising Jonin and Chunin left to perform their duties while the sensei gathered their teams to lead them out of the forest towards their designated training areas. Unlike the rest, Kakashi led his team to the Hokage who then gestured for them to follow him out of the forest to his office in the Hokage Tower. Jiraiya was silently accompanying them while the Hokage's Anbu guards were following from the shadows. Standing in the Hokage's office Naruto absentmindedly took in the room as the old people got settled. It was an interesting room if he were honest, not due to the items within the room but the residual chakra that had seeped into the environment. The desk that the old man sat behind was practically glowing from the chakra of four of the most powerful people in history having sat behind it. Naruto. The blonde's head shot up at Sakura's shout to notice that everyone in the room was staring at him. He tilted his head in confusion, I wasn't listening. He said plainly. Sasuke and Sakura shook their heads in embarrassment, their teammate was as annoying as always while Kakashi laughed awkwardly from his spot on the wall. Naruto. I asked what you can tell me about your eyes. The Hokage asked again while staring directly into Naruto's new eyes. Naruto pursed his lips in thought, well I'm able to see chakra ya no. But that is a way too simple way to say it. It's like I can truly understand chakra and its place in the world. He explained lightly with a shrug. Kakashi latched onto that, what do you mean, its place in the world? He questioned. Well it's like the difference in knowing that salt is in ramen and knowing why and how much salt would make ramen taste the best. Answered Naruto. While a strange way to explain it, the Hokage and Kakashi, actually understood what he was getting at. Jiraiya looked like he understood and smirked in amusement at the way he tried to explain it. Sasuke and Sakura weren't even surprised that ramen came into the conversation, so they just accepted it and moved on. If I'm really honest I'm able to fully understand what I look at, but I'm having trouble putting it into words. Like the desk you're at old man, it was created by water and earth chakra bound together by yang chakra. Naruto continued while pointing to the desk, then there is the faint traces, almost impossible for me to see, of the same chakra that exists naturally in the world around us flowing through the wood. I guess since old man first had the ability of wood style that's where it came from, he really must have been incredible. Everyone was spellbound at the insight Naruto was given by his eyes, most particularly Jiraiya, who had experience with teaching a person with tremendous eye powers. These abilities aren't too dissimilar from the Rinnegan that Nagato possessed. He too was able to perceive and understand chakra. There is a test to see just how similar. He thought before moving over to Kakashi, I need chakra paper, I know someone eclectic as you would carry some around. Kakashi didn't really get why but he handed the small stack of chakra papers he had over to Jiraiya. The sage moved over to the three genin and handed one to each of them. Sakura, if you would be so kind, please push chakra into that paper. Jiraiya instructed the girl who did so curiously, a moment later and the paper crumbled into dust, an affinity to earth jutsu, very nice, something you and I share. Sasuke please, he gestured to the Uchiha who looked at his paper intensely. After a moment, Instead of bursting into flame his paper crinkled. Huh, Kakashi mused from the wall, interesting. Sasuke looked down in melancholy, it would explain his issues with using the fireball jutsu in his younger years when learning from his father. Seems he just wasn't as inclined to fire as the rest of his clan, as much as him, and that made him look lesser to his father at the time. Lightning, interesting for an Uchiha, but with your teacher it may be a blessing. Mentioned Jiraiya with a thumb pointed to Kakashi. Then he turned to Naruto, the real reason he asked for the papers, the Rinnegan gave the user completely malleable chakra able to utilize all five elements as if each were the primary affinity. He and everyone looked at Naruto as he held up his paper. After a second Naruto grinned fiercely and the paper began to glow a subtle blue. He turned his head to look over at Jiraiya and waved the paper happily, ha! Huh. I broke your little test. Jiraiya felt his body weaken at the unique reaction. Never in his life had he seen something like that, no one had no affinity, Nagato's paper had a reaction of all the elements at the same time before turning into a strange black metal. Kakashi revealed his Sharingan to look at the paper and Hiruzen was frowning as he looked on unable to comprehend what he was seeing. 
Just kidding, laughed Naruto and in the next moment the paper sliced in half. Wind, muttered Jiraiya in shock, then he glared at Naruto, what did you do, brat? He demanded as that earlier reaction to his chakra wasn't natural. Naruto threw the scraps away with a shrug, oh, well I was watching when Sasuke and Sakura used their paper and noticed what was happening. The paper is so sensitive that even the faintest trace of elemental chakra cause a reaction, yeah. So I removed any and all elemental traces from my chakra. He explained happily with a grin and an amused glint in his glowing eyes. Kakashi felt himself get a bit lightheaded, the level of control needed, he said in astonishment. The Hokage was feeling similar to Kakashi, he grabbed a chakra paper and tried to do the same. After several moments when he felt he may have succeeded, the paper burst into flames showing his fire affinity. Not even I could do it, he hummed. Jiraiya didn't bother trying himself, if sensei couldn't do it then no one alive could do it, maybe Tsunade as she is intimately familiar with her chakra and she never spent much time learning elemental jutsu. But that's beside the point both she and sensei have literal decades dedicated to learning and perfecting their chakra control. Naruto did it on a whim to mess with me. I think I'm understanding just what he's capable of now. Last test and this will seal it. The sage walked up to Naruto who looked up at him curiously. Everyone in the room watching curiously. Do this. Jiraiya demanded as he held up his palm and created a perfect Rasengan. Hiruzen and Kakashi connected the dots and felt sweat build on their heads at Jiraiya's implication with this test. If Naruto succeeded then that would mean he had literally infinite potential with chakra, internally and externally. Naruto stared at the orb and felt himself be drawn in almost hypnotically. It was incredibly dense and was made up of hundreds of streams of rotating chakra. The orb was completely self-sustaining and would likely pack quite the punch on whoever was so unfortunate to be on the receiving end. He could tell this would be an incredibly difficult jutsu to learn, it just required too much to focus on and control to create, likely taking months of practice to get it to the level of being usable in battle. Whoever designed such a jutsu was on a whole other level in terms of smarts and ingenuity. Yeah, give me a second. Naruto cupped his hands and focused hard, looking directly at the jutsu then back to his hands. After a moment it started to form, it was slow and sloppy, barely held the proper form at first as wisps of chakra were leaking out of it at first. It was slow, taking well over a minute to create but after a moment it was done. Naruto extended his hand right next to Jiraiya's and the two orbs of destructive chakra danced next to each other almost identically save for color. Jiraiya's held a small faintest tinge of red at the outermost layer as his natural chakra color made itself known. While the other, Naruto's, was a deep blue with a white core similar to his eyes in color. That's, Kakashi exclaimed in shock he couldn't even put it into words. The Hokage had long since put his smoking pipe down lest he drop it on his stack of papers. Neither could form into words the implications of what they were looking at. Sasuke had his Sharingan active and was unable to copy the jutsu. Sakura frowned as she watched, she recognized the Rasengan from the textbooks and knew just how absurd the feat Naruto just accomplished was. Naruto drained the chakra from the orb and put his hand back down. I think that was the perfect jutsu for me, I've got some interesting ideas from it. He said happily, he never considered chakra manipulation like that, which made him think he was thinking too small on what he should start learning for jutsu. Jiraiya let go of the orb and rubbed his eyes, Naruto, you didn't copy it similar to the Sharingan did you? To me it seems as if you just instinctively know how to use chakra at nay perfect levels. That in your ability to see and comprehend chakra was what enabled you to create a Rasengan after just learning of the jutsu. Correct, he asked, already suspecting it to be the truth. Pretty much yeah, Naruto said happily, you know you're making it easier for me to understand these eyes, I know what they can do but I don't really get it. But I'm getting it now. Hiruzen latched onto that with a smirk, you were a truly terrible academy student Naruto. He said lightly getting snorts from Sasuke and Sakura who knew firsthand how true that was. I believe you both know the best path forward for Naruto's training. He asked towards Jiraiya and Kakashi both of them nodded with a small snort of amusement. Oh yeah, asked Naruto, what's that? Kakashi walked forward and patted Naruto on the head, you need to study. 
You have a fundamental lack of knowledge which is impacting your understanding of your newfound awareness thanks to those eyes. Speaking of which we'll have to name them, it's a new bloodline after all. I don't know, Kakashi, you know who had the worst naming sense I've ever known and if Naruto is anything. Jiraiya laughed but he was interrupted by Naruto who was staring past everyone out the window behind the Hokage's desk with a serious expression on his face. The six eyes, he declared causing a shiver to some in the room, in my heart I know that they are called the six eyes. I figured that would be the case, mused Hiruzen, similar to other bloodlines that could be named one thing or the other there is always the true name that people who awaken them instinctively know. Lava style rather than magma is one, boil style and steam style both being their own branches, everything has a true name, and it would seem that the six eyes are no different. Very well, then Naruto will here too forth be known as the first user of the six eyes bloodline. Declared the Hokage settling the issue. That being said, news will spread on its own due to Chunin exams, but until that is the case, I urge everyone not to mention them to anyone that doesn't already know about them, much less their abilities. Sasuke, you understand the danger of being one of the only users of an ocular jutsu. Sasuke frowned and gave the Hokage a nod in affirmation. When he was younger, he always had an Anbu shadow for the sole reason of protecting him from kidnappers and thieves. Security was tight for people like him ever since the cloud incident with the Hyuga. Naruto laughed and waved a hand. Ah, don't worry about that I'm plenty strong enough to take care of some small fry going for my eyes. Please, spread word of my awesome abilities. He demanded with a devilish grin and arms spread. He got dead eyes from his teammates in response making him sweat drop. While Jiraiya and Kakashi just ignored him. That concludes everything I wanted to go over. Here's an announced, subtly hinting for them to leave. Ah, I had a question. Naruto said simply with a hand raised, what are we gonna do about the snake girl? She was the one to mark Sasuke with the evil mark that's actively trying to poison him. Jiraiya stepped forward and whacked Naruto on the head lightly, leave that to us, that girl was in fact my old teammate in disguise, Orochimaru, who's perhaps the most dangerous traitor the leaf has. I bet I could beat him now. Naruto responded without acknowledging the smack. Speed, strength and a Rasengan won't be enough to do that, and we don't want him going for your eyes. Responded Jiraiya seriously, now starting to understand how deep Naruto's ego ran. Naruto shrugged without care, pretty sure the fourth became feared above all others with those three things, but whatever, I'll step in if it gets bad. He declared before turning around leaving the office. The rest of the room watched him leave dumbly. Sasuke and Sakura decided to follow his lead after bowing to the Hokage. After the three genin were gone Kakashi turned to the Hokage and Jiraiya seriously. How could this have happened? He asked, voicing the thoughts of the other two without knowing. Jiraiya shook his head, no idea, there's never been a concrete reason for bloodlines existing. The Byakugan and Sharingan have been around for thousands of years, so their origin is nearly unknown. The first Hokage's wood style was said to be a mutation unique to him as a result of his titanic life force and the Senju family's affinity to earth and water. Hiruzen stood and looked over to the pictures on the wall, particularly of the fourth Hokage. Naruto hails from a very esteemed bloodline in Kashina, the only daughter of the Uzumaki clan's main bloodline in that generation and was a distant cousin to Mito who hailed from the same family. Both were born with powerful chakra that allowed them to subdue even the Nine Tails. But that isn't the only family Naruto was born from. Are you suggesting that Sensei's family had the six eyes? Kakashi questioned incredulously. No, that's not possible. Jiraiya said with a shake of his head. Hiruzen raised his hand, to stop them. No, not in the way you're both thinking. First, we know nothing of Minato's family, he was an orphan from the second war as far as we were able to trace. No I mean that Minato was always able to understand things quickly and for a person without the Sharingan he was able to perfectly move and react at immense speeds. It could be that his unique natural talents and Kashina's immense chakra power merged into what has been born into the six eyes that Naruto has awakened. We also shouldn't completely ignore the presence of the nine tails in both Kashina and Naruto. The third Hokage sat into his chair tiredly, at the end of the day, mutations becoming bloodlines is something no one really understands. Orochimaru drove himself insane trying to understand the world because of things like this. 
he sighed. At the end of the day, the how doesn't exactly matter. Jiraiya said with a sigh, what's left is to see where Naruto goes from here. We don't have to worry about his potential anymore, I don't think anyone has been born with more than him. Kakashi nodded, agreed, with all this taken care of I'm going to be taking Sasuke to train for the month. He needs to be ready for Gara, he said before leaving the office. The room was silent for a moment before Jiraiya spoke. It could be him, Sensei. Jiraiya said full of melancholy, the child of prophesy, Nagato was killed as was Minato, perhaps it is Naruto who has the best of both worlds. Powerful eyes, immense power, and Minato and Kashina's spirit. Hiruzen gazed at his former student fondly, perhaps you are correct. Good luck with him, he added lightly. One month later, Chunin exams arena. Naruto walked through the tunnel leading to the open area where the finals would take place. In the last month it wouldn't be small to say that he had changed in incredible ways. He, at the demands of Jiraiya and the Hokage, was forced to speed every morning pouring through textbooks that he pointedly ignored during his time in the academy. Though a benefit they learned of the six eyes was increased processing power for his brain, with that he finished his required readings after the second week. From that it was just practicing taijutsu maneuvers to get his body up to the required level of a chunin, by Jiraiya's estimate he had the raw skill of an experienced genin rather than a chunin hopeful like he was expected to have. Again with practice and training he mastered the leaf village's basic forms, Jiraiya's personal advanced steps, and several grappling techniques that he found interesting. Without chakra enhancement and his eyes closed he was at a solid chunin level in raw skill, which was a drastic increase. Naruto smiled as he looked around, while not completely off, with these glasses on he was able to limit the amount of input his eyes gave him. This way he could do things like eat dinner, walk around the village, and water his garden without the constant stream of information his eyes allowed. It didn't tire him out or cause him headaches or anything, just a bit annoying sometimes when he just wants to relax and enjoy his ramen. In addition to his sparkling blue glasses that mirrored the color of his eyes. He changed up his outfit as the colors and style clashed something fierce. Instead he opted for a slightly oversized black almost blue tinted jumper, over a black shirt with similar pants. The shins weren't taped down like most as he didn't mind the bagginess, then typical shinobi sandals to round it out. In Jiraiya's own words, he didn't look like a moron anymore, which actually meant he looked good. That was something he learned about Jiraiya as well. They guy was a right task master and refused to hand out even the slightest compliment. It was so bad that Naruto had to compliment himself during training to combat this, Jiraiya seemed to be flustered by this as he would scowl in the direction of the forest sometimes. All in all if Naruto were to be completely honest, he didn't think anyone in the village would be much of a challenge anymore. He had, thanks to learning the Rasengan, devised a couple of interesting techniques that bolstered his already incredible ability to insane heights. Reaching the end of the tunnel he noticed that other than Sasuke and that sound guy with the bandages he was the last to arrive. Everyone turned to him and had various reactions to his new appearance. Most were just curious at the change, Naruto grimaced a bit but didn't say anything. The guy with the cough was gone and now it was someone else. Hey oral fixation, where's bronchitis? He asked interrupting everyone from their thoughts. Most of the genin sweat dropped at his lack of respect while Genma felt his eye twitch, things change I'm the proctor today. Also, don't call me that. My name is Genma. Sure, sure strange guy. Naruto waved him off and stood to the side smiling at his to-be opponent Neji Hayuga. After a bit Genma touched his ear and nodded, got it. He said lightly, slight change of the order, Sasuke is running late so his fight is to be pushed to the last of the first round. Neji and Naruto you're up. Genma then announced the same loudly for the crowd who had various reactions to the news of the last Uchiha. Sakura sat down with a worried frown on her face. This was the out of character for Sasuke, although very in character for her sensei. She really hoped that it was his fault they were late and not that the tardiness was rubbing off on Sasuke. She looked down at the crowd of Genin and felt a slight longing to be a part of the group fighting for promotion. In the last month she had been training very hard, with Naruto of all people or she assumed it was him and not a clone. She was learning the basic form of chakra enhancement from him as well as how to convert her chakra into earth-natured chakra. Jiraiya, who was training Naruto, 
even gave her some pointers and jutsu scrolls with low-level beginner elemental jutsu for the earth style. That mixed with her daily dedication to physical conditioning put her several levels above where she was at the start of the exams. She actually felt like she could have competed now, if only Kakashi had taken the time to train her like this prior to the exams. Where's Sasuke? Asked Ino as she sat next to her. Sakura observed her rival and felt that she wasn't the only one who busted their ass training in the last month. Her chakra felt different, and she held herself with far more poise than before. No idea, I'm sure it's Kakashi Sensei's fault. He couldn't arrive on time without a blade to his throat. She complained with a sigh. A booming laugh came from behind her. Team Guy Sans Neji were all seated there to watch the finals. My eternal rival is always so hip and cool, he never arrives on time. He gushed and complained at the same time somehow. Lee was fired up at his mentor's words while Tenton just sighed with an amused smile at the usual antics of her team. Yash, with that announcement it's going to be Neji's turn, proclaimed Lee with excitement. Tenton turned to Lee, you think he has a chance against Naruto Uzumaki? She asked. If he continues to fight with the flames of youth that Guy Sensei taught us then he will have a great showing. Lee said with a raised fist, his movements a bit sluggish as he was still feeling the effects of the gate. Guy looked down as the genin not fighting were sent to their own observation area leaving only Naruto and Neji with Genma on the field. He was confident that in raw fighting capability there weren't any genin and few chunin that Neji wouldn't be able beat after the month of training he just put the team through. But he's keenly aware that Naruto Uzumaki wasn't a normal person anymore. Just the way the blonde was standing there, a picture of supreme confidence. His showing against Kiba, the flare of chakra during the second exam and his insight he showed during the prelims led Guy to believe that Naruto was more akin to a Jonin than Chunin. He just hoped that Neji was able to show his ability in the fight. He was confident in all three of his students' abilities, but he was also realistic. Naruto stood across from Neji with a smile, his glasses twinkling in the sunlight. Neji seemed serious and ready to fight, he wasn't planning on smashing him right away as that wouldn't be very sporting. So he would play defense at the start and let the Hyuga dictate the pace. Begin. The crowd roared in excitement as the finals were started. Neji wasted no time and activated his Byakugan, veins bulging around his eyes as the bloodline flared to life. Naruto looked over his glasses at the activation curiously. The way the chakra coalesced around his eyes and brain from the Byakugan was quite interesting. He wanted to continue looking at them, but the fight started meaning he should pay attention to Neji, oh well time to get to it. Neji's chakra flared throughout his body, and he shot forward with great speed. His movements honed even further than they were a month ago under the tutelage of his sensei guy and his control over his chakra internally channeled far better than ever before. As soon as he was within range, he jabbed forward with a palm thrust that Naruto leaned away from. Another was similarly avoided. Every time an attack would come Naruto would dance around it with minimal wasted movement. Neji started to flood his body with even more chakra, more than he could readily control, it gave him a bigger boost, but he was being drained even quicker due to the leakage. Naruto felt he'd shown his ability to move well enough and decided to respond. Neji's palm thrust was caught by Naruto's palm who then pulled Neji off balance and slammed a ruthless fist into his face knocking him into the air. Naruto, who was still holding his hand from the palm thrust, yanked his arm causing him to spin mid-air but not fly further away. Quickly, Naruto spun in place and landed a devastating kick on Neji that sent him tumbling away till he stopped on the ground wincing from the pain. Naruto started to limber up in place as he waited for Neji to pull himself together and re-engage him. Neji got to his feet and continued the fight. Hiyashi Hayuga watched the battle between his nephew and the blonde Uzumaki with a fierce glare on his face, which wasn't really out of place for him. He didn't like the way his incredibly talented nephew was being treated like an unskilled child in front of the whole village and foreign contingent. That being said he wasn't all that surprised. He and the other clan heads were made aware of the new situation with Naruto about a week ago when the questions regarding the chakra pulse during the exams made the Hokage finally make them aware of what happened. He and several of the others had demanded Naruto's presence to see for themselves but the messenger shinobi was denied by the blonde and when he was sent back was sent packing by the boy all the way to the infirmary. All they got out of the Hokage was that Naruto's new bloodline, 
the six eyes, were a terribly powerful ocular jutsu that would give anyone a run for their money. Next to Hiyashi his youngest daughter looked him with a frown, her Byakugan active to better see the fight. Father, why does that boy Naruto possess an ocular jutsu? His clan's name is Uzumaki, and they aren't known for such things. She asked. Hiyashi could only spare her a glance, he recently awakened the genetic mutation that has been called the Six Eyes. No one is really sure where they came from, but such is the case with new bloodlines. Hanabi didn't really know anything about new bloodlines but was a bit hesitant to ask more of her father while he was so focused on the match. She wished her big sister was here, she would have explained it and answered all of her questions. Sakura couldn't really say she was all that surprised by the turn of events, Naruto had honestly been faster in the forest. Not to mention she knew that he was improving his overall skills at taijutsu which in turn made him drastically better overall. Also, she was intimately familiar with his improvement of raw skill as she was his sparring partner during the month. Lee on the other hand was cheering his head off for Neji, likely feeling kinship with the Hyuga now that he was the underdog against a bloodline user. You can do it Neji. Let the power of hard work and youth explode. Cheered Lee with tears falling from his eyes. Everyone in the stands looked at him with blank expressions before turning to Guy hoping he would reign in his genin. Yes, let the springtime of youth explode Neji. Cheered Guy who was also crying. What did I expect, were the collective thoughts of everyone in the audience. Naruto was genuinely enjoying himself as he slapped away Neji's latest attack, his movements were impressive. Unfortunately the fight had been going for a while and Neji hadn't really landed any attacks, so he knew that the crowd was getting bored. As Neji tumbled back, he felt frustration overtake his calm, when he looked up to his opponent instead of Naruto passively standing around waiting for him to attack once again, he saw the blonde moving towards him at frightening speeds. Knowing that he had no other option, Neji flared his chakra and began spinning quickly. Utilizing one of the Hyuga's prized jutsu, rotation. A large spinning dome of chakra burst into life forming a nigh impenetrable barrier around Neji, the Hyuga's ultimate defense. Naruto's eyes widened and his face lit up with a savage grin at the challenge. He burst forward at speeds that only a select few watching could see and appeared above the spinning dome with his right hand hovering over the dome. To those who knew anything about the jutsu rotation, they knew that the only way to overcome it was to back off till it was finished which was usually a couple seconds. For Naruto, he felt a more amusing way to overcome it would be to overtake the power of the rotation and cancel it out with ruthless efficiency. The amount of power and precision to do such a thing was likely only possible for him, but he didn't care since he is him. Neji, who was mid-spin, felt his whole body come to a complete stop and his body rattle from the rapid deceleration. His Byakugan was the only reason he wasn't completely disoriented and knew what had just happened. Naruto overcame his clan's perfect defense, something that quite literally has never happened. Knowing that he needed to get away he rolled and got to his feet then hopped further away to gain distance. Naruto watched his opponent back away lazily, might as well show off a ranged attack. I know I need to prove a wide range of abilities to get promoted. I certainly didn't have a good showing in the first part with that written test. Thanks to the Rasengan, Naruto's idea of what was a potential jutsu was expanded and he had a whole month to experiment. For someone who could get the Rasengan down in a few minutes that was plenty of time to try a variety of things. Thanks to Naruto's study into chakra and all sorts of theoretical chakra mechanics over the month he learned all sort of things. It is said that the tailed beast bomb, their strongest attack, is formed by a perfect ratio of positive and negative chakra hyper condensed together, yeah. Not exactly helpful outside of academic research for most as it was practically impossible to separate chakra at that level for normal people. But Naruto has already proven he wasn't normal. Naruto raised a finger and a smile slowly spread across his face. By molding my chakra and forming it with primarily positive chakra, compacting it and coalescing it into a compact ball I can make something quite powerful. Surrounding the compacted orb of positive chakra with a shell of negative chakra to hold it together further building the volatility. The reaction is quite something. Naruto thought as a small glowing orb of blood red chakra was gathered on the tip of his finger, it gave off an eerie glow even in the harsh sunlight. Chakra Enhancement Jutsu, Red. Naruto intoned as the orb cracked and the power burst forth towards Neji. 
The shockwave from the attack was so powerful that those in the crowd were unable to move in their seats as the force pushed them further into the chairs. Genma flashed away from the arena to a position behind Naruto to escape while Neji, who was the target of the attack, could only try and use rotation with all his power. Father, shouted Hanabi in shock as she tried to cover her face from the wind. She had been on the edge of her seat as her cousin was mercilessly beaten down by the blonde. Now she was actually scared for herself. Hiyashi grit his teeth tightly, in both anger and fear as his Byakugan showed him just how terrible this attack from Naruto was and how close it came to obliterating Neji. It was only thanks to Neji pushing every drop of chakra into a desperate rotation that he was still alive and not a stain on the arena wall. He felt even more anger when he saw the clear amusement on Naruto's face as he lazily watched the fallout from his attack. It was bad enough that the brat effortlessly overcame their rotation in the first place now he was displaying jutsu strong enough to be classified as a class on a whim. That boy was no genin. It's over no one is injured, Hanabi settled down. He commanded. Sakura had thought she couldn't be surprised by Naruto anymore but then he blew up half the arena and she had to shield herself from the debris as dust and dirt flew everywhere. Next to her Ino, Choji, Kiba and Hinata were doing the same. Guy grimaced as he watched the jutsu die down, next to him Lee and Tenten shouted in worry for Neji. He'd never seen that jutsu before nor anything really like it so he'd assume that it was either an ability granted to him by his eyes, or he created it himself with the help of his eyes. Likely an A-class jutsu in pure destructive capability as well as chakra consumption. If he weren't so confident in Neji's rotation, he too would have feared for his student's life. Just what was Naruto thinking firing something of that magnitude off at a comrade? Wow, that was way stronger than I was expecting, laughed Naruto as he stared at the fallout of the jutsu. There was a large trench gouged into the earth in front of him all the way to the wall, the leaves on all the trees in the direction of the attack were blasted off and all the grass was torn up. In front of the wall, Neji was heavily panting inside a small circle where his rotation protected him from the blast. The wall itself had a large crater at the center with a large web of cracks spreading out dozens of meters. I didn't put my all into that, I could have made it much stronger. If I were to estimate, I'd say that was about 40% of the power I could safely put into red at this moment. I had a feeling that Neji would have been able to block that much with the remaining chakra in his system and his skill with rotation. Hopefully we both look good enough to pass with that. Naruto pushed his glasses back into place and walked over to Neji with a happy little skip. Neji, that was a good fight, but I win. He declared with a grin and a thumbs up, hey, oral fixation call the match he's out of juice. Naruto yelled to Genma who had been following behind him towards Neji, his eye twitched at the name but he didn't disagree with the blonde and called the match in his favor. Naruto soaked up the attention of the crowd, feeling all sorts of things from all the people watching. Such as admiration, excitement, unease, and fear. But what won out was excitement as they roared with approval at the match they just got to watch. Instead of going to where the rest of the competitors were, Naruto shot up to the roof if the left building that overlooked the Chunin exams arena. The rightmost building was where the dignitaries sat as it was the one with the most shade from the sun, the center were where the Hokage and Case Cage sat with their guard and the left building were where everyone else sat. On the roof of the left building sitting by himself was Jiraiya sipping on a bit of sake as he lounged under an umbrella to shade himself from the harsh sun. He acknowledged Naruto with a nod. Old man Jiraiya greeted naruto with a grin what did you think i tried to make it look as good as possible for both of us to get promoted jiraiya hummed as he poured more sake into a saucer i think you may have drawn it out a bit too long but no one will hold that against you for making it more of a show in this context after all excitement equals more business for the village he explained then took another sip of sake i would say that both of you have a very good chance of promotion Neji didn't get to show off much strategy since he couldn't really do all that much against you. Again, I don't think Sensei will hold it against him, I made him very aware of how strong you are. Naruto chuckled hearing that and leaned back onto his elbows next to Jiraiya. Oh yeah, Naruto asked lightly, he'd be very curious about that conversation. Jiraiya flicked Naruto on the head, I'm not adding to that ego, by telling you that. You think well enough of yourself already, brat he said with a twitching eye. 
Jiraiya's attention was drawn back to the arena floor, I believe even within the first few moments of this match the Nara has shown strategic thinking on par with any Chunin. He'll most likely be promoted, Jiraiya said with an impressed look on his face. Naruto gazed down at the match, the wind girl was pretty good and Shikamaru was managing to stay a couple steps ahead keeping him in the fight despite his lack of offensive power. His shadow manipulation could be far better. Naruto commented lightly while looking at the shadow stretching across the ground speeding towards the wind girl. He has a far better grasp on it than his ability would suggest, it's like he's putting barely any effort into commanding the shadow. Then he tilted his head thoughtfully, you know what, that's pretty on brand for Shikamaru now that I'm thinking about it. Jiraiya snorted in amusement, yeah, he's the Jonin commander Shikaku's son. That man wouldn't get out of bed if his wife wasn't there to nag him. He said with a laugh. Not surprised his son has a general lack of urgency at this age. Shikamaru's dad is that important huh? Naruto said in wonder, he was aware that his father was the clan head of the Nara clan, but he didn't know he also held a position of importance of that level. Yeah, Shikaku Nara, he's one of the most brilliant minds to ever grace the village. In terms of pure strategic thinking he's likely the best. Responded Jiraiya. Naruto turned to him curiously even better than old man Hokage, you and Kakashi sensei. Jiraiya barked out a laugh, me, I'm no strategist. I wouldn't call myself dumb but I'm more of a solo act and can adapt better than most to a variety of circumstances. but commanding others isn't really my forte. Kakashi is an excellent mission leader, but he's never had to effectively lead more than a handful of shinobi. I would say sensei is a close second with an elder by the name of Danzo in third, both of them have experience leading large numbers effectively and winning battles without having to be there in person. That's what it means to be a true strategist, using what's available to you to achieve the best outcome without having to be there. Naruto hummed in thought, then I'm not much of a strategist. He mused simply. Jiraiya shook his head, you and I are similar in that regard, we're solo acts. Able to adapt to any situation and come out favorably but not really suited to leading great numbers without being in the front. He replied. Down below gasps were heard as Shikamaru had effectively ensnared the wind girl with his shadow capturing her and securing the victory. Naruto fell over laughing when instead of accepting the win he decided to forfeit saying he was out of chakra. He's still got plenty, laughed Naruto. Jiraiya started laughing after hearing that, then he just didn't want to compete anymore, just like his father. It would seem that the puppet guy had forfeited his match to Shino which is why Shikamaru was the one to fight just now. That meant that next up was Sasuke and Gara, to which the former still wasn't here yet. Naruto frowned at that, wondering why Kakashi and Sasuke would be so late to arrive to something this important. Jiraiya looked to the sky with a sigh, while we're waiting, I should tell you something. That Gara, he's like you. He holds the one-tailed beast within him. I was able to confirm it during our month of training. Why tell me? asked Naruto with a frown. Jiraiya sighed, just in case things go south with this match, I want you to know what's really going on. I believed it was a bloodline similar to the fourth case cage that allowed him to manipulate sand but it's a byproduct of having the demon sealed within him. And all I got from the nine tails was the hatred and fear of my countrymen. Naruto commented lightly hiding just how much it still stung thinking back to his childhood. Jiraiya just looked away not wanting to respond to that. Down below the crowd was growing restless at having to wait for Sasuke to show up for the exams to continue. Naruto frowned as a thought occurred to him, his brain processing information as speeds unrivaled by anyone thanks to the six eyes. Why do you think puppet guy surrendered without a fight? Naruto asked suddenly, it doesn't make sense, right? Sure it's not a terribly great matchup for him, but he's still trying to be promoted here. Jiraiya looked over at him with a frown, who knows, I've long given up trying to understand greenhorns. He said off-handedly. Naruto sat forward and leaned over his crisscrossed legs with a frown, or, would it make sense to not want to show off his puppets in front of so many people? He mused. Exactly, he likely doesn't want to show his hand to everyone here replied Jiraiya with a disinterested hand wave. Naruto rubbed his chin in thought, I suppose, but do you think he has some sort of ulterior motive for the exam? wondered Naruto. The puppet kid, 
Jiraiya asked incredulously while pointing in the direction of said person lamely. Naruto glared at him, I see what you mean, you really aren't a great strategist, no. I mean the sand ninja, he is one of them if you haven't noticed. Naruto explained with an eye roll. Jiraiya frowned and turned his attention to his sensei as he sat speaking to the case cage in their booth. There wasn't much to how they were interacting and the case cage had his face coverings on, so he wasn't really sure what was going on. Though he doubted it was much fun over there. Rasa isn't the type to wage war with the only ally he has. He said lowly, his tone becoming thoughtful, I don't think the Sand Village is in any place to wage war, they aren't exactly at full power these days. Naruto shrugged, if there was one thing he was still pretty ignorant about it was the current situation of the world at large. His last month of learning helped him with the general information but not the latest stuff. With that in mind he decided to differ to Jiraiya and lean back on his elbows. Still pretty odd, you know. Genma was at the end of his rope. Between, the constant stream of displeasure aimed at him from the crowd and the arguing from the shinobi side on whether or not to disqualify Sasuke Uchiha or not he was about to decide himself and take the punishment. Somehow, as the face to the finals to the crowd, he was getting the feeling that they thought he was the person at fault here. Gara was already standing at the ready, his gourd full of sand was already open and around him was a thin wispy cloud of sand that didn't really justify the danger of the boy's jutsu. He hoped that whoever faced him was up to the challenge, or they just had Naruto fight him, would likely settle it without much issue. Genma, we have given him as much time as possible, you may move on. Genma sighed as orders from up top came into his earpiece, seems even the last Uchiha didn't have an infinitely long rope. Right as he was about to speak a burst of smoke exploded next to him. The crowd gasped while he rolled his eye, this had Kakashi written all over it. The smoke cleared to show Kakashi standing in the same laid-back manner while Sasuke was clearly ready to fight. Curiously, Sasuke's attire had changed into an all-black jumpsuit with white bandages around his left arm. Maybe Team 7 had a joint shopping trip to get new looks. I really hope we're not too late. Kakashi asked worriedly with a nervous smile. Sasuke next to him bristled but didn't talk. Genma shook his head with an amused smile, right on time, I was about to disqualify you. He replied. The usually stoic Uchiha had a small smile on his face hearing he was still in it. Before anyone could add anything else, Naruto appeared next to them with a wave. Yo, you're late, ya bastard. Laughed Naruto as he moved forward. I was sure that Kakashi Sensei's lateness rubbed off on you. The man in question let out an awkward chuckle while he rubbed his neck. Sasuke stared at him for a moment then smirked, You won right. Of course. Good. I'm excited to fight you. Kakashi walked forward and patted Naruto on the head. Interesting new look, Naruto. Congratulations on winning, although I can't say I'm surprised. He said offhandedly. Naruto smiled at his sensei before turning over to Gara. Hey. Sand boy I hope you give Sasuke a good challenge. Good luck you too, put on a good show. He cheered before shooting off away from the arena grounds. Kakashi nodded to Sasuke, good luck, and remember what I told you. He said seriously with a look that he didn't let up until Sasuke nodded in return. Then he left in a swirl of leaves to the stands. Genma looked between the two genin with a small feeling of unease directed towards Gara. the guy just gave off creepy vibes. His right hand slashed through the air, begin. Naruto landed up with Jiraiya and retook his position under the umbrella with a content smile. Sasuke became strong, he said suddenly. The movement of his chakra and the density of it has improved drastically from what it was last I saw him a month ago. Kakashi isn't one to train in half measures. Jiraiya responded, he may seem lazy but when he gets serious there are few that train as hard as he does. Just getting him to that point lately is tough from what I hear. Naruto snorted, yeah the guy didn't exactly train us into the ground. Down below the fight began with Sasuke shooting forward at far faster speeds than what he was capable of before. To most he was a blur that was shooting in and out of Gara's range to pepper him with testing blows. Sasuke tried all avenues of attack, shuriken, kanai, punches and kicks and as he expected none of them broke through the sand. Gara soon went on the offense and sent forward a wave of sand that Sasuke had speed away from with a body flicker lest he be crushed. 
As soon as Sasuke stopped moving, he shot a titanic fireball forward towards Gara. Even in the stand they felt the terrible heat of the fire jutsu as it neared Gara. As expected, sand rushed to block the fire and when contact was made there was a large explosion that blasted away all the loose debris in the immediate area. Sasuke's jutsu are stronger thanks to his improved chakra and control over it. Commented Naruto. Jiraiya hummed, he'll need more than speed, Lee in the preliminaries was faster and that didn't win him the match. He said seriously as he watched the young Uchiha battle with Gara. Sasuke flipped away from sand until he was halfway up the wall of the arena. He looked down at Gara with a frown, nothing he did was able to really get through and now Gara had locked himself behind a dome of sand that he wasn't getting through with brute strength. Knowing this was the scenario he prepared for he started flashing through seals. Oh, Naruto said lightly as the sounds of thousands of chirping birds filled the arena. Interesting, that should do it. Curious jutsu to teach a genin. Jiraiya commented lightly with a frown but didn't add more. Sakura gasped as she saw the familiar lightning jutsu then turn to Kakashi. You taught him that jutsu from the bridge. She shouted in shock. Kakashi's eye smiled at her, it was the best way for him to penetrate the defense of Gara. Sasuke and I are quite similar too since we both share a lightning affinity and possess the Sharingan. It felt right teaching it to him. He said while watching Sasuke charge forward at ludicrous speeds towards Gara. Lee in the seats next to them looked down with a frown, it took a genius like Sasuke a month to catch up to my speeds. He whispered to himself. Guy narrowed his eyes at Kakashi as he stood to his feet, after you gave me trouble for passing on the eight gates formation. I didn't teach a genin an assassination jutsu. He reprimanded Kakashi at the hypocrisy. Kakashi only narrowed his eyes in response as he continued to observe the fight. I only really have one shot here. Need to make sure I make it count. Sasuke mentally screamed as he blitzed forward with lightning speeds and slammed his Chidori into the sand dome causing a wave of lightning to blast out in a dome around the point of impact. The world froze for a moment before a terrible scream erupted from the sand dome. My blood, this is my blood, screamed Gara as shock and pain overtook his mind. The sand dome exploded outward with spikes that forced Sasuke to jump away from. With his Sharingan he noticed that there was a strange thick chakra spreading outwards from the sand as the screams grew in volume. Then everything went to hell. Naruto looked down at Gara with his glasses held in his hands completely exposing his glowing eyes. The six eyes told him what was happening with perfect clarity. He's leaking tailed beast chakra at very high levels commented Naruto with a frown before he noticed a wave of chakra cover the entire arena all the way to him making him feel drowsy for a moment. Genjutsu, thought Naruto before breaking it. Jiraiya shot to his feet and not a moment later there was an explosion from the cage booth on the roof of the center building. Maybe you were right, shouted Jiraiya before jumping off but not before calling out to Naruto, deal with Gara. Naruto turned back down to the field where Sasuke was being accosted by several sand ninja. He burst forward at top speed slamming into one of them smashing the guy into the ground with enough force to shatter all the bones in his body turning the ground into a blood-filled crater. Naruto slowly stood to his feet and glanced at the remaining sand ninja making them wary, he turned to Sasuke, I'll deal with Gara and these fools. Get out of here, commanded Naruto and to his complete shock Sasuke actually listened. Naruto was about to engage the sand ninja when a Sanban shot into the neck of the one on the left and Genma walked up next to him. I'll take them, Gara's all yours, said Genma with a grimace. Naruto assumed he didn't like leaving a genin to face someone like Gara. Though, in the back of Naruto's head he didn't like the thought of fighting Gara, but he pushed that away for now. Naruto nodded to Genma then turned and shot over to Gara. A Rasengan forming in his hand that grew to the size of a melon in a flash. The sand dome was no match for the jutsu and was blasted open causing massive amounts of wind and sand to fly everywhere. Naruto wasted no time and shot his arm forward to drag Gara out of the dome and threw him away. Gara frantically got to his feet as sand was gathering all over his body turning the right side of his body into a grotesque clawed sand arm. His face was taking on the appearance of the one tail as a single sandy tail waved behind him. He's half possessed already, it would be trouble if he completely turned into the one tails in the center of the village. Which must be their plan. 
Naruto thought as he shot forward and re-engaged Gaara with ruthless attacks. Gaara, while empowered to levels that most chunin and Jonin would be unable to overcome, was being taken to task by Naruto with ruthless efficiency. Gaara was unable to follow the blonde's rapid attacks and felt his body take substantial damage from each blow. If he didn't have the One Tail's chakra healing him, he would have likely been killed already. Claw slash, diverted with a kick then followed up with an uppercut to the chest. Tail slam was caught and Gaara was sent crashing into the ground. Naruto ducked under another swipe from the massive claw and TSKED, I know I'm hurting him. I bet he's being healed by the one tails almost as fast as I'm injuring him. Which means I need to hurt him worse. He thought with a frown. Movement from his peripheral had Naruto jump back in time to dodge a blade of wind that shredded into the earth where he was just standing. Gara's sensei and siblings arrived shortly after and landed around him protectively. Naruto grinned, after being so scared of him till now, all of you cowards think you'll protect him. I hate wishy-washy people like you, he said while pointing at them his eyes glowing menacingly. Suppose I'll have to deal with all four of you, commented Naruto before moving to engage them. As soon as Sasuke's strike caused Gara such terrible pain the third Hokage Hiruzen Serutobi had been in a whirlwind of motion. First the booth exploded, he had avoided the blast by jumping up, but was caught in the air by the case cage who held a blade to his throat. Then he realized foolishly that his student had taken the place of the case cage and was using the exams as a means to destroy the village. Truly, Orochimaru, I have failed you, Hiruzen said mournfully completely unconcerned with the kunai to his throat. Behind him Orochimaru Tsked having noticed the Hokage's calm aura, foolish old man, you think you're in control here? He demanded angrily. In the instant he asked, to which Orochimaru would later admonish himself for making such a mistake, he was blasted backward into the roof tile by a release of hyper-dense chakra. If it weren't for the barrier surrounding the two of them the Anbu watching the fight would have found themselves forced to their knees from the pressure. The third Hokage of the Leaf, Hiruzen Serutobi, the professor and proclaimed god of Shinobi had activated the full weight of his chakra for the first time since the Nine Tails had rampaged through the village. Orochimaru shot to his feet and grit his teeth, surely you don't think a showing such as this would intimidate me? He demanded, I saw you in your prime and this is a far cry from those days sensei. Hiruzen sighed, did I teach you nothing of looking underneath the underneath? I may be old and have lost a step in terms of chakra capacity, but did you think I would allow myself to grow weak? You're a fool if so, I bled for every bit of my strength and I would sooner die than let it go easily. He proclaimed with a visible aura of chakra shrouding his body with fiery red wisps flailing around him. Orochimaru stood and released the full weight of his chakra in response. The purple viscous aura surrounded his body, and the roof tiles were further destroyed around them. Different from the Hokage's hyper-dense chakra, Orochimaru's was a vast lake of power that was begging to be unleashed towards his opponent. A single seal from the Hokage had a terrible river of mud blast into life to remove the snake's footing sending him tumbling away, with another seal the air on the roof superheated followed by a sharp tongue of flame blasted the mud river hardening it. Three seals in the Hokage slammed his palm on the roof. Chakra glowered over the mound of hardened mud that turned into a brilliant explosion where Orochimaru had been buried. In the time it would take a Jonin to cast a single B-class jutsu. The third Hokage casted two followed by a combination jutsu with ruthless efficiency. Such was the level skill of the once touted god of shinobi. Hiruzen glared at the smoke billowing out from the jutsu's epicenter with disgust, get up. If that was all it took to kill you then I'm sure you would be long dead demanded Hiruzen as he tore his Hokage robes off to reveal his battle attire. Further away from the epicenter of the blast Orochimaru rose from the ground looking burned but not altogether that injured. He was grinning at his sensei as if he found that show of power amusing. Perhaps you've still got some power left in that rotting carcass, sensei. Mused Orochimaru before slamming his hand onto the roof for his jutsu, I had meticulously prepared this reunion for you, please enjoy it, sensei. He said as two coffins rose from the ground followed by a third that failed halfway up. Hiruzen stared at them in horror, you've defiled them. They were at peace, he whispered to himself as the dead faces of his predecessors were revealed to the world. Kakashi had known something was off today, 
Duck under a kick stab a kanai into the femoral. It was odd that the sand village would send a Jinchuriki to a foreign country's exam when they were as unstable as Gara. Parry a slash then slice the throat. Now he was back in the familiar dance he mastered during the third great ninja war. Next to him Guy was smashing sound and sand ninja with every punch and kick. Both of them were doing their utmost to protect the civilians that were incapacitated from the genjutsu as well as the genin huddled that were down in the stands. Naruto is fighting Gara. Sasuke shouted as he got back to the stand slightly out of breath, I did as you asked, and didn't fight Gara if he went ballistic. He said with a frown while not meeting Kakashi's eyes. It was a stipulation that Kakashi imposed before their training began. In return for learning the Chidori, Sasuke would swear that should Gara lose control of himself he would back off and surrender. Sasuke didn't really care about being promoted and just wanted to learn the jutsu, so he reluctantly agreed. Kakashi I smiled to his pupil, good, he should wrap it up quick. New mission for you and the others. It's A rank, I need you all to move to the academy and make sure that the students are evacuated. Sasuke you're in charge, Shikamaru you're second. Sakura, Kiba and Shino will accompany you, ordered Kakashi while killing yet another enemy. The academy is far enough into the village that it should be further from the main battle. They will be away from the worst of it and still doing a vital service protecting the young ones. That being said there is no guarantee they all survive this. Thought Kakashi grimly, he hated that his students were being put into a situation such as this, but it was the life of a ninja. He was doing the best he could to put them into a favorable situation. Sasuke stared at his sensei for a moment before giving him a nod then he turned to the others, let's go. He ordered before jumping off. Shikamaru following him with incredible reluctance, while the others hurried to keep up. Guy looked to Lee and Tenten, keep close, Lee form a perimeter around the civilians and stop any who get past me and Kakashi. Tenten long range support, he ordered seriously, a far cry from his usual joyful personality. The two in question shot into action, showing their experience as genin. Kakashi put his back to Guy as sound ninja moved to surround them. This could get a bit difficult with all the civilians around. Be sure not to send them into the stands when you send them flying, Guy. It will be tough, but we can do it, Kakashi. Guy said firmly as he lowered his stance while staring at the ninja in front of him. An instant later and both shot into action, cutting and smashing their way through all the enemies. Naruto chuckled as he diverted a massive claw of sand into the ground then kicked off it directly into a puppet. He flooded his body and arms with chakra as he crashed into it causing the puppet to be crushed under him in multiple pieces. In the distance the puppet boy himself was smashed into the ground by his shadow clone. Naruto didn't have time to take in the victory as Gara shot a blast of wind and sand pellets that he was forced to avoid. The area he and the puppet had been was shredded by the attack. Naruto decided that the next problem to deal with now that the poisonous puppet was gone was the Jonin. He had been a nuisance with his attacks and hit and run maneuvers, seemed none of these sand ninja were too keen to trade strikes with him. The Jonin was keeping his distance to fire off wind blades that would cut him in half had they landed. So Naruto turned and went after Wind Girl who was peppering him with powerful gusts to take him off balance, her eyes widened, and she moved to run but he caught up to her before she could take a second step. Naruto kicked her in the stomach, uppercut her falling head, grabbed her arm that was reflexively sent out to restore her falling balance, took it and turned then twisted it behind her back. Ruthless excitement filled him for the first time as he went to snap her arm. The girl let out a silent scream as he applied more and more pressure to the arm. And there he is, Naruto thought as an arm shrouded in wind was slashed at his neck from his right side. While the Jonin wouldn't rush to Gara's defense Naruto assumed that he would for the other two if he were going to kill them. And he was just proven right. Naruto's arm lashed out at blinding speeds and with chakra coated and hardened around his hand to protect him from the wind blade, he grabbed the Jonin's wrist. The shock on the Jonin's visible eye showed that he realized his mistake by rushing in. Naruto's face split into a grin and his six eyes glowed brighter. Baki, the sand Jonin was pulled forward by Naruto and as he went to protect his face from the incoming punch his stomach was kicked with force enough to cause him to vomit blood. Naruto didn't stop and released the wrist he was holding on to then did a roundhouse kick into Baki's face as he was leaned over from the first kick. This isn't a very strong jutsu, 
but it should be enough in his current condition. Thought Naruto as he pointed at Baki's body that was sent flying. Naruto formed a small spinning orb that was barely bigger than his finger, it was a mini Rasengan, while lower in power it allowed Naruto to do something a bit different. He formed a protective coating of chakra then blasted it forward similar to his red jutsu. Chakra Technique Sinister Spiraling Shot The flying Rasengan shot formed on Naruto's finger and shot towards Baki before he even landed from Naruto's roundhouse kick. Naruto watched as the projectile covered the distance and slammed into Baki's side digging into his flesh like a superheated drill an instant after hitting Baki the jutsu destabilized then exploded. Naruto's six eyes observed the fallout of his jutsu was perfect detail. The jutsu didn't have the raw power of a Rasengan even by half but it was incredibly fast to make and fire so it was more than worth it. Baki was completely taken out of the fight, quickly losing consciousness from the pain and injuries. Barely two minutes after joining the battle, Baki, Tamari, and Konkuro were taken out. Naruto turned to Gara who was forming hand seals seemingly unaffected by the defeat of his sensei and siblings. You're pretty cold-blooded Gara, mused Naruto lightly, he gestured to the three sand ninja, don't mind that your family and sensei were taken down, even a little bit. He asked, I care for nothing, but giving mother your blood. Gara seemed to growl before his face became deranged, let me prove my existence. He screamed as he released a sand twister at Naruto that was destroying anything in its path. Since awakening the six-eye Naruto has felt content and confident in his abilities. He had an awareness of the world and chakra that filled him with a sense of self-assurance that he didn't really feel anything but amused by the people he came up against in the exams. For the first time since awakening his six-eye Naruto has felt something other than amusement while fighting someone. He wasn't scared, not in the slightest. No. He felt sad. Because Gara shared a burden with him, they both held a beast within them, and neither of them asked for it. He wasn't dumb, well not anymore, he knew now that people like him were treated like trash everywhere. They were feared and loathed for the burden they carried. Gara was like him, similar ages and likely similar upbringings but both arrived at different conclusions. Naruto had the Ichiraku family reach their hand out that night, that cold storming night when he was so very hungry cold and lonely. Then old man Hokage came into his life, then Aruka, then Kakashi and his teammates. Naruto held out long enough to find hands reaching out offering him warmth and hope for a better life. Gara, despite having a family, seemingly did not. Naruto wasn't amused to fight him, no he was sad that he was facing what he considered a brother. Not in blood but in burden. I'll break through, Gara, thought Naruto. It wasn't raining. It wasn't nighttime, nor was it all that cold. But Naruto felt that Gara needed the warmth of an extended hand that wasn't scared of him. So he'd oblige. Naruto's thoughts happened in the moments between the sand twister arriving in front of him and Naruto disintegrating it with a pulse of hyper dense chakra blasted from his palms. Similar to the gentle fist by hundreds of times stronger. He basically slapped the jutsu away. Deciding to go on the offense Naruto shot forward and hooked a punch into Gara's side then did a rising kick to his chin launching him into the air. Naruto jumped into the air to follow him grabbed his leg, twisted sharply, and threw Gara into the wall of the arena with full force. Gara's face exploded into a silent scream as his beast's chakra flared, exploding into the air saturating the arena in its evil. Naruto moved to stop him but a mountain of sand surrounded Gara as he was approaching protecting him and slowly forming into the one-tailed beast, with Gara perched out of its forehead. At the top, Gara performed a jutsu that switched his consciousness with the beast's letting it take control. Oh, well I may have taken a bit too long here. Naruto said with a nervous laugh, I should probably pick it up now. He knew that the mere appearance of the beast was going to terrify the ninja as they fought, no one older than him had forgotten what a tailed beast could do to the village. Naruto had no desire to allow the beast to remain very long. Naruto flared all of his chakra and strengthened himself to his current limit. His eyes allowed him to see the forming of the beast's consciousness from the jutsu, it would take control in roughly one second. He needed to move, he knew it wouldn't be in time of its awakening, but he would beat its subsequent actions at his top speed. Yeah, I'm free baby shouted the beast, its voice so loud everyone in the village heard it. I, it was interrupted by a commotion on his head. 
Naruto landed in front of Gara in a flash, the sand from his path running up the beast exploded from the force of his steps. He didn't hesitate as he noticed the sand was forming tentacles around Gara to stop him from hitting its host. Naruto's fist impacted Gara's forehead ruthlessly, waking him from this jutsu destabilizing the fully realized beast's chakra. No, screamed the one tails as it tried to fight Gara's returning consciousness but was failing rapidly. Every leaf ninja in the village breathed a sigh of relief as the one tails was sent away as fast as it arrived. The only damage it caused was from its forming along the walls of the arena. Gara woke as he was falling and stared at Naruto in horror. No 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 no, I won't let you take it away, I won't let you destroy my existence, he shouted in terror, he was trying to call for his sand but found he was out of strength. Naruto landed on his feet as Gara fell on his front hitting the ground roughly. Naruto walked forward and sat down crisscross in front of him with a frown. How, how are you so strong? Gara asked in a broken voice. Naruto's eyes that usually glowed with unimaginable power, were dull with sadness. As much as he enjoyed fighting and beating people, he found no joy from this victory. It's unbearable right? Asked Naruto with a frown. Being alone, I know the feeling well. I was spat on, kicked, and hated for the beast within me. I was alone and in the silence of my solitude I hated them. I hated everything, I wanted to crush them to get back at them for treating me this way when I didn't even know why. Perhaps even a part of me still resents them. Mused Naruto as the sounds of the battle sounded in the distance, Gara listened on enraptured by his words. But I was saved, by my friends. By those who I now hold precious to me above all else, even myself. Gara's eyes showed his shock at those words. It is for them that I fight so hard. I won't ever lose, and I won't ever let anything happen to them. If you or anyone else tries to harm them, I'll kill you." Naruto said with a fierce glare that shook Gara to his core. Suddenly between Gara and Naruto appeared three sets of feet. Naruto looked up to see a heavily exhausted and injured Team Baki standing in front of Gara warily but fully committed to protecting the downed boy. Naruto looked at them for a moment before he smiled, I see. He said lightly as he noticed that in their eyes were no longer filled with wariness or fear of Gara. no in the two siblings there was nothing but worry and fear for him. Baki was similarly worried, like Kakashi was for them when he stood off against Zabuza. Gara, you have a fine team, Naruto said with a smile, I trust that all of you will leave. Baki nodded firmly, yes, the case cage is not leading us. He said while pointing to the barrier where Orochimaru was visibly clashing with the third Hokage. I will be signaling the retreat. Enough blood has been spilled over a vendetta that was not ours. Then go, Naruto said but in the next moment the full weight of his chakra bared down on them, and his eyes glowed ominously, but know this, I will not hesitate should we face off like this again. He warned. Baki and the two standing siblings nodded silently, while Konkuro reached down to pick up Gara. Gara couldn't meet his gaze as he muttered something lowly to his team, it must have been out of character as all three of them turned to him in shock before speeding off leaving the battle. Naruto only smiled as he watched them leave. It was likely the wrong move in terms of politics, but he didn't much care about that stuff, nor would he really care what the higher ups in the village thought. They treated him like trash for all of his life due to his status and lack of talent he wasn't going to bend over backwards to please people like them now that they were interested in his newfound power. After all, he hated wishy-washy people like that. Oh well, time to go see if the old man needed any help. The Anbu Captain Tiger watched the battle between three Hokage and Orochimaru impassively, already resigned to the fact that between them was a barrier that they had no way to overcome. The battle was epic in proportions. The first Hokage's Taijutsu and later Wood style Jutsu were incredible to see in person and he felt awe at the level he must have been at when he was alive if this was only a small portion of his actual strength. Then the second Hokage with water Jutsu so superior to anything he's ever seen, they were monsters wearing human skin. But none of them more so than the third Hokage Hiruzen Serutobi who fought both of them and Orochimaru with only his faithful summon Monkey King Enma by his side. While the Hokage's power was holding up well enough he was noticeably holding back from using too much ninjutsu, favoring chakra enhancement and bojutsu for the fight. Though he was clearly at the end of his rope, 
Tiger was only thankful that the appearance of the One Tails paused the fighting between them long enough for the Hokage to catch his breath. Though the break wasn't much it clearly helped. How's he holding up? Tiger spun around at the sudden voice and was face to face with the now infamous six eyes that had been whispered about at Anbu headquarters. Naruto Uzumaki gazed at him dispassionately as he waited for an answer. The battle is tough. He's favoring a direct approach to not exhaust his reserves. Said Tiger as he turned back to the battle. I don't know how long he can hold out against two undead Hokage on top of Orochimaru. Naruto grimaced and turned to the barrier, or rather barrier as the four ninjas sustaining the barrier created one on either side of them. The barrier held properties of fire chakra in it as well as hyper-firm chakra walls. Likely anyone who physically touched the barrier would burn to death. Well, anyone that wasn't him. Naruto's six eyes allow him to perceive and understand chakra at a level that he could do things others only imagined. He was able to completely remove his elemental affinity from his chakra and master the highest form of shape manipulation in minutes. So with a solid coating of chakra around his body at an opposite ratio of what the barrier was comprised of allowed him to simply walk through. To the barrier that was chakra based and static it couldn't fight something that was its inverse, it would simply react in the inverse. So instead of a fire barrier Naruto was faced with an opening that molded around him like water as he passed through it. The four ninjas sustaining the barrier had to grit their teeth to fight the shock that was threatening to destabilize the barrier from his actions. Naruto stayed away from the fighting for now, waiting for his opening. It was a very fast-paced battle for now, Orochimaru was hanging back while the first and second Hokage were trying to bind the third. Right as the old man burned away the approaching tree roots Naruto shot forward and nailed the second with a kick that launched him out of the recently made forest and moved to stand by the Hokage. Looked like you needed help old man, Naruto said with a grin. These two aren't going to die or go away till Orochimaru releases the jutsu. I don't think we can disrupt this jutsu, perhaps seal it. He mused with a frown, his eyes picking apart the jutsu with hyper efficiency. You shouldn't have come, Naruto. Hiruzen said with a tired sigh seemingly resigned to the situation, the second Hokage's jutsu can only be cancelled by the caster or sealed. I only have one jutsu that fits the criteria in this situation. Naruto turned to look at him, what's the plan old man? He asked. Hiruzen glanced at him before gripping his staff firmly, you will stay back and provide support at range and nothing else. Orochimaru made himself known at this point, ah young Naruto welcome. He shouted gleefully, I simply must bring you home with me, those eyes of yours are a scientific marvel I'm oh so curious to research. Naruto turned to him with a disgusted frown, oi. I have no intention of going with you. You're lucky the old man won't let me kill you. He shouted back. Enough. The third shouted before he rushed at the first Hokage who mirrored his movements. Naruto watched impassively as the old man made easy work of the first with his staff, the range and power of it allowing him to easily dispatch the revived Hokage. It was like the old man was capable of shredding the wood with no effort with the speed in which he dispatched every jutsu the first sent at him. The second wasn't going to sit out of the fight as he weaved a single seal to produce a massive water dragon that raised the humidity in the barrier tenfold. Naruto watched as the chakra in the air folded in on itself hundreds of times over utilizing the water in the air to form massive amounts of water for the jutsu. He didn't think he'd have been capable of ever doing something like that if he didn't have the six eyes, seeing the wood style in person also showed him the depth of power the first Hokage had at his disposal. Witnessing these feats of strength from the three Hokage in front of him led Naruto to understand something. He wasn't the strongest, not yet. As he was now Naruto was supremely confident in his ability to fight anyone. He was sure that he wouldn't lose to Orochimaru even, but seeing the Hokage fight, at weakened levels as well, showed him that the summit of power he would need to reach to be called the strongest was still above him. That wasn't to say as they are now too strong to jump in. No. The old man was likely capable of beating him with his sheer jutsu knowledge and adaptability, but Naruto had things that no one else had. Complete unpredictability. Mix that with his six eyes and he wasn't going to be ignored. Naruto flared chakra within his body to the max that his body could withstand. He tsked to himself as the power flowing through him was a bit heavy on his muscles and he could tell he was pushing them to the max. 
Hiruzen spun his staff at immense speeds around himself as he severed all the incoming roots. The instant the wood was taken care of Hiruzen jumped straight up, flashed two one-handed hand seals and released a compacted stream of lightning towards the second Hokage who was building up water for a jutsu. Hiruzen didn't bother to watch the jutsu as he extended the staff towards the first Hokage as the dead ninja was rushing to attack. Before Hiruzen could do anything more than slam the first Hokage into the roof with his staff, a blur came into the fight. The first Hokage, after getting smashed into the ground, was attacked by Naruto. The first Hokage quick responded to the blonde, some of his body reforming under the effects of the reanimation jutsu. Naruto ducked under a kick, lashed out with a jab that was caught by the first, Naruto's eyes narrowed in response. As his fist was caught by the first the dead Hokage lashed out with his own punch that Naruto caught, he noticed with his eyes that the first was using chakra enhancement different than normal. As he caught the dead Hokage's punch he felt the effects as he was nearly blasted away from the Hokage from the sheer force of the punch. He's never experienced that level of power, he doubted Lee with the fifth gate open hit that hard. You're quite strong, I'm honestly impressed Lord First Hokage. Naruto said with an honest smile on his face as he held the Hokage in place. Not going to talk, he asked when he noticed that the Hokage's face hadn't changed expression since he joined the fight. Naruto kicked the first off of him and quickly formed molded his chakra on the tip of his finger. I'll put even more behind this than last time, Naruto said with a grin as he formed a red on the tip of his finger, old man. He shouted in warning. As soon as Naruto saw Hiruzen blur towards him he fired off his jutsu. Unlike a wind jutsu, chakra enhancement technique, red, was a powerful reaction of positive chakra violently condensed in on itself into a tightly compacted orb. The resulting fallout was a shockwave of pure force that the very air was displaced by. The force behind the jutsu was such that the ground rumbled even outside the barrier. He noticed that both Hokage tried to form barriers with their respective elements, but they were blasted away the moment the jutsu reached them. Naruto lowered his arm with a grin, well that was fun. He cheered with a grin as he turned to the third, but I don't think it really matters till we deal with Orochimaru. My predecessors were sent into the barrier completely burning their bodies away. The rate of the regeneration will have them returned in less than two minutes. Informed Hiruzen as he formed a set of seals with speed that Naruto would have never comprehended without his six eyes. I want you to engage Orochimaru. The third said with deep reluctance on his face. Your speed and strength is at a level that he won't be able to ignore you. However, I will move in as soon as this jutsu is ready, when that time comes, get out of the way. Naruto turned to the old man and stared at him for a moment. The chakra swirling inside of him was a mixture of so many different elemental ratios that he was genuinely curious as the outcome. But the power in the jutsu he was building showed the old man's resolve to finish off his former student, so Naruto could only nod with a happy smile. As Orochimaru was shaking off the disorientation of the red attack he barely noticed a blue blur coming at him. Naruto slammed a ruthless kick into the snake's ribs that stole his breath. A two-punch combo followed the kick at top speed. Knowing he needed distance Orochimaru lashed out with a dozen snakes from his arm and jumped back. Naruto tore the incoming snakes apart with his bare hands, laced and coated with chakra and moved to reclose the distance. Orochimaru smirked then regurgitated a sword. Naruto's face grew with disgust as he flew towards Orochimaru, who keeps a sword inside them. I knew you were a freak, he said with wide eyes, ever heard of seals? You can keep all sorts of things inside them like a sword, and it's way less crazy than swallowing it, wait you're a, sword swallower, aren't you? I can't say I'm surprised, and this explains your interest in Sasu. Enough, screamed Orochimaru as he swiped his sword in a wide arc. Naruto's six eyes noticed the chakra flowing through the blade causing it to grow. He was aware of the sword's ability before it was able to grow five millimeters, such was the processing speed of his eyes. To those watched the blade grew nearly in an instant as Orochimaru went to bisect Naruto. The Anbu held their breath as Naruto was midair while the swipe came for him, and they didn't see a way to avoid the attack. Behind the molding chakra at a furious pace, the third Hokage grit his teeth at seeing. He's got me with this timing. I guess this is the level of battle that I am just able to reach at my max. I need to increase my base level, 
this is the max my muscles can be enhanced without shredding them. Oh well, getting thrashed by Jiraiya more than made that clear. I guess I have to use IT even though it's not totally ready. Thought Naruto as he watched the elongated blade cut through the distance towards his neck. In the month before the finals Naruto's training consisted of him learning all that he missed out on during the academy and as much as he could about chakra in the remaining time. Naruto's attention span during his academy time made it hard for him to sit and read or listen to his teachers, this made it hard for him to properly understand what he was seeing with the six eyes. It didn't take long to go through everything he missed and ignored, from there he pushed to learn the basics of elemental chakras, shape, form, barriers, positive and negative principles, and final time and space jutsu. Naruto was able to form and manipulate theoretical chakras due to his perfect perception, control and understanding of chakra with the six eyes. Red came from manipulating pure positive chakra. Blue, a jutsu he hasn't totally finished was the inverse. Time and space jutsu, which from what he was understanding were basically teleportation and wormhole jutsu as they were now, were the highest level of ninjutsu and sealing jutsu. However, Naruto thought of separating time and space jutsu for a technique. Manipulating space by itself or time by itself, at large scales the level of energy would be impossible with the levels of chakra he possessed, but at small scales he could influence them. So he created a defensive jutsu, more of a barrier in than anything else, but the chakra that formed it was in fact time in nature. It wouldn't have been possible without witnessing Jiraiya use the summoning jutsu, a time-space jutsu if at a lower level than the second and fourth Hokage's flying rage and jutsu. Seeing the chakra in action allowed Naruto to try and form it. Thus, infinity was born. In Jiraiya of the Sanin's own words it was the most incredible jutsu he's ever seen or heard of. The blade of Orochimaru sliced towards Naruto who lifted his left hand into its path and formed three one-handed hand seals. The blade made a sound as it made contact and Naruto's eyes shone brightly as his jutsu held firm. The point of contact between Naruto's hand and the blade was separated by inches. Orochimaru on the ground holding the blade grit his teeth as he tried to close the last bit of distance but found it impossible. At this moment, this is the third time I've been able to activate infinity it's only the size of my torso and I need three seals to properly mold the chakra but with time and practice it will cover me. Naruto grinned at the thought of his perfect defense. Those watching the battle, the sound ninja, the anbu, Orochimaru, and finally the third Hokage were racking their brains trying to figure out the jutsu. However, the only one who knew, Naruto, wasn't about to share. Infinity is a barrier jutsu that is formed entirely by time-based chakra manipulation, it is half a millimeter thick and lies 50 millimeters from my body. It's not stopping the blade, it's actually continuously slowing the blade down. A space-based barrier would be nearly impossible to use like this. The fact that the blade is still moving, but losing its speed by half every time it grows even the most infinitesimally amount closer possible means that I can sustain this barrier energy-wise without too much hassle, it's truly the focus that is difficult in molding the chakra correctly. With infinity up I will never be touched, like the distance between numbers 1 and 2 and the infinite number of fractions between them, the blade will never reach me. Naruto's grin became savagely wide as he locked gazes with Orochimaru. The slashing blade then contact with Naruto's defense till now barely lasting two seconds. But they were still locked into the stalemate, neither side giving an inch. Naruto, shouted the third Hokage from the other side of the roof. Humming happily, Naruto allowed the momentum of the slash to push him away and land far enough away that the Hokage could attack. Orochimaru could only turn his head towards his former mentor as long-forgotten fear filled every cell in his body, because he recognized what was coming. Hiruzen Serutobi was considered the god of shinobi for many reasons, most notably was his mastery of all shape and form changes in chakra. He mastered all five elements to the level of a primary affinity, was able to mold his chakra into any shape he desired and was capable of harnessing yin and yang chakra. Something no shinobi could do bearing the great sage of the past and wielders of the legendary Rinnegan. The ultimate jutsu of the third Hokage was this, Requiem of the Sage. First it began by molding all the elements and keeping their strongest quality, the shredding wind, the solid foundation of the earth, the piercing energy of lightning, the power of flame and the ever-shifting form of the water. And binding them with pure yang chakra as the glue. 
Both of Hiruzen's hand were put together in the form of a prayer and black lightning surround them sparking erratically with a white halo of chakra glowing around his hands that sparked with blue lightning. His face was covered with shadow hiding his expression from both Naruto and Orochimaru, but they knew it likely held a look of immense concentration. The instant Orochimaru looked from Naruto to the Hokage a flash of blinding light overtook the rooftop followed by a sonic boom that had everyone in the village reeling. Naruto was able to witness the beam of violent energy swirling with arcs of chaotic energy that destroyed everything it came into contact with. Orochimaru could do nothing but harden his body with chakra and hope the nature chakra in his body would let him survive this. The twin barriers keeping the three of them inside the rooftop was torn through as if it was paper and the beam continued until it impacted a building across the street blowing it sky high. The ninja standing atop the building were torn to shreds leaving only dust in their wake and the building itself was only rubble. Naruto could only say that he had never been as impressed as he was right now. He turned back to the Hokage and audibly gasped. The old man's coils were all burned, his body was quivering, and he had a look of utter exhaustion on his face. Naruto rushed over barely beating the Anbu who were now able to join them and caught the Hokage before he could fall to the ground. He needs emergency medical attention, all of his chakra coils are severely burned. Shouted Naruto to the Anbu, one with green hair moved forward and began trying to heal the Hokage. Naruto turned to where Orochimaru was before the attack and frowned, there was nothing left of the area and if Orochimaru lived or died they wouldn't be able to confirm it. However there were two things that were there that Naruto could confirm. The first and second Hokage moved forward this time with facial expressions shifting as they gazed at the third. Naruto didn't feel any danger from them like before but stood at the ready. The first noticed this and smiled at him gently, please, young ninja, do not worry we are not long for this world. The jutsu controlling us is breaking and we will soon be free. He reassured, oh Sarutobi, you have more than surpassed me. He said with a fond smile on his face. The second Hokage kneeled to get a closer look, I believe he will survive, however his future ability to wield chakra is unknown. Find a replacement monkey, you've more than earned your rest. He commanded firmly but his eyes held a softness that only a proud teacher could have. The old man will be fine, I'll make sure of it. Declared Naruto with a fist held up in determination. If we can't heal him here, then I'll find someone who can I swear it. The brothers smiled fondly at the boy, the second looking at him closer. You have an interesting ocular ability, what is your name? He asked. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, wielder of the six eyes and I'm going to be the strongest Hokage of them all. Naruto said while wearing a smile of supreme confidence. Both Hokage's figures began to crumble apart, and their soul broke away and started flying up into the air. They looked out at the remaining skirmishes throughout the village, the sand having left under Baki's command and most of the sound defeated and retreating. Both of them knew today was hard and filled with loss but felt pride in the village they built and died for remaining strong so long after their passing. Then they looked down at the young Uzumaki who was watching them leave with his otherworldly eyes, and they knew that the future of the village would rest with him. Crazy as it may seem, they didn't feel all that hesitant leaving the future of their village to a young boy like Naruto. Naruto sat on top of his father's head on the Hokage monument with a bored expression. Lots have happened since the end of the Chunin exams and subsequent invasion led by Orochimaru of the Sanin. There was the sounds of repairs all over the village, not so much damage was done that the village was unable to operate normally. But many businesses and homes were destroyed in the fighting. Overall death tolls were still being counted but thankfully the civilian numbers were mitigated quite well thanks to the actions of the rapid response Chunin force. Genin, Chunin and Jonin deaths were less than expected. 4 Jonin, 94 Chunin and 11 Jenin. For assault force from the sand and sound number will over 2000 altogether only suffering 108 deaths defending the village was very impressive. Naruto surmised that the actions of himself, Jiraiya, Kakashi, Gai, and Sasuke did the most as they took out the biggest players or defended important points in the village. Unfortunately all wasn't amazing, Orochimaru isn't dead, the fact that his curse seal is still active on Sasuke, and Anko Midarashi shows that. So the old man's insane jutsu was only really useful for ending the fight and disrupting the snake's control over the first and second. Naruto's eyes narrowed at the thought. The third Hokage was comatose since his use of Requiem of the Sage. 
one of if not the only S-class plus jutsu in existence, something that even a young Hiruzen struggled to use much less the old man he is today. Based on the reports of the head doctor, the old man would be lucky to retain use of his chakra, but his days as an active S-class combatant were over. Naruto didn't want to think about the odds of his survival if there wasn't something done about his coma soon. No one in the village has the ability to heal him. Head Dr. Tori was only able to ease his pain. The head of the ANBU's medical squad carp was similarly unable to do much. I can only think of one person on the planet that would have a chance, and wouldn't ya know it it's the last of the Sanim, Tsunade Senju. Therein lay the problem, Naruto thought with an angry glare. With the third in the current situation the decisions were being made by the advisory council. Made up of the major clan heads, Anbu commander, Jonan commander, and the third's old teammates. Seems with the god of shinobi out of the game, hidden agendas were coming out. All of them can go die in a hole. I'm giving Jiraiya till the sun sets before I go after his stupid teammate. It was earlier during a troubling conversation with the council Naruto confirmed his earlier thoughts of them. Earlier in the council chamber, Naruto stood in a large room which was occupied by the current council who has been deciding the fate of the village. It was lacking any real personality, torches lined the walls, no windows and not much to sit on really, random chairs in the room with some occupied others not. Clan heads for the Akamichi, Yamanaka, Hayuga, Inazuka, Abarame, and Nara were sat in various positions around the room. Anbu Commander Lion was sitting crisscross on the ceiling behind Naruto while Jonan Commander and Nara Clan Head Shikaku Nara was standing in front of Naruto with his arms crossed. Oh and the three idiots were here. At a high-rise table were the three former teammates of the third, Kaharu, Homura and finally Danzo. Despite not coming from any real reputable clans, or having any remaining power beyond a typical Jonan, from his six eyes observation though Danzo was interesting, they certainly held themselves above everyone here. Naruto didn't hold back, he walked right in and said it. I'm not here to waste time with old fogies like all of you. Insolence, shouted Hiyashi. Naruto glared at him with glowing eyes that silenced him right away, I'm here to tell you that with the old man in his current state he needs the medical attention of. Tsunade Senju interrupted Danzo with a passive expression gathering the room's attention, do not think your new bloodline makes you the only one capable of thought. She is the only one alive with the expertise to potentially heal Lord Hokage. Lord, this guy hates the old man's guts. I've known that since I was seven, Naruto thought with a slight narrow of his eyes. Great, then we're done here. I'll leave right now to hunt her down and bring her back. Naruto said with a grin and went to turn around. Yamanaka Inoichi spoke up before he could fully turn around, you believe that the best course of action is to bring back a traitor? He asked with a glare. Naruto turned and looked at him for a moment with a frown, but it was Choza Akamichi who spoke up. Inoichi, Tsunade isn't a traitor. Inoichi turned to his former teammate, of course she is. She abandoned this village after the second war. How many have died because she ran away? Lady Tsunade's disappearance is and has been excused by Lord Third, interjected the distorted voice of Anbu Commander Lion from the ceiling. Then what's the problem? asked Naruto. This whole conversation reeked of politics, and he truly couldn't care less. The problem you shitty in twerk, shouted Sum Inazuka from her position sitting atop her dog partner, is that many won't, nor should they take kindly to that woman's presence back in the village. Like they said, who cares? shouted Naruto while glaring at the council, I could care less about any of that. I'm going to bring her back to heal the old man, anything after that he can decide. He said before turning to Shikaku, I wasn't asking to leave or asking to bring her back. I was notifying you as a courtesy. A courtesy? asked Danzo not letting the frowning Shikaku speak. You've outgrown your station Genin. You will do as commanded by your superiors and in this case, it is to not leave the village. Too many eyes are on you, not even a week has gone by since the invasion and already your profile is in the bingo books. The leaf cannot lose the six eyes or the nine tails. And there it is, Naruto thought with a furious glare to the three idiots all agreeing with each other. Some of the clan heads agree to various degrees as well. The bugs will go with the most logical choice, the dog doesn't like me because I pounded on her son Kiba, likely a similar case with the Hayuga and shaming Neji so publicly. 
The Inoshika Cho trio are all strangely quiet. Naruto turned to the Nara and tried to lock eyes, but the man was staring towards the ground. He seemed torn on whether to speak up or not, Naruto wasn't sure if that was in his favor or not. Oi, Scarface, shouted an irate Naruto getting a twitch out of Shikaku, you really agree with all this? He agrees as he knows it is the right choice. Hiyashi Hayuga stated before walking forward, Mr. Uzumaki. You are not in any place to demand anything of this council nor are you to leave this village without supervision. Supervision, Naruto thought without changing his facial expressions. He forced himself to remain calm as he could tell they were building to something. Kaharu chimed in from there. Hiruzen may have tolerated your disrespect out of amusement, but it is high time you learn your station. It was already bad enough you had no control over the Nine Tails as Arjun Churiki, now you have no regard for your new bloodline's importance. She stated with a frown on her wrinkled face. Naruto was suspiciously quiet as they spoke, Shikaku started to look around the room with a frown. I do not allow Hayugas to leave without a seal to keep the Byakugan safe. I would consider the same for Naruto, the six eyes have turned a pathetic genin into a powerful shinobi not something we should let leave the leaf due to carelessness. Hiyashi stated getting approving looks from the three and considering ones from the rest of them. Homura stood from his chair. This council has already been working to place you in a new cell, better training conditions which will allow you to perform your duties as the fourth Hokage intended. Naruto opened his eyes at that point and glared at the advisor, oh. Is that what my old man wanted? To be your little attack dog? Naruto wondered with a half-lidded glare that was glowing with unimaginable power, those in the room felt hairs on their necks stand up before the words were registered. Boy that is an shouted an alarmed Kaharu but she was interrupted by Soom. No ing way you're his son. She shouted in disbelief her hackles up at the thought, you're that woman's son, the Uzumaki outsider. Outsider, murmured Naruto before a titanic amount of chakra was felt throughout the room. All individuals inside the room were war vets, some of multiple wars. Not since the Nine Tails was unleashed in the village twelve years ago did they feel such primal fear within their bodies. Naruto's body shone with a shimmery blue glow of chakra and the ground around him cracked under the weight of his chakra. If the third Hokage chakra was like a hyper-dense blanket and Orochimaru's was a malicious swamp, Naruto was the like the deep ocean and no one in the room could force their bodies to move under the weight. Donzo's lone eye opened as he stared forward but he didn't move to say or take any action merely observe Naruto. Naruto continued with an icy tone. Do not refer to my mother as anything other than Lady Kashina, dog. He said to Sum who gulped then he turned to the rest, I have never liked any of you, the so-called High Council, Naruto said with a growl, before the old man was put out you had no power and were more than happy to let him leave the village, and his body isn't even cold before you try and take control. Naruto's chakra was pulled back into him, making the glow around his body resemble blue fire. He raised his hand in a claw-like motion with a narrowed eyes, I believe you all need. Suddenly a hand was roughly slammed onto Naruto's shoulder and if he hadn't recognized who it belonged to, he would have torn the arm off. The air in the room was once again saturated by powerful chakra but this time it lacked the fearsome intent of Naruto's. Jiraiya what are you doing here? Naruto asked not even turning from the nervous council. Jiraiya smiled down at him in a goofy manner. Seems you and I had the same idea, I'll take it from here, I'll meet you outside. He said with a grin. Naruto snorted and relaxed his chakra and stance, fine. Naruto threw a pebble from atop the Hokage monument with a sigh. The council was clearly trying to prevent the restoration of the old man and put a leash on him. He didn't particularly care about their reasons or intentions, they were cowards too scared of the old man to act till he was out of the game. From loyal advisors to ambitious swine, he hated wishy-washy people like that. It had been roughly an hour since he sat down on his father's monument, and he was pretty sure that Jiraiya would be done soon. He was anxious to get out of the village to find Tsunade Senju. The old man is stable at the moment, he isn't going to die if they can maintain him as is, but I believe that he will cross a point of no return in three weeks. The way his internal network was burned by his jutsu, that woman better be worth it. Naruto thought with a sigh. Don't think too hard, Naruto, you're far too young for wrinkles. Commented Jiraiya who landed next to him and plopped down. 
Naruto spared him a glance before turning back to the village, did you talk sense into those fools? He asked not particularly caring either way at this point, he was leaving come nightfall. Jiraiya slapped him on the back, of course. Who do you think I am? I'm quite persuasive when I need to be. He exclaimed with a beaming grin on his face Naruto looked at him then shook his head. I can't believe those fools. He's not even dead, Naruto said with a frown. Jiraiya sighed tiredly, crazy as it seems, Sensei's teammates Kaharu and Homura are the two that care the most about preserving his vision of the village. They're just quite pragmatic and don't have his attachments to you and others that soften his decisions. He explained softly. Naruto turned to him with a raised brow, soft. The old man was many things, but he wasn't that soft, wise and kind, sure. But he never held back after a prank went too far on my end. Jiraiya laughed, yes, soft, if you weren't like a grandson to him, he'd have had you trained since you could walk and wouldn't have tolerated anything resembling a prank from you. Remember Naruto, you're a deterrent for war, a Jinchuriki and many would consider Sensei a fool for not treating you as such. Several of whom are in this very village. I suppose, and the rest of those fools. I didn't think the clan heads would act like that. Yeah, Jiraiya mumbled, that's a whole other issue. Many of the clans are still trying to figure out their standing in the village and the Fire Lord's court since the Senju and Uchiha were basically wiped out. You present an unfortunate obstacle for their family's rise in acclaim. Naruto narrowed his eyes at that, explain. There are currently three great clans in this country and this village. The Senju, Uchiha and Serutobi. You, or the Uzumaki are being considered to be the fourth great clan right now. It's not confirmed yet but it's all but set after this. Jiraiya said while extending forward a small booklet. Naruto took it and looked at it briefly. International Bingo Book. There was a marked page that Naruto opened to and felt his eyes widen in surprise. Uzumaki Naruto. Wanted for 50 meters Ryo by the village hidden in the sound. Danger rating. S class. Note. Wields a bloodline known as the Six Eyes Ocular Jutsu. Huh. Naruto said with a snort before handing the book back. The snake is a bitter one. Jiraiya tucked the book back into his pocket. You are now the third. Fourth if we still count sensei and the international community still does for now, S-class individual aligned with the leaf. The cloud village boasts three, the sand boasted two, the stone boasts four, and who knows what's happening in the mist with the war and constant defections. In the fire country's court, the three now potentially four great clans have three of the continents four S-class ninja. You, sensei, and Tsunade which is why those clans in there are less than pleased with you as you blocked one of the only times an opportunity to raise themselves has come in years. As they barely boast an A rank much less S, so they know they can't compete with you in terms of strength. Add to your pedigree, the Uzumaki being a once massive and powerful clan and your father being who he was, it was almost a no-brainer to elevate you and the Uzumaki to great clan status. Explained Jiraiya with a tired sigh as he looked out over the village. Naruto scratched his head with a frown, the hell does all that even mean? I get that S class means I'm considered an elite ninja, but who cares about great clan? Is it really just status that's important to them? Don't underestimate the power of status. Tsunade has had benefits that have prevented her being labeled a deserter due to her clan's status, even if she was a non-elite ninja her name alone would grant her many opportunities and leverage most would only dream of at the capital. Sasuke will have many privileges as the last of the Uchiha, loyal at least, once he comes of age. That is without the economic advantages and ears of people in the capital that can make big things happen. Many of the clans in the village would greatly benefit from such things, as most of them provide a service outside of producing ninja. Jiraiya then continued in a more serious voice, also do not discount the elevated status of being an S-class. While not a military title, as in you're still a genin at the moment. The level of power and prestige an S-class has awards them privileges and leeway of their own just to keep them loyal. You are a face of the continent and the leaf now and will be treated as such, even an orphan like me has lived very comfortably after attaining S-class. Though if I'm being honest, while likely deserving of S-class you're probably the weakest of the three of us at the moment. Naruto shrugged, give me a bit more time to get infinity down and we can revisit that comment. He said lightly to which Jiraiya thumped him on the head. 
Naruto then jumped to his feet, so now what? Are we leaving to get the old broad? Jiraiya shot to his feet hastily, don't say that. Something you have to know about her is she's vain with a capital V. Don't insult her like that or it'll make our job 100 times harder. He warned with a bead of sweat on his forehead. Naruto raised his hand silently in surrender. Jiraiya took a breath and calmed himself. Next is we leave at first light for about a two-week journey. I have a few leads so hopefully we're done before that. Sounds good. I haven't been able to meet up with my team in the aftermath of the invasion. Have you heard anything about them? Naruto asked. He wouldn't lie and say he wasn't a bit guilty at not looking for them in the past week, but he had spent much of it at the hospital with the old man or training. Sasuke and Sakura are fine, they had light injuries that were treated after the fighting. Sasuke led the team sent to protect the little ones at the academy quite well. I'd get the story from him but rumor has it he proved himself quite well for promotion. Kakashi was low on chakra, but he's been in and out of the village on emergency duties. Jiraiya explained before turning thoughtful, that's another reason the council didn't want you leaving. They didn't want the village without an S-class to protect it and they knew I'd be leaving to get Tsunade. Naruto rolled his eyes, yeah, I'm sure it was for a reason like that, they need their strongest here really making me feel like I have some type of privilege right now. He said sarcastically, he knew that was barely a consideration during that meeting, they were chomping at the bit to get him under their thumb. I didn't say it was the only reason, just a reason. Jiraiya countered with a smile, in their own way they think they're doing what's best for the village. Unfortunately, the Anbu commander, Shikaku, and Sum are really the only active ninja on the council anymore the rest have duties inside the village they attend to. So their pragmatism may be a bit skewed these days. Jiraiya suddenly stopped, by the way, when did you learn about your old man? I heard you mention it in the council chamber and just went along with it. Naruto snorted with a grin while pointing to his eyes. Ever since I've gotten these bad boys, I've been able to think far clearer and figure things out way faster. I saw a picture of him and knew instantly. Then I broke into the record room at the Hokage Tower and found out about my mother. I didn't really bring it up because it wasn't super important at the time, I guess. I was just happy to know who they were. He said softly. Jiraiya wrapped an arm around his shoulder, they would both be incredibly proud of you, never doubt that. Thanks, Naruto said with a smile, that being said I am pretty annoyed, but I want to talk to the old man before I let it out. After departing from Jiraiya, Naruto decided to stroll through the village in search for his team. He was taking in the sights and surveying the damage done by the invasion. Shops and signs were busted up but surprisingly very few were totally out of commission. There were civilians chatting in the street going over their stories from the invasion with relieved smiles on their faces. Some who looked over at him had surprised looks on their faces, a few even looked slightly awed by him. Word spreads fast. I'm sure my actions with Gara and Orochimaru have given me a new image to the people of the village. Naruto mused with a smile as he basked in the attention offering smiles and waves to everyone who looked at him positively. Can't say I hate this development. As he walked, he listened to the whispers as he passed by. Saying he took down the tail beast himself. Makes sense considering. Heard he fought alongside Lord Hokage. Husband as a chunin, said he's to be considered a lord soon. Who would have thought that boy would turn out like that? Still pissed he turned all my linens pink last year. Heard he was the only to lure the messenger birds over the Homura shop to cover it in bird poop. Naruto had to withhold his laughter at the last few, he worked very hard on those pranks, and he was happy that their legend remained. He felt a warmth in his heart to hear whispers about him in a positive light. It wasn't that long ago that he would have to harden his heart just to walk home. Instead of Ichiraku Ramen Naruto went towards the training grounds that his team frequented. A bit more walking and he was made privy to a sight that if his six eyes hadn't told him was real he would have thought was a genjutsu. Sasuke and Sakura were locked into a spar. Sasuke didn't have the Sharingan activated, and it seemed to be hand to hand only but they were going at it. Sakura's fighting style had evolved over the last month. Under the tutelage of Naruto with Jiraiya's assistance they made her from an academy fighter to a viscous opportunist. Sakura ducked under a jab, 
spun outside of Sasuke and lashed out with a kick that the boy was forced to absorb before responding. Sasuke would throw a continuous combo that Sakura would deflect, dodge, and counter with incredible precision. Sasuke ducked low and went for an uppercut. Sakura saw it coming and leaned back, however that was what Sasuke wanted and spun for a jumping back kick that she took full onto her chest. Not out of the fight she rolled with the momentum and slid back on her feet. Bursting forth with speed levels above where she was during the exam, she let loose a two-punch combo that Sasuke ducked and deflected that she followed up with a calf kick that Sasuke deflected with his shin. Sakura front flipped from his shin and came down with a high kick that Sasuke was forced to block with both arms with a slight grunt. Sakura jumped back and noticed Sasuke approaching with high speed and sent forward a kick. Sakura leaned back from the kick then continued with the movement for a high kick to Sasuke's chin that knocked him off balance. She shot forward and went for a haymaker that Sasuke dodged and grabbed her arm and held it behind her back. Naruto decided to announce himself then, wow, Sakura that was great, soon you'll be a worthy teammate. He laughed with a grin. Sakura deflated at hearing his voice, shut up you moron. She shouted back still being held by Sasuke. Sasuke turned over to Naruto, she's improved quite a bit, I heard she was training with you last month. Yep, I needed someone to practice on. She has some insane potential for hand to hand. I actually have a few ideas on what else she needs. Naruto said with a wide smile while walking forward. Sakura, your chakra control is good, but your chakra enhancement is wasteful and poorly channeled. Work on that and you'll be way better. I'm getting better at maintaining optimal enhancement but while I'm fighting it's tough to keep it steady. Sakura said with a sigh as she was let go by Sasuke, I have a few ideas on how to train, I think it's just going to take time. Kakashi sensei had me enhancing myself at all times and he would call out different levels and I would have two seconds to match until it was second nature. Sasuke said as he stretched lightly, though I haven't been able to maintain it for very long before tiring myself out. I have a few minutes at my max. Naruto wrapped an arm around Sasuke's shoulder, ah, keep training and you'll get it Sasuke. He cheered with a high-pitched voice. Sasuke responded with a shove then glared at the trees. Sakura keep training it, I'll help when I get back. I'm going to be gone for a few weeks to get Tsunade to come heal the old man. Explained Naruto before becoming sheepish, ah, don't tell anyone where I'm going or that it's for the old man. Don't think I should have mentioned it. No you should not have. Came the voice of Kakashi as he appeared next to them out of nowhere. Sasuke and Sakura turned from Kakashi's sudden appearance to Naruto, why are you in the loop with Lord Hokage? Asked Sakura. Well I'm not sure what I'm supposed to share, but since you're my team I'll just trust your discretion. Naruto said with a lazy smile Kakashi just quietly sighed but didn't move to interrupt him, I fought with the old man, so I was there. He's out of the game unfortunately but with the help of Tsunade he'll be up and about in no time. She's the only one who can help so it's become top priority, Jiraiya and I are going to get her. Kakashi perked up after hearing that, both of you. I'm surprised they're allowing that. He said with his lone eye showing a bit of surprise. Naruto narrowed his eyes at Kakashi, don't tell me you're on those fool's side. I'm not sitting around while the old man is in that situation. I don't care about my status, and if it makes you feel better, I should be able to return at a moment's notice if necessary. Kakashi just raised his hands in surrender. Status? Asked Sasuke with a raised eyebrow. I've been dubbed S class, so they want to shackle me here, among other reasons. Naruto grumbled with an eye roll. Sasuke and Sakura's eyes widened comically, S class. They shouted. Sasuke's eyes fell to the ground frozen in thought. Kakashi settled them down, yes, it's more than earned considering his actions in the invasion and who they were against. It's customary for all of the great five to have an S-class, usually their cage, guarding the village at all times, and with Lord Hokage indisposed, Kakashi trailed off. Naruto, shouted Sakura in shock, you can't leave if Lord Jiraiya is going. What if? Naruto interrupted with a raised hand. The old man's situation isn't known by the public. As far as anyone is concerned, he's resting. Even those within the village that don't have John in clearance don't know. He explained. Wait what do you mean you could return at a moment's notice? Asked Sasuke. Naruto blurred forward and hugged Sasuke, 
I'm glad you asked, Sasuke. He shouted getting face full of Sasuke's hands as he tried to free himself. After unceremoniously dropping Sasuke, Naruto went through eleven hand seals ending with the snake seal. There was a slight flare of chakra and a bit of a whoosh sound, Naruto in one second was in front of them then at the next he was behind them. All three of them, turned from where Naruto was standing to where he was standing several times. Kakashi just chuckled in disbelief while Sasuke glared at the grass beneath his feet while Sakura looked a bit excited at the development. I did that by playing with space-natured chakra, Naruto shouted joyfully, basically if I consider where I am point one then where I want to be point two, I reduce the space between the two points to zero and I'm warped to that point. The fourth Hokage did something similar but with seals as the medium, and his was easier to make combat ready. Though with time my jutsu will be so superior no one will even bring him up. He shouted with a wide grin and his sunglasses shining in the setting sunlight. It isn't as complicated as it sounds, I basically apply my infinity jutsu in reverse, I'm not expanding time to constantly slow down incoming attacks but reducing the distance to zero using space chakra. I should be able to do it over long ranges eventually but at the moment I can only do it to places in eyesight after 11 hand seals to get the chakra ratios right. Though I do have the anchor to help in my apartment for emergencies. Naruto thought with a hum. Space chakra was more tangible than time based chakra so he could play with it a bit more, time was incredibly dangerous. He didn't want to mess with it too much and get sent into the ing past or something. Looking back towards his team he saw that Sasuke and Kakashi were off to the side talking about lightning jutsu, completely ignoring him. While Sakura was staring at him with wide eyes, clearly appreciating his genius. You're going to tear yourself in half doing stuff like that, Sakura said with wide eyes. Do you even understand the physics behind what you're doing? Cuz if, Naruto's eyebrow twitched, I test it with clones. Hey, Kakashi sensei, Sasuke. You done? He shouted. Oh sorry, did you say something Naruto? Asked Kakashi as he and Sasuke turned back to him. Nope, he's not getting me with that. Thought Naruto before weaving seals to reactivate his jutsu, see you in a few weeks losers. He said before warping out of the clearing. Naruto and Jiraiya were enjoying a nice stroll through the forests of fire country as they made their way towards where Jiraiya's intel suggested Tsunade was residing with her aide Shizum. So what's the big deal here? Asked Naruto with his hands in his pocket, why is getting this lady so involved? I mean at the end of the day she's a leaf ninja, active or not. Jiraiya sighed, you're right, but remember what I said about great clans and S-class privilege. Well she's taken advantage of both to be given indefinite leave, so the trouble isn't finding her it's getting to her without her sensing us and bolting. If she knows we're coming, then she'll run and we'll be on a chase I don't particularly want to have to be a part of. Naruto snorted, she sounds like a real handful. He laughed, I guess I won't complain too much, it's nice to be out of the village for a bit. The silence continued for a while, but Naruto had another question. So, why are you so focused on going to find her? I'm more than enough to go bring her back and the old fogies would be happy to have you stick around. Not like they'd really trust me with anything like they do you. Well, that's cause you're still at work, Jiraiya said with a grin getting an eye roll from Naruto. In all seriousness it's because there are rules and despite having more knowledge of chakra theory than any jonin I've met you are sorely lacking in the political knowledge of our country and the others. Especially as a new S class, there are rules even in this country we have to follow, more in spoken but rules all the same. Naruto turned to him with a raised eyebrow. Maybe I can force the snake to resend the rating cause this is becoming annoying old man. He grumbled. Jiraiya laughed, with strength comes responsibility, Naruto. You have tremendous strength so. I got it, sighed Naruto. So what am I missing? There is a balance, between the Hokage and the Fire Lord. While ninja villages are largely independent from the capital, there is a back and forth. The Fire Lord in the capital is in charge and there are five advisors, all of which hold large influence in the country and trade throughout the continent. Trade that we need, food, cloth, resources, herbs, basically things that don't grow or exist naturally in this country. With that the capital also provides funds to the village in times of need, such as after the Nine Tails attack, 
where we needed all the help we could get to quickly rebuild so as not to look weak to the other four great nations. Naruto hung, I suppose it doesn't come for free. Jiraiya nodded, exactly, the Hokage's ninja are tools to complete missions and those with money can hire us. The Fire Lord and the Five Advisors often have work that needs to be done, from being political diplomats in other nations or taking care of rivals. Naruto saw Jiraiya giving him a deadly stare and Naruto understood, the rivals weren't always in other countries. None of this is hidden from the Fire Lord or Hokage. In fact it's actually encouraged to keep everyone sharp, we may not have the public history that the Bloody Mist does, but the Land of Fire has its own history of infighting. Besides the Fire Lord the Hokage has the most authority in the country with the five advisors being below that, then are the great clans. See why it's important. Naruto rubbed his hair with a groan, yeah, I get it, so what's the rules? You explained all that but didn't answer my question. Jiraiya thumbed him on the head, I was getting to it. He said with a glare, you and I are the go-to hire for those in the capital. Our power and reputation make us ideal emissaries as we can go most places to deliver messages that would normally kill all that approach from the leaf. Last year I went to the Rock Village to deliver the updated trade agreement from the Fire Lord to the Stone Lord. I know you know how that's impossible for most others. Naruto nodded with an impressed face, even with your representative you have some balls, Jiraiya. Laughed Naruto, I mean you're the one who trained my old man, who tore those losers apart. Jiraiya snorted, they hate us and him especially, but the Tsuchikage isn't a stupid man and knows there isn't a point to starting another war. For now at least, he trailed off tiredly. Think they're losing it over me? Naruto asked excitedly, I mean I look so much like him. Not to mention I'm getting pretty famous thanks to the bingo book. Oh I hope they've seen it. Naruto said with a wide smile. Jiraiya went to thump him on the head again, but Naruto ducked away and laughed, ha ha, old man. Then Naruto felt a thump on his head and turned to see a clone poof away. Seriously? When did you make that? Naruto asked with a blank expression. Jiraiya burst out laughing, like an hour ago. He shouted. Naruto blew a raspberry at him, whatever. Jiraiya sobered back up after a bit, back to the rules, because we're the go-to we have to always be ready to drop what we're doing to answer a summon to the capital. Knowing you if you were summoned while out here alone, you'd ignore it and that would just cause all sorts of issues. Naruto nodded. Makes sense anyone besides you do these things. Jiraiya nodded, yes, I do a majority of the political things, sometimes Kakashi as well as his representative is incredible, and his strength isn't anything to scoff at. But for the work sometimes an Anbu Kapitan will take the job. The issue is the Hokage decides who gets the assignment otherwise they would demand me for everything, my mission rate is very high, but they have practically unlimited money. Naruto perked up, oh, what would my mission rate be? He asked, he wasn't exactly well off financially, he's only been on 10 missions and 9 of which were D rank. I'm sure it is gonna be higher than Kakashi's, so likely 2 million minimum. Jiraiya said with a wave, mine is 10. He said with a grin to which Naruto laughed back. Naruto suddenly stops and turns to Jiraiya with a curious expression, by the way are we just let those guys follow us the whole time or should we do something about it? He asked while pointing a thumb to the forests behind them where he knew they were being followed. Jiraiya shrugged, they're here for you, you take care of them. I was hoping they'd have the guts to start the fight. In the next moment six ninja with no headband arrived in front of them with a body flicker. Naruto looked at all of them closely, there wasn't a common elemental affinity among them that would give away a village affiliation, nor were there really any visual cues. All of them had very little defining standout features. Okay I give, where are all of you from? Called Naruto with a tilted head. Jiraiya took a few steps back, there, unaffiliated. Scouts, they want to get a feel for you. This means that every lord and cage now know of you and wants to see if you live up to the hype. After all, S-class win wars. Naruto stepped forward while cracking his knuckles, got it. Now I want all of you to give it your all don't make this boring. He shouted before blitzing forward and kicking the one in his center. To the ninja's credit he managed to raise his guard, but Naruto felt both arms break from the kick. Naruto's eyes glowed and he blurred past the ninja he kicked to get behind him and swept his legs from out under him and rained down punches with ruthless force. 
Once the ninja was completely broken, he stood back up and turned to the rest, the five were silently watching. I would recommend you come at me together. Naruto didn't wait and rushed another, this time the ninja he was attacking was supported by two more who came at him with tontos. Naruto pulled the ninja in the middle who had his guard raised with earth nature chakra to protect him, Naruto grabbed him and threw him at the ninja on his right sending them tumbling away. Then he leaned away from the slash and ducked under the follow-up attack. Naruto sent a knife hand to the ninja's open side breaking the ribs. Naruto was forced to block an incoming kick from the fifth remaining ninja and with lightning speed grabbed the foot and tossed him into the ground. Naruto was about to finish him off when the two he sent tumbling away shot forward to attack one with a tonto the other with a fist blowing with lighting natured chakra. The one with the tonto was channeling wind chakra so Naruto knew not to touch it otherwise he'd lose a finger or hand. With that in mind he avoided the tonto with swaying movements and waited for his opportunity. The second ninja with the lightning fist attacked after he swayed back, and Naruto grinned savagely at the mistake. He grabbed the incoming attack by the wrist and pushed it in the way of the wind blade causing an explosion from the elements clashing. Naruto saw lightning fist lose his hand and moved to finish him. Naruto jumped and kicked him in the chest sending him back then warped behind the ninja and slammed a full force punch to his back cracking and breaking all him bones in his torso. The ninja with a tonto had his blade ruined and he moved to attack in hand to hand. Naruto parried a punch and hit him with six punches to various places around his body then finished with a spinning kick to his neck sending him tumbling away out of the fight. The remaining two, one with the broken ribs and the other who he threw into the ground were on guard next to each other. Naruto noticed that the one with the tonto pulled another out to dual wield the blades. Naruto shot forward and made it look as if he was going after the unarmed on but attacked both, the one with the tonto with a kick and the unarmed one with an elbow. The bladed ninja tried to slash him while the other tried to punch him, but Naruto parried the punch and grabbed the wrist holding the blade. He pulled the wrist forward and kneed him in the face rattling his skull and shattering his nose. The last one knew he was outmatched and took out a roll of explosive notes and rushed him. Naruto grinned and coated his hand with chakra as he grabbed the roll of notes and flooded the paper with so much chakra it destabilized the seals causing them to catch fire rather than explode. Naruto then leg swept the ninja, and followed up with a hammer arm to smash him into the ground creating a crater in the earth from the force. Naruto wiped his hands off as he looked at the six down ninja, that was fun, now go. Tell everyone of my amazing power. I'll happily beat any of you into the ground again. Laughed Naruto, he watched as they managed to pull themselves up and drag each other away into the forests. Jiraiya stepped up with a thoughtful expression, that was different than your usual boasting. More calculated. Naruto nodded, after the invasion, and the old man, we need a new boogie man to deter foolishness from our rivals. I took them down without ninjutsu as a statement of strength. I do still plan to be Hokage after all. Jiraiya nodded, smart, though you should settle for 6th Hokage as you're too valuable to be relegated to the job now. That's actually the reason we're rushing to get Tsunade as well. She is perfect for the job, strength and reputation in spades, and we won't lose any manpower as she hasn't been active in decades. Naruto's face gave nothing away as he acknowledged what Jiraiya was saying. He didn't want to voice that he wasn't exactly a fan of someone who ran from her duties becoming Hokage. He'd have to test her when they met. Gotcha, said Naruto as they continued their walk. Tanzuka Gai, one of the four major cities in the Land of Fire. There were many attractions and center most was the entertainment district which held more gambling houses than anywhere else in the country. Naruto and Jiraiya walked through the bustling nightlife of Tanzuka Gai with curious eyes as they looked around. Well, Naruto was curious, Jiraiya looked like he was back in his old stomping ground. Soft warm lights from lanterns lit the footpaths, shops and stands were spread out throughout the district's streets. Bars and restaurants were filled with laughing and cheering as the customers were celebrating together for whatever reason. The atmosphere of the city was drastically different than anywhere else in the country. While positive in energy the leaf was a hidden village, even the civilians knew it was primarily a military city with the ninja dictating all the rules. While fun could be had, if the ninja didn't approve or sanction it on some level it was stopped. The capital was extremely positive, even to civilians with no power and influence finding it a nice place to live. 
If only because the rules were a bit laxer than the leaf as there are no seemingly all-knowing ninja enforcing the laws, the capital was run on pleasure and money, for better or worse. Tanzuka Gai was a happy medium, enforced by a regiment of warriors from the capital as well as patrolling Chunin squads. That allowed the streets to be relatively safe from crime, but still have the freedom for entertainment that wouldn't have been strictly permitted in the leaf. These people are all so happy, thought Naruto with a grin. Jiraiya mentioned that they were approaching Tsunade and had them wait on the outskirts of village until nightfall as she would be drunk enough to not notice them enter the village. Naruto suspected that even with chakra suppression he wasn't capable of fully hiding his presence as his chakra was just too vast, not exactly awesome for a ninja, he'd work on it. In here, said Jiraiya as he pointed to a bar located on the end of a lane. The lights from the bar were a bit duller and the sounds were lower than the rest of the bars back in the center of the village. Naruto followed Jiraiya into the bar with a curious look, there were only two customers in the bar located at a booth in the corner. One of which stood up as they entered. Jiraiya, shouted Tsunade after they walked in. Jiraiya smiled, long time no see, Tsunade. Sheesh, I'm exhausted from all the walking, he said as he moved to join her and Shizune at the booth. Naruto followed behind with his hands in his pockets. I don't know anything about this woman except for what's in the books. I'll let Jiraiya do the talking, they're looking at each other as more than former teammates. He thought with a raised eyebrow. After sitting at the booth Jiraiya gestured to him, this is Naruto, he came with me to meet you. Yo, Naruto said with a salute as he accepted food from the waiter then ordered more. Tsunade barely spared him a glance, but Shizune's eyes widened for a moment before she turned away. Naruto didn't bother looking at her more than a glance he was too busy being blown away by Tsunade. Her chakra is unlike anything I've ever seen. Every muscle fiber has traces of being enhanced, that's control on a level one didn't think someone could achieve without a bloodline. Thought Naruto as he let his six eyes take in everything about the woman. I would bet that even without her actively molding chakra to strengthen herself she's stronger than the average jonin. At her max I bet she could shatter a mountain. It's crazy that someone so strong is so weak minded to need a genjutsu to make herself look younger. Jiraiya took a drink from the sake at the table and sighed happily, you've grown even more beautiful, Tsunade. I've missed you, even if you spend so much effort to avoid me. He said with a grin. Surprisingly Tsunade laughed. Maybe if you tried a bit harder it wouldn't have been two years since we've seen each other. She said with a smile. Naruto's eyes widened, huh, wouldn't have called that. Jiraiya has the hots for this woman. I thought his true love were the ladies at the entertainment district back home. He laughed to himself at the thought. Jiraiya's eyes narrowed, it has been a while. He said with a frown. We'll have to pick up where we left off in the moon resort. She replied with a hiccup. I haven't had a good, her eyes narrowed, and she shook her head, oh god I am drunk. She said morosely. Jiraiya burst into laughter confusing Naruto and getting a tired sigh from Shizune, I'll say. We were at that resort nearly ten years ago. Though those were the best times. He said with a melancholic smile on his face. Naruto tilted his head and connected the dots quickly then burst into laughter getting the attention of everyone else at the table. You're kidding, Jiraiya. You and her, that's wild. He turned to Tsunade, you must be something to snag this one. He said while pointing to Jiraiya who was rapidly growing more and more nervous, I mean there can't be too many out there that would settle for a genjutsu clad old woman, much less Jiraiya of the Sanin. Somehow Naruto managed to hit every single conversation landmine Tsunade possessed and he seemed to be even more thrilled as he finished speaking. Shizune pulled her pet pig that was nestled in her arms closer with a worried look while Jiraiya was sweating bullets in his seat. Tsunade glared at him with a thunderous look that even Naruto found a tad bit scary. Who do you think you are you little shit? She shouted standing to her feet. Why are you here, Jiraiya? If you wanted to drink, you shouldn't have brought a snot-nosed little punk. Naruto's face softened from the grin he was wearing as he felt a bit of irritation flare from her words. He would normally shut down someone talking like this, but he wasn't in front of a normal ninja, so he'd offer leeway. Honestly, she was still pretty drunk, and he found it pretty funny. Jiraiya sighed, honestly, I wish I were here for fun times. I'm here to request you return to the village. 
Sensei hurt himself bad using that jutsu to deal with Orochimaru during the invasion. Tsunade's eyes hardened, so that old fossil used that, huh. Never would have thought he still had it in him. She mused cruelly getting a twitch out of Naruto, well you can stuff it I. You've been named fifth Hokage. Jiraiya interrupted, it's not so simple as blowing me off. Shizun gasped and Tsunade's eyes widened for a moment before glaring at him fiercely, you dare, you hunt me down to demand I return to that place and even worse you convince those people to make me Hokage, me. Tsunade jumped to her feet, you can both off. She shouted while slamming a hand onto the table cracking it. Naruto stared at the table blankly while Jiraiya finished his saucer of sake. Neither of them all that intimidated. Too much, she said lowly as she sat back down. That hellhole took too much from me and now you want me to die like those fools, like sensei. That's all the Hokage position is. A chair for a fool to kill themselves at the appropriate time. Naruto clenched his fist, fools. Big words from a weak woman like you wallowing in self-pity. He said venomously, there are many who have lost everything for the leaf and still happily protect it. I had my ticket torn less than an hour after I was born, and you don't see me drowning in alcohol. Tsunade snapped her head to him, that's enough. She shouted while jumping back to her feet. Naruto mirrored her actions with a slight glare from behind his glasses. Think you know everything, twerp. Then let's take this outside. She said with a growl before stomping out of the bar. Jiraiya sighed and tossed the barkeep a roll of money before following her out, Shizun and Naruto right behind him. The two ninjas stood across from each other in the empty road. The bar was far enough from the main street that there were no civilians around to get in the way. You think your hero worship of the Hokage makes them less of fools. I'll show you just how shallow your thoughts are on the real world. Tsunade said while stretching her arms. Naruto Tsked, I'm going to say it right now. Apologize and take back what you've said about the Hokage. And I won't smash you into the ground and drag your old ass back to the leaf. He said with a frown. As he said that he observed as her chakra purged the alcohol from her system at light speed. Yeah sure, you little shit. Tell you what, land a hit on me and I'll acknowledge you as a ninja. Till then you can settle for being the twerp genin with too loud a bark. She taunted with a smirk. Naruto tilted his head, twerp genin, huh, I'm the future Hokage of the leaf. I'm too young right now for it so they're giving it to a useless ninja like you who won't cost us battle power to put in the chair. He responded while limbering up. Tsunade's eyes widened for a moment at his words then she went back to angry. Also, started Naruto before shooting forward at his absolute top speed shocking everyone and slamming a devastating punch into Tsunade's gut launching her off the street and through a building. One hit isn't going to be all that tough. He said while dispassionately gazing in the direction she flew. Shizun off to the side leaned over to Jiraiya, so he's the one I heard about. Probably. Tsunade clearly doesn't pay attention to the new developments in the ninja world. Jiraiya said with an amused laugh, she was paying for it now, he thought. A pulse of chakra was felt from the rubble of the building, then green wisps of chakra began rising into the air. Naruto popped his neck as his six eyes told him that the rust on Tsunade's abilities were quickly being removed. Guess we'll see if the legendary fighter is all she's cracked up to be. Rubble was blasted into the air as Tsunade shot to her feet, Chakra was consolidated around her gut healing the damage inflicted by Naruto. Healing of that level without physically directing the Chakra, you're pretty good. Complimented Naruto as he watched it happen with his eyes, he knew that such a thing was beyond him at the moment. Tsunade cracked her neck and limbered up, who are you? You're not much older than a fresh graduate. She asked then turned to Jiraiya, who is he? Naruto Uzumaki. I introduced him earlier. He answered helpfully with a smile. Naruto didn't wait any longer and shot forward. This time Tsunade caught the punch and sent one of her own. The punch was deflected to the right, however the sheer force of the punch was such that the building in the path had a massive crack in the wall. Naruto went for an uppercut that was caught he ducked under a hook, threw a jab to her gut that was redirected, and he was caught in the side by her follow-up strike making him wince. Naruto backed off then raised a knee to her face, and she slammed a palm to stop him, then followed up with a jab at lightning speed Naruto only barely dodged in time. He launched three punches as fast as he could, 
she only dodged the first and blocked the second before taking a hit to the kidney. She grunted at the force then went on the offensive with her own combo that Naruto was struggling to deflect and dodge. He swayed around the first punch, caught the second and winced from the power behind the hit, the last was barely ducked under and he felt his hair sway from the force. Tsunade didn't let up the pressure, she stomped the ground which caused a crater to be formed taking away Naruto's footing that she took advantage of by landing a devastating punch to his stomach launching him away. Naruto caught himself midair and landed in a crouch a stream of blood flowing from his mouth, her raw skill with taijutsu is in a whole other planet than my own. I'm a solid chunin she could go toe to toe with the rakage in skill. What a pain, not to mention her chakra enhancement, body is better than mine. In hand to hand I'll lose. Okay, you're good, Naruto commented as Tsunade rushed forward with flaming green chakra flowing from her fists now, chakra enhancement jutsu, red said naruto while powering up a glowing red orb at the tip of his finger before he could fire the jutsu jiraiya jumped between them with both hands raised let's stop it here you two will destroy the town if you keep at it tsunade immediately stopped while naruto sighed as he stopped red before it went off it was about to get good jiraiya naruto whined i think she may be a worse matchup for me than jiraiya how interesting i need to get infinity usable I'm scraping the surface of S but I'm not there fully yet if this is what type of monsters await me. Tsunade stared at the ground in shock, I didn't think, to go that far, she muttered to herself, completely shocked at the boy's ability and her own lack of thought in getting so serious. She knew he was likely Kashina's son but to think he was so strong. Jiraiya, let's go we need to talk, she demanded before stomping off. Shizun sighed as she took in the destroyed environment then rushed to catch up to her master. Jiraiya watched her leave with a wistful smile, her breasts are the wonder, but that ass isn't bad either. He said with a smile. Naruto turned to him with a deadpan expression, yeah, I'm going to bed. Don't pull something old man, he trailed off feeling gross for even thinking like that. I'll get a room at an inn. With that master and student separated for the night. Confident that their mission would be over in the coming days not knowing what was coming. It was nearing noon when Jiraiya and Tsunade decided to sit down to eat together. Both of them caught up after the impromptu fight the night before and were enjoying each other's company. Both of them found solace in one of the only people in the world that has been there for them throughout their whole lives. Jiraiya smiled to himself as he watched his old teammate and lifelong flame eat. There was a time when this was the dream I would die for. He mused wistfully then got a bit more serious. Tsunade, I hope you know that you're the best person for the job, otherwise I would have never suggested you. Tsunade smiled at first then glared to the side, we can't just have a meal, huh? Always focused on work, first it was your network that didn't let you settle down, now you won't even let me settle on my own. She said with a downcast expression, I told the kid and I'll tell you, I don't think I have any more to give the village. That's not true, I saw it last night when you fought with Naruto. Jiraiya said making effort to lock eyes with her, you're lost in the past, but if you look to the present, you'd see there are people who love you and believe in you. I failed all the people I love and who loved me, Tsunade said with a glare. I couldn't save Dan, Nawaki died before I got there, and we, she trailed off quietly and shook her head. We couldn't have a family ten years ago, both of us failed at that. Jiraiya snorted, too late for you and I and too much baggage, but I did have a family. He declared with a grin and slightly misty eyes, in every way that matters Minato was my son, I certainly taught and loved him like he was my own and I felt like Kashina was my daughter when they married. He said with a small smile as he thought back to different days. Tsunade's eyes softened, they were amazing people, though very distant Kashina was family to me too. Yep, agreed Jiraiya and I'm going to do all I can to be there for Naruto and guide him to be a proper ninja. He has much to learn but I have the utmost faith in him. Tsunade hummed at the mention of the blonde, just what is with that kid? He shouldn't be that strong at that age. Minato was a strong chunin at that age but that boy, even sensei didn't become an S class till he was 16. Jiraiya sighed, you noticed that even at night he wore those glasses, correct? She nodded. He possesses an ocular jutsu called the Six Eyes, potentially a new bloodline. Really? Tsunade asked in wonder, what does it do? 
Well it is similar to the Rinnegan and Sharingan but not quite the same. Jiraiya pursed his lips as he thought the best way to describe it, it gives him the ability to see and understand chakra at a level only equaled by the Rinnegan, if not greater than. Okay, but knowing and seeing chakra should let him. Right, Jiraiya said with a nod, he can perfectly control chakra, even theoretical chakras thanks to his eyes. The jutsu he was about to use last night was red, pure positive chakra hyper condensed in a shell of negative chakra, the power is absurd. Another jutsu is blue which is the inverse of that, but as he showed last night, he can also use chakra enhancement, body to incredible levels with no waste. Jiraiya didn't go into the insanity that was infinity, it wasn't done, and it made his head spin at the thought of it. Tsunade frowned as she took in that information, strange I haven't heard about it till now. Naruto was confronted by Orochimaru in the Chunin exams, our teammate interfered with the seal on Naruto. Explained Jiraiya getting a surprised look from Tsunade, prior to that Naruto didn't have the six eyes and was merely a promising genin. We suspect, Naruto, Sensei and I, that the Nine Tails Chakra was affecting his body and he was unable to awaken it until it was separated from him. Tsunade snorted, so Orochimaru inadvertently empowered an enemy. She said with a nasty smirk. What was Naruto like before? Jiraiya smirked. He was pretty much the same but without the power to back it up, so a knucklehead twerped Genin with too loud a bark. Laughed Jiraiya repeating Tsunade's words back to her getting a snort from the woman. By the way I think I may have pulled something last night. Commented Jiraiya while stretching which got an eye roll from Tsunade. I didn't really give you a great impression of me, huh? Asked Naruto uneasily as he and Shizune strolled through the surrounding forests while their respective masters talked. Shizune gave him a side eye before sighing, no, you did not. But I'm not ignorant to Lady Tsunade's abrasiveness. She reluctantly admitted. Naruto smiled, not like I was a bully or anything, she was about to smash me into the ground. He laughed, granted he could have used some jutsu but that would have been his loss since they were supposed to go at it via hand to hand. Very true, there are few in the world that can take my lady on with their bare fists. Shizun proclaimed proudly, the little pig in her arms gave an oink in agreement. I'm sure, both of them continued to walk silently a little longer, taking in the scenery for a while. The bushes and large trees filling the environment in lush greenery with the sun peeking through the canopy of leaves above them. Naruto turned to Shizun, I'm sure Jiraiya will convince her to come back. He said suddenly. Shizun nodded absent-mindedly, I'm sure that he of all people could. Would you be happy to return home after so long? I'm quite content, she said while glancing at him, I have maintained my position as Jonin by communicating with Lord Hokage through my summons. Katsuyu has a summon nest in the village that makes it easy to send and receive mission scrolls. Naruto nodded, huh, not a bad idea. I guess that's how Jiraiya was able to keep in touch too. He mused, but I meant seeing your friends, aren't you happy to return home? Yes. She said softly, I have loved learning from my lady all this time, but I do miss the leaf. Should Lady Tsunade decide not to return however, I will not fight her decision. Naruto could only listen, he didn't want to argue with her. As much as her words were likely genuine, she must have been unaware of how lonely her eyes were at this moment. It would seem all this time away had taken a toll on her and only the love and respect she felt for Tsunade was keeping her silent on the matter. A growl and a blur of motion appeared in Shizune's blind spot, Naruto only barely caught it in time to move in front of her and catch the incoming kunai slash. As he took in the appearance of the ninja, adorned with a sound village headband and he sensed the chakra of nearly three dozen more surrounding them. Shizune, please stay back. There are a lot of them. Naruto said while gripping the wrist of the ninja in front of him, I'll deal with this trash. In a blur of motion no one could see Naruto's free arm lashed out with a palm strike to the chest of the ninja in front of him. It was a slight delay before the ninja coughed up a large blob of blood and fell to the ground, dying if not dead. It was then that the rest of the ninja became visible to the two-leaf ninja. Naruto whistled as he took off his glasses, who would have thought Orochimaru still had this many followers after that failed invasion. He laughed, Shizun glanced at him in shock. He was far too calm when they were outnumbered this badly. Naruto moved through three hand signs that no one recognized. 
It wasn't that they were completely new, it was that one hand was going through different seals from the other. The molding of negative chakra so alien to normal that he needed to completely rework hand signs to manage it. A single hand ram seal with his left then an open palm facing towards a group of ninja followed by a savage grin from Naruto was the only signal of his attack. There was a pulse of chakra nearly invisible between the six ninjas, then they were all pulled together with such force their bodies were crushed into paste. The aftermath of the jutsu left a five-diameter circle of empty space, no leaves, tree limbs or even blood and body parts. From the moment the dozens of ninjas appeared to the moment Naruto killed six with his jutsu blue, barely four seconds passed. Shizun watched everything with shock on her face. I knew that he was declared S, and his bounty from Orochimaru was 50 million. The reports came out in the bounty hunter circles. But seeing his ability in person, last night and now, all my doubts from his age are gone. He's one of those monsters. She thought as Naruto began literally tearing apart the sound ninja with his bare hands and a few applications of blue. Jiraiya growled to himself as he and Tsunade were rushing to get out of the town while smashing random sound ninja into the ground every so often. He didn't think they were all that tough and fighting them wasn't even much of a hassle it's an unnecessary loss of life sure but not much of a threat to him. What is Orochimaru thinking? He can't think he can take the three of us on with just his foot soldiers. Jiraiya wondered with a frown. Tsunade kicked a ninja away and frowned, whatever it is it must make him quite confident that he's launched an offensive of this level. He must have some kind of leverage, whatever it is it's given him confidence and fighting him is never as simple as punching each other. Jiraiya said as the both of them cleared the town and were now jumping through the forests. The two of them landed in a clearing with each other covering the back of the other. Jiraiya glanced around and hummed, about four dozen, maybe more out of my range are lumped together and I can't tell. He said quietly. Tsunade kept her eyes of the ninja surrounding them, none of them are a real threat but there are so many that this could be a problem. All it takes is a lucky kanai, she said with a grimace. The ground beneath them rumbles and both of them steady themselves as in the forests there were explosions. Trees were blown into the air while dust and debris blew everywhere. Once it cleared the veteran ninja were greeted to the sight of half a dozen massive snakes closing in on them. Dozens of sound ninja readying themselves to attack and half a dozen massive snake summons looking hungry. Jiraiya started molding chakra internally and grinned. Now it's a party, he said as he slammed a hand to the ground creating a massive plume of smoke. Naruto, slightly covered in blood and shizun, slightly terrified from the situation but still calm, made their way through the forests with haste. I don't know Orochimaru's plan but keeping us separated from Jiraiya and Tsunade was part of it. We have to get back to them, shouted Naruto as he rushed through the trees. Yes, agreed Shizun. A sound ninja wielding a katana cut through the air towards Naruto who pointed a finger in his direction creating a small Rasengan on the tip of his finger. Chakra Jutsu. Sinister spiraling shot. Naruto watched as his jutsu was dodged with a slightly impressed expression on his face. The ninja likely had quite a bit of experience under his belt. Not that it mattered as Naruto throat punched him, followed by a devastating knee to the head. This continued for the whole journey through the forests a ninja was ambushed them and Naruto would dispatch them quickly. That was until Naruto and Shizun were forced to stop as the sight in front of them filled them with unease. There were about a dozen ninja in front of them, the numbers weren't what was shocking. No. It was the fact that their chakra was corrupted and changing their bodies. Naruto's six eyes told him everything, the chakra is corrupting them with nature chakra and mutating them. This damage is irreversible, their minds are going into a frenzy as the chakra overtakes them. Naruto grimaced as he made another realization, they're fighting it, I can see it, chakra trying to push the foreign chakra back but they're not doing it right. They're fighting it they don't want it. Naruto's body shook slightly as he glared up at the ninja with fury on his face and a slight wetness in his eyes, I'm sorry. He muttered to them while knowing they couldn't hear the words. I noticed it recently, thought Naruto and he readied himself to fight them, ever since I woke up in the forest with these eyes, I've become more ruthless. Thinking back I wasn't the kind of person to kill people without a very good reason. I hard to force my resolve to kill Haku on the bridge, but now, I don't think too deeply. Maybe because I've noticed that all the ninja that I've killed were loyal to that madman Orochimaru, but now. 
The first and centermost ninja was hunched over with horns coming out of its spine, it howled loud enough to disrupt the air as it charged towards Naruto. He met the charge with a clash that cratered the ground beneath them. Naruto felt his body rattle from the collision. While its strength was devastating its mind and speed weren't and Naruto quickly shoved a Rasengan into its head before it could realize what was coming. The blood and gore from the impact covered the front of Naruto's shirt and he felt his eye twitch. I don't want to kill them. Two more attacked him, both having massive claws poised to shred him to pieces. Naruto jumped up at the last moment letting them crash into each other. Two Rasengan, one in each hand, were slammed into the head of the mutated ninja beneath him. Naruto stood and watched as he was being rushed by the rest, he glared and charged his chakra. In front of his right hand a swirling malevolent ball of red energy burst into existence. But they want me too, and I have too. Chakra enhancement jutsu, red. He said before releasing a cataclysmic shockwave that tore the forests asunder. Trees in the jutsu's path were torn from the ground and swept the incoming ninja in the shockwave. Naruto could only watch dispassionately before rushing into action. Jiraiya heel slammed a sound ninja with monstrous mutations taking over its body. Its head crated into the ground instantly dead. He absorbed a tackle and parried the momentum into the ground and slammed a Rasengan into its body killing it. What a pain, Jiraiya thought as another ninja approached him. This one was kicked away as he was forced to parry the slash of the next one, duck the third and counter the fourth. Jiraiya with speed that was uncommon in someone of his size, jumped into the air before weaving two hand signs to release a fire style, dragon flame bomb directly below him into the four mutated ninja. In the distance were the three remaining snakes battling it out with Gamabunta and Gamakan. Gamabunta was likely enough for snakes of these caliber, but he wanted to be sure in case Manda showed up, seeing as Orochimaru hadn't showed yet it was likely the boss snake would come later. Behind him was a kneeling catatonic Tsunade being protected by two horse-sized toads with swords on their backs. She was able to take out three ninjas before one of them sliced their arm open to cover her face with blood causing her to collapse from her trauma. It's bad enough they have these numbers, then there are the curse mark mutated ninja. I had to summon two boss-sized toads then two soldier toads. If I'm conservative in my assessment I have used about a third of my chakra. If it gets worse, I may need Ma and Pa for Orochimaru. Jiraiya thought with a grimace, he didn't want to go that far for something like this. Then he turned to the hill overlooking the battlefield where a single solitary figure was observing the battle. A young ninja that Jiraiya recognized from the reports of the invasion. Kabuto Yakushi was overseeing the battle with a sound headband on his head fully announcing to the world his affiliation. Guess the report was true, he was a traitor. Jiraiya thought before gritting his teeth, I'm really wanting to smash that smirk off his face. As more mutated ninjas were about to rush Jiraiya the entire field was overcome by a menacing and terrifyingly powerful chakra. Even the mutated ninja were frozen in place from their instincts. Naruto Uzumaki, six eyes glaring at the world and powerful chakra flowing off of his body, emerged from the tree line with a small tear track falling from both eyes. Jiraiya looked over at him with a worried expression, Naruto. Said boy turned to his master with wide enraged eyes, I've killed a lot of people that I really would have rather not have. Naruto said blankly before his eyes settled on Kabuto in the distance. Hand signs were weaved in a flash and Naruto warped directly in front of Kabuto whose brain couldn't acknowledge Naruto's sudden appearance before he was punched directly in the chest with all of Naruto's strength. Blue chakra flowed from his fists in thick wisps trailing from the path of his attack. Kabuto vomited blood and was blasted off the hill and into the tree line behind him. Gamabunta managed to kill the last snake while Gamakan dismissed himself as the fight finished. Right as Gamabunta was going to announce his farewell the ground in the center of the clearing exploded and a massive purple snake slithered into the air. Naruto warped over to Jiraiya barely sparing a glance to Tsunade behind them and watched as the massive boss snake entered the fray. Dozens of meters in the air the menacing head of Manda hovered over them, gazing down at them with malicious intent. No way, muttered Jiraiya in shock, why would he go back? Naruto frowned as he looked back at Manda and noticed the figures standing on top of his head. There were three, first was Orochimaru covered in bandages and gazing down at them with a furious glee in his eyes, in his right hand was his sword already out and ready to go. 
Next to him were two more figures, interestingly enough all three of them were wearing similar coats. They were black with red clouds. As Naruto looked closer, he recognized the two beside the snake. First was young, only five or so years older than himself. He was stoic and bared a striking resemblance of his teammate Sasuke. Itachi Uchiha gazed down at them with his Sharingan active and no emotion on his face. The second seemed particularly thrilled to be here. His skin was strangely blue, his teeth were sharp and shark-like, and there was a massive, bandaged sword hung from his shoulder. The monster of the hidden mist, the tailless tailed beast, Kisame Hoshigaki looked like Christmas had come early as he looked over the battlefield. Naruto wasn't sure what team or group they were a part of, but he wasn't excited to see three ninjas of their caliber on the same side against him. What a mess, muttered Naruto as he readied all his brain power into summoning infinity. There has been a debate that has been around for as long as ninja have been killing each other. Since the first Senju killed the first Uchiha thousands of years ago, before many clans even existed. It was a simple question. Which ninja is the strongest? Over the centuries there were changes in what the best are called. Special, elite, legendary, or just plain old strong. Unfortunately it has never been an easy thing to figure out. During the era of Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha the designations known as letter rankings were created by the lords of the five great countries to tier the clans they wanted to hire for work. This allowed them to measure what they were up against, who they needed to hire, and how much ninja were worth in payment. Originally, it ranged from D all the way to A, D being considered common and useful for non-ninja related jobs. These were ninja families with no real clan techniques or renown usually first or second generation ninja trying to make it in the world. C were more renowned families, such as the Shimura clan who were known for wind jutsu but only bolstered one or two strong ninjas. B in A encompassed the known clans of today, the Naras were A B and Hyuga's A. Clans with these ratings usually possessed a unique skill or bloodline that set them apart. However, the Uchiha and Senju clans broke the scale of A, the lords needed an entirely new grade to quantify them. Thus the designation of S was created, signifying special. From there it caught on to rank individuals by the same ranking system. But the questions remained the same even if the wording changed what constituted someone achieving S. Many debated that it was by killing elite ninja such as Jonan with ease. Others by amount of chakra, or jutsu knowledge and secret arts. While those factors came into it, the way someone achieved S was not by self-declaration but by public opinion, particularly by enemies. If a cage could declare their own ninja S, then there would be dozens and the scale would break. So today, for a ninja to be considered and accepted as S, then your enemy must overcome their pride, overcome their ego, and declare to the world that said person was so powerful that they were head and shoulders above the rest of the elite. Usually this was followed by anger, and a very high bounty. That being said it was never cut and dry in who was the strongest. One S was not equal to another. The third Hokage being so far above his rival cage that he was named the god of shinobi. The legendary Sanin were considered all cage level in strength and reputation. Hanzo of the Salamanders was so feared and powerful, merely surviving a battle with him could make you a legend, see the Sanin for reference. Then there was Hashirama and Madara, again it was the Uchiha and Senju that broke the scales. Both of them in their time and to this day, were so powerful that entire nations feared their gaze. Thus, they were given the rank of S+, meaning they were completely otherworldly in power, no one bearing each other being a match. Even then, Hashirama won out and had been declared the strongest cage in history and god of shinobi. Why was this important? It made the scales of strength clear in that there wasn't a set level and easy way to measure strength. Experience and personal knowledge as well as talent and intelligence come into play as well. A veteran could lose to a novice if the matchup was bad, a kanai could kill a cage. Just because someone used water jutsu didn't mean they always won against someone using fire jutsu. Which brings focus back to the Battle of Tanzuka Hills. In a battle of 5s class ninja, all of which were declared above elite by the world. With abilities and power so great one of them could change a battlefield with their presence. This battle should have a clear winning side, since it was 3 on 2. It should be obvious. Should be. 
A grunt of pain sounded throughout the fields as Kisame Hoshigaki was choke slammed into the ground by Jiraiya before being kicked into the distance through a distant hill. Orochimaru was being barraged by Naruto Uzumaki's ruthless hand to hand. Though it wasn't completely one sided, Orochimaru had been declared a snake even before he debuted his summon partners. It was in his ruthlessly efficient methods of attack, coiling then striking vital points, twisting and maneuvering around his opponents to disorientate them. He was as lethal and meticulous as the snakes he represented. Naruto had been forced to dodge and parry more attacks today than he ever had, though he was getting better. Orochimaru slashed towards Naruto's neck, but a single-handed hand seal raised by Naruto's right hand stopped the blade in its tracks. Then with his left he punched Orochimaru's gut, followed up with two rapid palm strikes to his stomach causing the snake to vomit blood and his bandages to start to slip from his head. Though the blonde wasn't finished, his six eyes flashed dangerously, and he fired a chakra enhancement jutsu, read right into Orochimaru's chest crushing parts of his chest and causing his body to fly away in a blur. Naruto Uzumaki and Jiraiya of the Sanin were currently winning the 3v2. Strangely however, it wasn't a 3v2 as Itachi Uchiha, arguably the strongest of the three, was merely observing the fight and providing ranged support at odd intervals. Neither Naruto nor Jiraiya could figure out as to why Itachi hadn't jumped in yet as Tsunade was still out of commission and an easy target to finish off. The decisive factor in this battle would be thus, would Itachi enter the battle before Tsunade? Naruto jumped back from where he just engaged Orochimaru and landed next to a furious Jiraiya. What's the plan? He asked while keeping his gaze fixed where their opponents were. I need to kill one of them, I don't think Tsunade will be much help. Jiraiya said lowly, Kisame is going to be the biggest problem with his sword, it has shaved quite a lot of chakra from me. Any more and I won't be able to call for help. We're fortunate that they are just feeling us out right now, when that shark starts flooding the earth with rapid rank jutsu we're going to be in for it. Naruto looked to where their enemies were regrouping and grimaced. Jiraiya was right, the shark man was going to be a difficult opponent to deal with. He was just too large of a problem to fight against alongside the other two since his specialty was endurance and large-scale jutsu. In combination with slippery and sneaky fighters like Orochimaru and Itachi, this could quickly become bleak. Leave Kisame to me, get whatever you're planning in action. Naruto declared with a frown. Jiraiya glanced at him, he's not an opponent that you just fight. He's got more chakra than any of the five cage and a sword that feeds him more. He warned. I got it, Naruto assured him with a grin then warped away. Naruto landed in between the three ninjas, his chakra so dense and wild that the three ninjas stared at him seriously, each expecting some kind of massive attack that they would need to shield or avoid. However his intention wasn't to take on all of them. I'm going to take the blue one, you two have fun. Naruto shouted with a killer grin as he blasted another point blank red into Kisame that shot him out of the clearing into the surrounding forests. Interesting jutsu, Naruto Uzumaki, commented Itachi as he emotionlessly watched his partner get blasted away. Naruto glanced at the Uchiha as he prepped his warp. Itachi Uchiha was an enigma, hailed as a once-in-a-generation genius in a clan of geniuses. Capable of insane feats, such as layering illusions over ninjutsu, three elemental masteries and proficient in the rest, and lethal in hand-to-hand -to, -hand to the point no one could figure out a weakness. His motivations and goals were just as mysterious. All Naruto knew about the man was that he was a psychopath that murdered his entire clan for power. Was meticulous in his actions, and most importantly, the largest threat on this field thanks to his eyes. Speaking of, Naruto noticed that as soon as he looked at him the Uchiha instantly tried to wrap him in half a dozen illusions. It was as if a swirling mass of chakra was shot from Itachi's eyes towards his own at light speed. Each tendril of chakra having a different frequency signifying a different illusion all intertwined together. It was reminiscent of a rope, with each thread a different jutsu. The premier genjutsu user of the leaf, Kurnai Yuhi was capable of double layering illusions of B rank together. Something no one without a bloodline could do and was hailed as an elite for such. But to Itachi Uchiha, a genius of a clan full of geniuses, masterfully wielding a legendary bloodline tripled the feat with a mere glance. Naruto was completely impressed, no one should be able to instantly weave six genjutsu into one another and cast them at once. 
A single genjutsu of B rank were as complex as an advanced calculus equation, doing two at once was worthy of renown and praise, no one was praising Itachi anymore, now he was just feared by all. But I'm not exactly normal either. Naruto thought with a grin, the six eyes broke down the incoming swirling mass of chakra, told him everything about it and he completely negated the effects before they even took hold of him. Defeating a genjutsu was simple in theory, the toughest part was knowing you were in one and how deep. For Naruto who could process advanced chakra mechanics at rapid levels, he merely needed to harden his chakra into a barrier around his body and not allow external chakra to penetrate it. Such was the advantage of his eyes, the ability to push away 3C rank and 3B rank genjutsu before they could even take root. Atachi's eyes widened as his attack was completely squashed by a smirking boy his little brother's age, before said boy teleported away after his partner. Interesting indeed, muttered Itachi before turning towards Jiraiya who summoned two small toads to his shoulders. He narrowed his gaze with a minuscule frown. Orochimaru walked up with a glare, after having just vomited himself up two times over to heal the damage from Naruto's attacks. That boy, he then noticed Jiraiya in the distance with a grimace, that's a problem, Itachi. We need to coordinate to take on a sage of his caliber. Indeed, Naruto's mind was in a whirlwind as he warped into the clearing, he sent Kisame to. Instead of a groaning and smoldering shark man he was met with a grinning Kisame Sans cloak sitting on a fallen tree with his massive, now unbandaged, sword Samahata next to him. When Orochimaru came to us after his laughable invasion, we doubted his words about you. Kisame said as he stood and cracked his neck. He said that you could give anyone a run for their money and would only become more of a problem thanks to those strange eyes you've awakened. Naruto listened to his words and noticed that Yin Chakra was being channeled throughout Kisame's body to heal his internal injuries and reduce his fatigue. It was different to Tsunade's methods, hers was like using the most purified water to methodically wash something leaving no streaks behind. Kisame's method lack any and all finesse, instead relying brute force healing it was akin to using a water dragon to clean a window. It gave Naruto an idea, I didn't think a block head like you would be able to use medical jutsu. Commented Naruto as he stretched his arms and neck, but if you can do that at least you're going to last longer than I thought. He finished with a grin before getting into a stance. It's Samahata using stored chakra to heal and fix me, I'm not doing it. Grinned Kisame as he stood to his full height, nearing seven feet tall and stacked with thick muscles making his frame dwarf Naruto's several times over. Don't die on me brat, we still need the fox within you. Naruto wasted no more time, he shot forward with blinding speed, nailing Kisame with a punch and a knee to the stomach right after. The massive sword was slammed into the ground where Naruto was standing but he was able to avoid it, not without feeling some chakra being pulled away. Samahata was swung in a wide arc that Naruto jumped over, then came down with a kick to Kisame's face who blocked the kick with a forearm. Pushing off the arm, a second kick was sent to the side of Kisame's head that was blocked by his headband clad forehead causing a clang to sound out into the air. Naruto pushed two fingers into Kisame's grinning face and fired off a red point blank. The power was heavily reduced but still impacted Kisame sending him back a few meters. Kisame shot back towards Naruto with a savage grin and killing intent rolling off him in waves. Naruto took a deep breath at the pressure and prepared his next jutsu. At the tip of his finger he made a small orb of blue chakra. Let's see, thought Naruto as he fired off chakra jutsu, sinister spiraling shot. It was a small Rasengan that flew towards Kisame with incredible speed, for a ninja at a level below Jonin they wouldn't be able to follow its path with their eyes. However, Kisame was not below the level of a Jonin, so he slapped it away with his sword. The jutsu made impact for a moment before it was snuffed out against the blue scales of the legendary sword. Naruto shot forward and filled his arms with even more chakra than he did at his normal peak, but instead of internalizing it to enhance himself and potentially ruin his muscles he hardened it externally. It looked as if his arms were incredibly hot with a haze whiffing off his fists. Kisame didn't waste time and did an upward slash that tore through the ground as if it weren't there, sending debris into the air along with the massive blade. Naruto gritted his teeth and punched the incoming blade with all his strength. The impact of sword and fist clashed with a thunderous boom that distorted the air and sent a shockwave out that blasted all the loose debris away. While competitive, 
It was clear from the clash that Naruto was inferior in terms of raw strength as he felt his bones shudder under the force of the clash. Naruto being the quicker of the two recovered from the clash, jumped up and kicked Kisame in the face giving himself more space. Hand seals were flashed through as Naruto prepped his next jutsu, Kisame who was getting ready to re-engage he felt the air know the very world around him, start to shift. As the very world was pulled in on itself to overcome the lack of space created with the use of blue, Kisame was able to reduce the effects enough to get out of the way thanks to Samahata absorbing the power but not without taking damage. Naruto noticed that Kisame's only injury, a fractured leg, was being healed almost instantly thanks to his sword's stored chakra. The crude method of medical jutsu was still efficient enough to heal him in a matter of seconds. I see, I believe I understand how that sword works now. Naruto thought as his stance relaxed slightly. He's perfect. He thought with a smile that Kisame was unnerved by, as it wasn't malicious but thankful. The hell is with that smile, boy. You're creeping me out, Kisame said with a shark-like grin. He rested his massive sword on his shoulder. I'll admit your jutsu are strong, but they don't mean anything if Samahata eats all the power before it hits me. Naruto took a deep breath and held up a single-handed ram seal. Don't worry, I'm gonna start hitting you now shark face, Naruto said as the chakra around him changed. Kisame blasted off the ground, cratering the earth beneath him swinging his legendary chakra-eating sword at Naruto's face with murderous intent. Naruto raised his right arm to block the blow with his six eyes blazing. Kisami's eyes narrowed as the boy looked to block his sword with one arm, in a clash of strength he had already proven he was superior, and any chakra enhancement would die once he was close enough. As Samahata neared, Naruto planted his feet and took the hit, or rather it looked and felt as if he did to Kisame. The instant the sword got within an inch of Naruto it was completely stopped. Kisame glared, as if his sword was being stopped by the strongest shield in the world, but he could feel the chakra blocking him start to weaken. An instant later his sword made contact with Naruto's arm shredding the sleeve and gouging out a chunk of skin spraying blood into the air and onto the ground. Naruto shot forward and went on the offensive, not even acknowledging the damage. He punched forward, though his fist was blocked by Samahata. Kisame felt the same kind of resistance before but the force from Naruto was managing to push him back. Until the chakra shield was weakened, and Kisame pushed back taking more skin from Naruto and sending blood into the air. Kisame went to attack with a textbook two-handed swing downward that Naruto took with a X-shaped block. Like before the same shield took the hit, Naruto pushed the attack away to the side but at the end of the parry more skin and blood was taken from the blonde's arms. This back and forth continued for several exchanges till Naruto's arms, legs and chest were all leaking a large amount of blood. Through it all Kisame was becoming more and more confused, for instead of becoming nervous and scarred, Naruto was becoming happier and happier with each exchange. He suspected that the blonde was trying to suppress his nerves and appear strong in the face of certain defeat. Till the grin of supreme confidence was back on Naruto's face. Kisame watched as Naruto, Streams of blood trailing behind him as he rushed forward, neared him with a fist held at the ready. Kisame knew what to do, he'd done it dozens of times, he readied his sword and swung towards the blonde's midsection. Just like the other exchanges the sword was stopped by the same invisible shield, however unlike last time there wasn't that split moment of the chakra being drained allowing Kisame to damage the blonde. This time Naruto pushed forward, not even acknowledging the sword and slammed a punch to Kisame's chest. Unlike previous punches from Naruto, whose power was based purely on physical enhancement from chakra enhancement, body. This time he had all of that force, behind the invincible jutsu infinity. Kisami's entire chest was cracked and broken from the hit, and he was blasted out of the small blood soaked clearing into and through several trees. Kisami's samahata absorbs chakra but there is a limit on speed. I tested it with all my techniques, all of which have different areas of effect, speed, power and chakra types. Thanks to my eyes I was able to figure out that he was the perfect training dummy for infinity. Speed is irrelevant for my jutsu if it's done right, after all it's literally time chakra. Clashing with Kisame gave me the perfect training to perfect my use of time chakra and control of infinity. Naruto thought with a grin as he wiped some blood from his face. He then moved to address his wounds. 
Steam began to rise from his body as he crudely healed all the wounds inflicted by Kisame. It was a partial mix of Tsunade and Kisame's methods of healing, however he did it in a bit of a different way. Unlike most medics whose top-level control allowed them to harness Yin Chakra to heal, Naruto could go a step further. He combined Yin Chakra and pure positive Chakra together. Crude and inefficient at the moment since he was new to this, but it was healing him far more completely than he'd ever seen since it was nearly twice as powerful as normal healing thanks to the positive chakra enhancing the yin chakra. With time he bet he could do this perfectly and in mere moments, for now this was enough. I can use infinity now, I can cover my body completely. Naruto thought with a satisfied smile, it takes a lot of focus to maintain but this is a massive step forward small torso-sized shield to my entire body. Naruto grinned as he looked to the west, the direction he sent the shark flying away. He felt a rumbling and sensed a metric ton of chakra being built up. Trees and stones were blasted into the air as something approached, destroying everything in its path. The air became humid, and trees were torn from the earth with thunderous rumbling. A massive blue shark of water blasted through the trees into the clearing at blinding speed. Instead of running or blocking all Naruto did was hold his hand up in a single ram seal. A massive trench was ground into the earth in front and behind Naruto as the water shark impacted and blasted past him. The attack continued from one end of the clearing, through where it hit him and to the other end smashing and uprooting trees on the other end. After a few seconds the water stopped, the mist started to clear, and the ground was completely soaked. Kisame walked into the clearing with a serious frown on his face as he took in Naruto's completely unscathed appearance. That strange shield of chakra, how did I not break through it? Kisame couldn't help but ask as he walked closer. If Samahata could shave through it then it shouldn't have held up. Naruto laughed, no, you've got it all wrong. My jutsu was being drained and weakened not broken. I wasn't able to properly form it how it was supposed to be and needed practice getting it right. He explained while gesturing to the sword. Kisame instantly understood, you're a crazy kid, I'll give you that. He said with a savage grin, using my blade Samahata to train a jutsu as a first, you even managed to heal all those wonderful reminders. Yep, I don't want to get more blood on my clothes, you know. Naruto replied while looking down at the remains of his hoodie and shirt, covered in holes and blood, he didn't look too great despite all the wounds having been healed. I'll say this now, I can't lose to you. I've figured out how to perfectly hold my jutsu under your blade's assault and with that have become capable of fully utilizing it. Kisame flashed through seals, we'll see about that. He shouted and manipulated all the water in the air and on the ground into a massive swirling vortex dozens of meters tall. Naruto stood in the epicenter of the incoming attack and watched it form with a bored expression. The vortex of water then tightened and collapsed in on top of Naruto. The sheer weight of the water would pulverize stone, much less the highly pressurized nature of the attack. The earth shuddered under the weight of the jutsu but instead of dispersing the water, that was covering Naruto in a swirling violent bubble, Kisame spawned dozens of sharks that rushed to eat the submerged blonde. Like before all of the attacks that came within a few inches of Naruto were halted in place, never reaching him. While the jutsu weren't affecting him, Naruto was actually getting a bit worried about the lack of air. With a ram seal Naruto pushed the effective range of infinity from a few inches off him to its current maximum diameter of 1 meter giving him a bubble of breathing room. Maintaining infinity with at this range is very tough, something to work on if I have to protect someone else. Mused Naruto as he held firm under Kisami's never-ending assault of water sharks and now water drills. After a few moments the attacks were slowing down, and Naruto felt it was time to get back to it. A single seal and he warped out of the death bubble and was right behind a huffing Kisame. The shark man had no chance to dodge a spinning kick to his head that sent him tumbling away. Unlike before where Naruto let him recover and return to the fight, he continued his assault shooting forward and landing atop Kisame with a double leg drop cratering the ground getting a silent scream of agony from him. Kisame didn't let it stop him for long, throwing himself to the side and rapidly getting to his feet with his sword out in front to protect him. He looked to where Naruto was a moment ago and frowned, the blonde was gone. You're not super fast, Kisame flinched at Naruto's words coming from directly behind him, the boy was standing back to back with him without a care in the world. In fact, I would say that is your biggest weakness. Here, 
Let me elaborate. Kisame couldn't move in time as felt his kidneys get blasted by a viscous punch. While he was sent flying it was a kick to the chest, a kick to the back, five punches to his face and upper chest, a spinning kick to his chin, a double hammer arm to the top of his head. Blood flew into the air as Naruto mercilessly beat Kisame at his absolute top speed. Samahata was long since thrown away by Naruto who continued his barrage while Kisame could only block and defend. He's faster than before, Kisame thought as his skull rattled under a kick, I can say he may even be stronger but it's more than that. It's like the difference in a metal gauntlet and a large fist, even if thrown by someone weaker the metal would hurt more. Whatever his jutsu protecting him is, it's making his attacks far more dangerous and solid. Naruto punched Kisame causing him to spin but reached out to grab his arm to hold him in place then followed up with a ruthless barrage of palms to the shark's stomach, each getting blood to vomit from Kisame's mouth. Not done there Naruto let the last hit propel Kisame into the air while he pointed his pointer and middle finger at him forming a swirling ball of bright red chakra. Chakra Enhancement Jutsu Red He said as the airborne Kisame was fully hit by the jutsu sending him flying away. The forest in the direction he fired his jutsu was completely ruined, no trees, stones, boulders, or loose earth were left in its wake as the shockwave tore the very world asunder. Naruto watched the outcome of his attack with a smile before blinking, wait did I send him back to the field with Jiraiya and the others? He said to himself with a blink, uh oh, he said before warping in that direction. Naruto arrived back in the clearing to see Jiraiya and two shoulder-riding toads deadlocked against Orochimaru and Itachi. Orochimaru was blocking ranged water jutsu from the toads while Itachi was defending and attacking Jiraiya with a massive chakra avatar surrounding him. Naruto's eyes told him it was some innate jutsu related to the Sharingan that he wouldn't be able to mimic. A rumble was heard getting the attention of the others as Kisame was blasted into the clearing through the trees, landing in a heap at the edge. Ha, huh, I beat him here, that's hilarious, thought Naruto with a snicker. It was then that everyone noticed his return as well. Hey, Naruto greeted with a smile. Boy, get out of here it's too dangerous for a youngin like you. Shouted the female toad on Jiraiya's shoulder. Now, now ma, he's clearly Jiraiya boy's student. He must know what's going on. The male toad responded, right Jiraiya boy. Naruto jumped in, yeah I'm fine these weaklings aren't a problem for me. Jiraiya sighed and jumped closer to the blonde. As he landed his enhanced sensory abilities from his sage jutsu allowed him to feel the chakra around Naruto at a heightened level. You've mastered it, Jiraiya muttered in awe. Naruto waved him off, I wouldn't say that, but I'm loads better than I was before. Kisame was actually perfect for training. Only you, Jiraiya said with a shake of his head, well in that case, let's finish up here. He declared with a grin that was mirrored on Naruto's face. Gladly, the battlefield quieted down. The return of the monster of the hidden mist, Kisame Hoshigaki and the rising star and wild card, Naruto Uzumaki shook things up. So all parties involved decided to regroup and figure out how to proceed. On the side of the Akatsuki, Itachi Uchiha exhaled as he released his chakra avatar and turned to his slowly rising partner. Even without his Sharingan he would have been able to see the wounds covering his body. Itachi was certain that the factor that would decide this battle wasn't Jiraiya and his devastating sage jutsu, or the two sages atop his shoulders assisting him. No, it would in fact lay with Naruto's capabilities and whatever happened between himself and Kisame. Whatever occurred in their battle resulted in one of the most dangerous men in the world being laid out and Naruto looking fine. It would take a couple of minutes for Kisami's sword to get him back to his feet. Orochimaru wasn't in top shape, the injuries from his battle with the third Hokage has strained his coils to the point that most of his jutsu arsenal was out of reach. He would remain a chaotic factor for the leaf ninja, sliding in and out with devastating poisons and his blade, but he wasn't going to be a large factor in the head-to-head -head fighting. As of now his own chakra reserves were holding up. He would need to be careful on how much he used the Mangeku Sharingan, he didn't need to go blind too early less long laid plans go up in flames. Orochimaru, Itachi turned to his consternated comrade who was glaring at the young blonde, listen closely. Across the battlefield Naruto and Jiraiya were catching their breath. Naruto spoke lowly, right now I have it, but it takes enough focus that I need to constantly maintain it. Which means, 
Jiraiya nodded, you can't use other jutsu. He said with a hum, still, they shouldn't have a way to get through it, so I'll support you as you blitz them. Have what down? Asked the male toad calmly. The female was more irate, why is a youngin in a battle like this Jiraiya? These are the boogeymen of the ninja world. Not something a child should be involved in. Naruto would be offended if he couldn't tell the much of her anger was based on worry. Jiraiya groaned, I don't have time to explain Ma, but Naruto is more than capable of holding his own. He fought Kisame himself earlier. He explained trying to placate her. Ma's tongue shot out and whacked in him on the head, he did what? She shouted. Now, now Ma no need to be angry at Jiraiya boy. We should trust his judgment. Thanks Pa, Jiraiya said with a smile. Naruto turned to them, done. He asked with a raised eyebrow, because I don't think they plan on letting you three work this out. He said while gesturing to a now refreshed Kisame with Samahata attached to his back and a furious expression on his face as he built up a truly titanic amount of chakra. We can't let him go unchecked, shouted Naruto as he blasted forward, Jiraiya moving to follow. Where is the old lady? He asked, suddenly realizing that she wasn't even in the clearing. Shizun got her away, she has two toads guarding her if there are any more sound ninja in the area. Answered Jiraiya while looking towards the direction where Shizun went. Got it, Orochimaru's sword extended right in front of Naruto moving to stab him right through the chest. Naruto let it hit infinity and pushed past it without skipping a beat. As he neared the snake, whose sword was already back to normal, he was accosted by both Itachi and Kisame on either side. Samahata was trying its darndest to saw through infinity while Itachi was stabbing it with a kunai while his piercing Sharingan took in everything about his jutsu it was able to see. Naruto ignored Kisame, who was then slammed into by Jiraiya and went to punch Itachi. He was vaguely aware of Orochimaru moving to assist Kisame. As Naruto's fist moved towards Itachi, he took in the opponent he felt was the deadliest on the enemy side. The genius of the Uchiha clan's taijutsu was once described to be as majestic as a river. His movements so fluid and perfect that he was untouchable by any that weren't the very best of Jonin. Naruto's fist was parried at the wrist and redirected to the side, his other hand was back fisted towards Naruto's jaw the instant his attack was mitigated. However, as the attack was about to connect it was stopped in place. Odd, thought Naruto with a grimace. Not even stopping to acknowledge it Itachi pulled back made a single hand sign then went to attack again, his fist covered in swirling chakra. Naruto's eyes noticed that the chakra swirling over his fist was fire in nature. Like before Itachi's attack was halted by infinity while Naruto moved to attack. Itachi weaved around Naruto's punch and the follow-up kick, eyes glowing an eerie red. His arms blurred and from them a dozen shuriken flew through the air towards Naruto who sighed and let the shuriken impact his barrier. The instant the shuriken touched his infinity he was blasted in the back by a double drop kick from Itachi, the force of it not getting through infinity but Naruto's eyes widened at losing sight of Itachi and feeling the hit through his barrier. I think, Naruto wondered as Itachi sped back away from him as he moved to re-engage. Itachi may in fact be faster than me, he is certainly slippery. I'll have to be smart, my eyes won't lose him again. Itachi flashed through hand signs and in an instant released a roaring fire dragon that superheated the air around them so much that steam rose into the air from the small droplets left over from Kisami's jutsus. The massive fire dragon crossed the half dozen meters between them, lighting and turning the grass beneath it to ash instantly. Naruto could tell that even a glancing blow from this jutsu would kill a normal ninja. He raised a single hand sign and let the fire dragon impact his infinity with a frown. As expected, the jutsu was halted in place and the parts of the jutsu that were too large and didn't come into contact with his infinity blew right past him igniting the rest of the area on fire. Naruto closed his eyes and with a grimace weaved the three hand signs to warp to the other side of the clearing to get away from the epicenter of the jutsu. As soon as he landed from the warp, he was stabbed through the chest from behind the Orochimaru. Naruto coughed a glob of blood and turned to glare at the now smirking snake. So it was a clone chasing Jiraiya, it did look odd to me, that nature chakra is strange. Commented Naruto while glaring down at the sword emerging from his chest. Luckily, he wasn't hit anywhere vital, likely the goal was to be hit by the sword for the paralytic poison rather than to kill him. 
Itachi moved towards them slowly, eyes still glowing as he dissected Naruto. Now Naruto, I believe I'll be taking those eyes. Orochimaru hissed with a gleeful look on his face. Tell me, how does it feel to lose so spectacularly after feeling so confident? Naruto grinned with a trail of blood falling from his mouth. Oh I'll be alright, I think I understand what Itachi was going for. This will be the last battle it works. Naruto explained with a grin that didn't hide the fury in his eyes as he stared directly at Itachi. So you've realized your weakness? Itachi asked rhetorically, I will admit I was wary of this strange barrier around you. But I believe I have two ways to overcome it. No jutsu is perfect, everything has a weakness, Naruto. The blonde merely rolled his eyes at Itachi then looked over his shoulder to Orochimaru, thanks for the breather, I'm ready to get going again. He said with an easy going smile. The snake glared, what do you? Itachi's mind and eyes worked in a flash and moved to rush forward with a frown. However Naruto was too fast, with his neck muscles straining and his teeth clenched Naruto closed both his fists and then quickly swiped them outward with his hands open. To the naked eye, no visible chakra was seen to explain what was happening. To Itachi, who with the Sharingan was able to see chakra, he was able to glimpse at the jutsu Naruto used and felt the hairs on his neck stand up. In the next instant both Orochimaru and Itachi were sent flying in opposite directions as if they were being yanked by the strongest magnet in the world. Both were sent tumbling towards the edges of the clearing, while Naruto moved to heal himself, he was unable to remove the poison completely, but he wasn't in any danger of locking up anymore. Naruto looked down at his hands with a relived smile, that was a gamble made on assumptions and theories in the heat of the moment. His math was done too quickly to be perfect, and he had never really done that before, but it was technically easier than his normal application of that jutsu. Blue is a strange jutsu. The deadliest application is through hyper-condensing negative chakra in a single point of space to create a negative space zone that reality will immediately rush to fill thereby causing a condensing collapse of space like a miniaturized black hole. However at its base level it is influencing space through vectors. With my warp jutsu, I can remove the space between two things, myself and another point in space. Something so difficult it takes me hand signs to do. At an easier level of this jutsu, I can move things through space by using the initial target as point 1 and removing the distance between another point or myself as point 2. Naruto grinned at the slowly rising Uchiha and Snake, I can essentially move them through space, not really offensive unless I smash them into something. But it is really disorientating. The six eyes flared menacingly, Naruto pointed his open hand towards Itachi then pulled it back and clenched his fist. Pulling Itachi off his feet back to him at high speeds. Itachi pulled up his guard and absorbed Naruto's downward fist that distorted the air around them. The Uchiha grimaced and Naruto grinned ferally feeling the cracking of bones. Orochimaru made himself known once again and his sword was stopped by a now reactivated infinity. And was then punched into the ground causing Orochimaru to immediately vomit a new body that was coughing blood. Naruto went to stomp his skull in but noticed Itachi returning with bright flaming orange chakra swirling around him and jumped away. Something is off about that chakra, it's the same as that avatar from before, Naruto thought warily. Naruto moved his arm to stop the incoming attack from Itachi with a frown, the instant Itachi's fist came into contact with infinity there was a moment before his fist broke through impacting against Naruto's forearm block. The chakra of the Yada mirror, my second method Naruto. Itachi said with his Mangeku Sharingan blazing red. Naruto pointed a palm at Itachi blasting him off his feet. I see, earlier he managed to take advantage of my inexperience with infinity and attack right after I blocked something and was focusing on that while the opposite side was subconsciously weakened, now this Yada mirror chakra, something from that avatar he can coat his hands in. It seems to somehow possess the amazing ability to nullify any type of chakra that it comes into contact with. Naruto felt a bead of sweat fall down his forehead before he smirked. But like me with infinity, he can use that chakra or his regular jutsu not both and unlike infinity his is much more obvious when he's using it. Naruto got into a stance and dissected Itachi with his six eyes. Itachi on the other end of the clearing with was taking slow breaths while reigniting the orange chakra of the Yada mirror. Neither of them acknowledging Orochimaru slithering away. 
Jiraiya stomped on the ground and made a snake hand sign causing a large wall of solid stone to rise from the earth to block the tidal wave of water. He jumped to the top of the wall to see Kisame blasting across the water, sword in hand with a menacing smile. He's relentless, shouted Ma in disbelief, Jiraiya just got done pounding him into the ground. Jiraiya weaved two hand signs and the ground beneath the water exploded with so much force all the water was blasted into the air and over the forest creating a mock downpour for a few moments. Not breaking a sweat, Jiraiya weaved four more and extended both palms towards a falling kisame, from his hands two bright blue bolts of lightning cut through the air towards the shark. Kisame managed to slap one with Samahata but took the other causing him to scream in pain. Samahata was working overtime to convert the chakra into healing energy but the chakra being used by Jiraiya was slowing the sword down. Right as he reoriented himself from the shock Kisame looked up to see a massive Rasengan coming down on him. It took every ounce of willpower and strength to jump and speed out of range. Even then the explosion of force from the jutsu hitting the ground took him off his feet sending him flying into a tree uprooting it. Jiraiya noticed Kisame was sent into the forest and sighed his blade is very slow to convert sage chakra into usable energy to heal him. Ha rubbed his goatee, I'm shocked he can do that much. Suppose whoever made that sword really knew their way around sealing jutsu and chakra mechanics. We need to go back up Naruto. He's fighting those two on his own, can't you sense it? Shouted Ma worriedly. Orochimaru isn't in top condition, so he's more of an annoyance right now. Itachi and Kisame are the problems. Jiraiya said seriously, Ma, Ha, can you send Tsunade? She must be out of range for me. Ha hummed, you need to come finish your training Jiraiya boy. She's 400 meters east, with Shizun girl and those troublesome twins. Good, I was worried about leaving them on their own. Three massive water drills blasted into the air cutting through the distance towards Jiraiya. He didn't recognize the exact jutsu being used but the pressure and density would rend metal effortlessly, needless to say he should probably do something about those. Jiraiya of the Sanim, the sage from the mountains, the wandering toad, the super pervert from the leaf. Many names, many legends, strangely it was rarely his power jutsu that got him his accolades. The battle of the Sanin versus Hanzo of the Salamanders was where he and his teammates attained their titles and shortly after was dubbed S class by the world. But it was on his battles won, never on some unwinnable jutsu. He wasn't Minato with two perfect jutsu making him fearless across the world, or the third who knew practically everything. No, Jiraiya of the Sanin's power came from his experience in battle and his lack of care in being flashy, despite his personality, when it was time to work he was focused and got the job done. As the three water drills descended onto Jiraiya he waited to the last moment before rocketing off the rock wall he was standing on and closing distance to Kisame who was already focusing chakra for the next jutsu. The two toads shot bullets of water and wind at the drills to dissipate them while Jiraiya focused on the shark. Kisame slapped the water he and Jiraiya were standing on and hundreds of sharks were created from the depths and rushed to shred the three toad sages. Three hand signs, a flare of chakra Kisame noticed it was the strange thick chakra that Samahata was having trouble filtering beneath nearly 10 meters of dense water the earth erupted in a massive explosion. Sage art. Land devastation, thought Jiraiya. Not a jutsu he typically used, but Kisame wasn't an opponent that was going to be taken down subtly. The water was blasted into east and west creating a thick mist in the air in the entire clearing. The earth-rattling explosion was muted beneath the large pool of water but everyone in attendance felt their bones shake from the force. The ground beneath them was a massive, jagged crater that looked as if a hundred paper bombs detonated at once. Both Kisame and Jiraiya found themselves falling nearly twenty meters, however only one of them was caught unawares. Jiraiya held a single tiger hand sign and blasted a large flame bullet at Kisame who screamed in pain until he crashed onto the ground. Samahata a few feet away was wiggling to reconnect to its master to begin healing him. Another four hand signs and a ring of light shone from the ground around Kisame before exploding in a small bubble of fire. He won't be out from that, but he won't get up too soon. The aftereffects of the earth and water will hit Naruto's battlefield for sure, hopefully Shizune and Tsunade were far away enough. Right at Jiraiya was about to move to finish off Kisame he felt at the very edge of his sage senses a malevolent presence rapidly approaching Tsunade and Shizune. 
It only took him a moment to deduce that it was Orochimaru, his chakra was twisted and warped but he could still recognize him. We have to go, muttered Jiraiya getting strange looks from the toads before they stretched their senses and nodded. Before rushing away Jiraiya slapped the ground during the ruined earth into a hyper-dense bog that was slowly working to swallow Kisame. If anything it would slow him down even more. Jiraiya sped through the forests, each step destroying the branches beneath his feet as he moved to gain more and more speed. Hurry Jiraiya boy, he's been on them for over two minutes. Shouted Pa with a worried expression. Jiraiya's face soured and he felt he was about to be on them as he smashed through a tree with a powerful punch and landed upon the three ninjas, his eyes widening in horror. Orochimaru was standing over a grimacing Tsunade who had his blade through her gut. Shizune, clearly in distress was working to heal Orochimaru with the weasel Kabuto assisting with his smug grin. He felt a twisted satisfaction at seeing the dried blood on Kabuto's face and shirt from where Naruto smashed him. Ah Jiraiya right on time. Orochimaru said with his nasty smirk. Young Shizun has learned so very much from Tsunade. I was under the impression only Tsunade would be able to heal me but alas the student was enough, marvelous isn't it? He wiggled his sword getting a groan from Tsunade, don't get too close, they're doing a delicate procedure and I wouldn't want to hurt our dear teammate anymore. Jiraiya glared, let me guess, this was the plan from the start. Kisame and Itachi to stretch Naruto and I thin, your lackey and his soldiers to spread us out. All to get to Tsunade when we were busy with the other two. So there is a brain in there, very good. Orochimaru said with a chuckle, yes that was my plan, Itachi and Kisame are here to confirm my intel on Naruto. My colleagues are going to need a lot of intel to retrieve the nine tails from him after all. You really went crawling back to the Akatsuki? Jiraiya asked with no small amount of surprise. Orochimaru nodded, indeed. I am unfortunately not enough to deal with all my enemies on my own. Something I learned in my invasion. I was set to deal with Sensei, as strong as he turned out to still be, till Naruto decided to ruin things. Not to mention the goals of the Akatsuki and their leader are truly fascinating. Any chance you'd tell your former teammate what those are? Jiraiya asked with a flat expression. Orochimaru chuckled, why would I do that? Jiraiya shrugged with a smile, worth a shot. Right as he said that a spear of earth shot from the ground separating Orochimaru from Tsunade and Shizune and Blitz to cross the distance and stand between them. Kabuto stood at the side of Orochimaru and scanned his body, while not a full recovery you are far better off. We can certainly treat you from here without them. Good, then let us deal with Jiraiya, Orochimaru said with killing intent rolling off him. Jiraiya took a deep breath, I'm going to need you here, Tsunade. You're more than capable of healing from that wound and helping me out here. It won't be long before Kisame joins us, and I can't deal with both of them and protect you. He said lowly. Right on cue Kisame blasts into the clearing shredding through a tree with Samahata. You're going to die you old wart. He shouted, his chakra was visible as it covered his body in a blue aura and weighed down on everyone in the clearing with its sheer size. Jiraiya was able to finally confirm that Kisame truly was a tailless tailed beast. Jiraiya boy, we should retreat if Tsunade girl can't fight, said Pa seriously. Right as things were going to get bad for Jiraiya a massive orange chakra avatar was blasted through the tree line, shaking the earth under the force and weight. Itachi in the center of the avatar coughed roughly as he stood to his feet. A blood-soaked Naruto stood atop a tree breathing heavily as he stared down at Itachi and took in the scene around him. Naruto sped over to Jiraiya, Itachi is a handful, he's got ways around infinity. As he spoke Naruto began to slowly heal himself, Itachi was receiving aid from Kabuto on the other side as well. What? Jiraiya asked incredulously, he has a jutsu unique to his Mangeku Sharingan that seals the chakra of infinity to let him hit me. Naruto said with a petulant frown. Jiraiya shook his head, well no jutsu is perfect. I'm aware, shouted Naruto, the steam from his injuries tapered off as he finished healing. Jiraiya eyeballed the now closed wounds with a critical eye. Are you healing yourself? Shizun gaped at Naruto, having been silently gathering herself after Orochimaru's sudden appearance then Jiraiya then the rest of them. Naruto showing up covered in wounds then healing himself somehow wasn't that surprising anymore. Unseen was the twitch of Tsunade's fingers. Naruto nodded, yeah, 
See I was watching Tsunade heal herself that night, then Kisame and Samahata's healing method. I decided to copy them and add my own flair. Tsunade's twitch became stronger. I heal with Yin Chakra which has been enhanced by Positive Natured Chakra. It's like super healing. Naruto shouted with a massive grin on his face. Idiot. A small voice muttered getting the three ninjas' attention. Naruto turned to a now awake and deadpan Tsunade who was looking at him like he was an enormous moron. His face turned comically disgusted. Huh, I can't hear you down there. Naruto shouted. Tsunade's eyebrow twitched as she sat upright to glare at Naruto's face. You're an idiot for using that combination of chakra to heal yourself. Tsunade explained haughtily. If you think you're the only one to look into positive natured chakra you're a fool. If you keep doing it, then you're going to fry your chakra coils and possibly your brain. Why should I trust the word of a weak defenseless old woman that needs us to protect her? Naruto asked with a laugh as he smirked down at her. Jiraiya next to them was watching with a hopeful and amused expression while both Toads and Shizune gaped at the exchange. Tsunade's temper. Something that in her fifties she usually had a good lid on, except it would seem when concerning Naruto. In her anger at the young blonde's lack of respect she shot to her feet and headbutted him causing him to sway back. So shocked at what happened he didn't even raise infinity. Naruto blinked a few times as Tsunade glared down at him. I know more about healing and the human body than anyone alive, especially not some up-jumped twerp who won the genetic lottery. Laughing to himself he got to his feet and smiled at her, I like the energy but let's focus on them huh? Naruto said as he pointed to the three Akatsuki members that were moving to attack. Kisame roared and blasted a massive tidal wave in their direction. Shizune's small gasp was ignored as Naruto and Jiraiya tilted their heads to figure out the best course to deal with the incoming attack. The massive wave of water loomed over them, easily 15 meters tall. The force and size of the jutsu would easily be considered A rank. Naruto smiled in amusement, it would seem that while being fellow seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, Kisame was leagues beyond Zabuza. Oh give me a break, shouted Tsunade as she shot forward, her arms were glowing with flaming green chakra. As the massive tidal wave started to crest over them casting an ominous shadow over the ground of leaf ninja. Tsunade arrived at the base of the tidal wave, reared back and sent forth the devastating punch. Naruto's six eyes glowed as his face split into a massive grin before laughing wildly. Jiraiya rubbed his head with a chuckle. Shizune's eyes were awed by the display of her master, the two toad sages gaped at her monstrous strength. The massive tidal wave, that would wipe out a village under the force of its size and volume, was obliterated by a single punch, first a massive hole through the point of contact. Then the shockwave from the punch blasted the rest of the water away. Orochimaru's form emerged from the mist, his sword missing as he weaved through hand signs. From around him a hurricane-force gale windstorm erupted into life shredding through ground and closing distance in a blink. Naruto snorted at the attack, he quickly grabbed Shizune and Jiraiya and landed next to Tsunade before flexing Infinity's shell into a dome around the four of them plus two toads. What in the muttered Shizun as they were completely safe from Orochimaru's jutsu while the entire clearing was torn to shreds. It was barely a blur of motion that the six eyes caught of Itachi appearing in front of the barrier of infinity. Right as the orange chakra was to impact his perfect shield, he released the jutsu and met Itachi's attack with a glowing fist of his own. Their mutual impact sent a small shockwave through the immediate area. Jiraiya slapped the ground causing dozens of stone spikes to rise from the ground targeting Orochimaru, Itachi, Kisame and Kabuto. All four of them were forced to jump away rapidly to avoid being impaled repeatedly. I'll take Itachi, Naruto said with a smile. Tsunade and Shizune whipped their head towards him in alarm, oh don't give me that, none of you can deal with the genjutsu he can cast. Take care of the old bat and Shizune. Naruto shouted to Jiraiya getting an uneasy laugh from him as the two women glared at him. Three hand signs and he warped away to where Itachi was recentering himself from the onslaught of Earth's spears. Itachi lowered himself and reactivated his Mangeku Sharingan. Naruto smiled and mimicked his stance. Two ninja hailing from the same village. Coming from prestigious great clans. Wielding ocular jutsu of immense power. Hailed as geniuses with untold potential. Neither since coming into their own, had truly been pushed. Now as Sharingan and Six Eyes stared at each other for a moment, 
then both let out a grin. Naruto shot forward and Itachi matched, they met in a flurry of punches and kicks. They had found a rival. Itachi jumped up a shadow clone emerging from behind him both weaving hand signs at dizzying speeds. Naruto's eyes deciphered that it was a combo of wind and fire coming. Two streams of the respective element shot from Itachi and his clone's mouth, the streams swirled and combined into a white-hot beam of fire that superheated the environment. Naruto activated infinity and let the attack dissipate with a sigh. Itachi blurred behind him at the exact opposite end of where the jutsu impacted and went to stab it with a kunai. Naruto knew, unfortunately from experience, that the kunai would be able to break through. Right as the kunai touched the barrier, he released it and spun around with a Rasengan in hand. Itachi couldn't avoid the spiraling sphere and the swirling blue chakra attack smashed into his chest. Naruto smirked and jumped straight into the air as the Rasengan destroyed the clone and the real Itachi smashed into the ground where he was standing. Itachi was forced to block a punch and parry a kick, then counter-punched Naruto who swayed around the hit. Naruto jumped back while flicking his hand towards Itachi who encased himself in his chakra avatar to take the hit from blue. As soon as the avatar appeared Naruto smirked and concentrated on forming a dense red. Itachi had his Suzano raised his second sacred treasure Tatsuka blade and swiped it down towards Naruto. Naruto's forehead dripped with sweat as he charged a fist-sized red and shot it towards the avatar hoping that like last time it would be enough. The shockwave from the jutsu impacted against the ethereal blade dissipating it and smashing into the chest of the avatar. Itachi roared and increased the armor of his guardian and held his ground. As the shockwave hit the Suzano Naruto moved to get to its flank and create a truly massive Rasengan. Easily double the size of Naruto himself and smash it into the unprotected and unfocused side of the massive orange chakra avatar. Unlike red that was like a straight line of pure force the impact of a Rasengan was like a bomb and a drill combined together. One of this size detonating was enough for the entire side of the Suzano to crack and shatter open while everything in over a hundred meters was blasted away and the ground tremored under them. Itachi's eyes bled from the effort as he spun to Naruto who managed to break into his perfect invincible defense. Something that should be impossible. Naruto didn't stop by breaking in him pulled Itachi towards him with a gesture then smashed him in the fast with a devastating left. Itachi's brain rattled as he suffered from the attack. Then, rivals don't just push someone to get stronger. Rivals can also be inspiration. Itachi mind cleared and the concussion left him in a second as he grabbed Naruto, spun him and threw him away. Steam rose from his body and his glassy eyes resharpened. Having seen it several times, is it any question that the genius Itachi? Naruto wiped blood from his mouth and grinned, you bastard, you copied my healing. He said with a laugh. Renewed the two shot back at one another Naruto flicked his finger and Itachi was forced to jump from where a sinister spiraling sphere impacted the ground. Naruto jumped to meet him and punched him right in the kidney, Itachi responded by grabbing the fist and slamming a knee into Naruto's face sending them both plummeting to the ground. Unlike Naruto who preferred fighting alone, Tsunade, Jiraiya and Shizune stayed in the clearing together. Sharky is mine, Jiraiya said before stomping on the ground causing dozens of stone fists to fly at Kisame who gleefully smashed them one by one with his sword. Orochimaru regurgitate his sword and moved to kill Tsunade. Said woman just looked at him blankly. The swipe of the poison blade was ducked under then grabbed by her, she didn't even flinch at the poison or the blood as she pulled Orochimaru closer. With immense reluctance Orochimaru let go of his prized sword. Tsunade chucked then with all her power through the sword towards the horizon. She then kicked off the ground to close distance with the snake. Orochimaru hissed as he moved to meet her in hand to hand. While Orochimaru has been an active combatant while Tsunade was retired, Orochimaru slithered around Tsunade's opening combo and moved to counter with a knife hand to her throat. Tsunade grabbed his wrist then hammed fisted him into the earth causing the ground the shake from the force. Tsunade was regarded as a goddess of the fist and time had not dulled her edge. Orochimaru coughed blood as he was smashed by three punches. She kneed him in the gut then kicked him away. The snake instantly regurgitated himself to heal some of his shattered bones. He was running low on snake shells to heal himself so he would need to let the others know it was a mission accomplished. Turning to the side, he noticed that Kisame was Sans sword and just took a Rasengan to the stomach. 
Right as he was about to get moving Tsunade came falling from the sky with a raised leg for one of her signature attacks. Orochimaru knew what was coming and moved as fast as he possibly could. He shot a snake out that he used like a rope to pull himself out of the way of the epicenter, but he was still sent tumbling away. He didn't give himself a second to recover and shot up to attack his former teammate, for going hand to hand he shot a dozen snakes towards her. Not even pausing to watch the fallout he weaved through a half dozen hand signs and chopped the air in a downward motion. Tsunade just finished killing the last snake when her senses screamed to move, she managed to avoid her head being hit but a blade of wing shredded through her shoulder severing her right arm. Without a scream of pain she held a hand sign and released the seal on her forehead causing a swirling line of black chakra to cover her forehead and body. She reattached her arm and all her injuries were healed in an instant. Time for you to die, Orochimaru. We've borne your disgrace long enough. She declared as her body glowed with chakra, and she shot forward to finish the traitorous snake once and for all. As her fist blasted through his chest his body turned into mud. She looked around the clearing and noticed that Orochimaru was harassing Jiraiya enough that Kisame was able to heal enough to run away. In her expert opinion Kisame was going to need weeks of rehabilitation even with a skilled medic helping him. Jiraiya groaned as he smashed yet another mud clone revealing that the real Orochimaru was gone, how'd they get away? He asked with a shake of his head, both the toad sages dismissed themselves when the fighting was finished. Tsunade walked up to him with a tired sigh, Orochimaru has always been a slippery one. I'll be sure to send the Alpha Squad after him when I'm in office. Jiraiya turned to her with a curious expression. So you're coming back? He asked as they walked over to where Shizun was taking shelter. I feel like I have no other choice. She said with a snort, you're hopeless without me and the brat is going to kill himself using complex chakra mechanics on his body, on top of being a little disrespectful brat. Jiraiya let out a full belly laugh. That's Naruto all right. Tsunade glared at him. Don't laugh. There's a strong possibility that he causes a war with that attitude. We need to have a firm hand with him. She argued, while Jiraiya raised his arms in surrender. Shizun moved to Tsunade's side with a relieved smile. She looked at the two of them for a moment before frowning, where is Naruto? Naruto's face rippled from the force of Itachi's orange chakra cladded fist. He responded with a kick to Itachi's knee that destabilized his stance allowing for Naruto grab Itachi's arm then spin throw him away. Itachi sent a massive fire ball at him without a single hand sign. Naruto pointed a palm at the incoming jutsu then a spark of blue chakra sparked across his hand, the force of jutsu destroyed the center of the fireball that caused the rest of it to dissipate. He weaved three hand signs in a blink to warp behind Itachi. With a pulling motion Itachi was yanked off his feet into a kick from Naruto. Itachi coughed from the kick then threw a handful of shuriken from his sleeve that Naruto was forced to block with infinity. Orange chakra swirling to life Itachi moved to engage the blonde through infinity. Itachi punched through the chakra shield smashing into Naruto's solar plexus. Both of them engaged in a flurry of punches and kicks, while Itachi was the far better combatant Naruto was able to bridge some of the distance between them with applications of blue and Rasengan variations. Itachi sighed before throwing dozens of smoke bombs on the ground. Naruto blinked a few times and rapidly looked around his six eyes working overtime to decipher what Itachi's next move was. He readied himself to summon a red if the avatar was about to return in full glory. After a fully two minutes Naruto stood up with a frown, what the, did he ing run? Naruto shouted in disbelief. No, they accomplished their mission, came the shout of Jiraiya in the distance as he and the two women walked into the ruined clearing. Naruto popped up in front of them from a warp, well I guess all that's left is to knock the old bat out and drag her home. Shizun you can walk if you behave. Behave, Shizun muttered as she glared at him. While Tsunade rolled her eyes. I'm going home, brat. She said after a deep breath, it's time I move on, and make sure a fool like you doesn't kill themselves or cause another war. Naruto looked at her with a disgusted expression, I'm not going to start a war. You will if you keep with your fundamental irreverence to everyone around you. I respect plenty of people. If you say Jiraiya I'm going to throw up. Hey, as the curtain closed on what will be known as the Battle of Tanzuka Hills. Several people, hidden under seals and hidden jutsu made their way home to report to their superiors. The End
Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.